个备份Wherever you are, welcome to the second day of Crufts 2022. This is Jim Rosenthal in the main arena alongside Graham Partridge. Let's just run through what we can look forward to on day two of the greatest dog show in the world. Coming right up, the agility, the Crufts medium and large novice ABC final. 9.40, a single seat for the agility, jumping as well. 10.35, good citizen dog scheme display. These are all UK times, of course. He'll work to music competition follows, and early in the afternoon we have the rescue dog agility. More agility, 1.35, the Crufts singles heat, and agility at 2.30. Myself and Graham are going to be pretty busy at this afternoon. Plenty of agility taking place in the main arena here at the National Exhibition Centre just outside of Birmingham. The five ball was fantastic yesterday, 3.10. The rest of the quarterfinals, four go through, four go out. 3.50, vulnerable breed competition, and a 4.20, heel work to music competition winner. The agility singles final, 4.45, and then into the evening session we go with the Breeders' Competition final at 5.30, the group judging of the Terrier group at 6.10, and at 7 o'clock, group judging the Hound group. And every single thing will be covered right here on our YouTube channel. Apologies if you had a few problems yesterday. I am assured that those problems Good have been everybody. rectified, so you can Welcome. enjoy every it's single second as always on Crufts YouTube Let's channel. So now we're looking forward to our first event here in the main arena. It is the medium anything but a collie. That's ABC, of course. Crufts medium and large intermediate novice ABC final. It's for medium ABC dogs. The grades go from one to seven, one being the lowest grade, seven the highest. We have two competitions. Um, in one over the same course. Two parts, in fact, this morning we'll have the jumping, this afternoon we will have the agility, two separate awards and an overall winner. Graham Partridge is alongside me. Graham, good morning to you, and um, we're going get, to get the day off to quite a start with our first competition on day two. Yeah, morning, Jim. Morning, everybody. Yes, so one of my favourite competitions of the weekend, it's uh, the ABC, which is anything but a collie, so it just gives uh, all the other breeds uh, a chance to showcase their uh, skills. And just to show to everyone at home, you don't need a water collie or a working sheepdog to do dog agility. You can have any sort of dog you like. First to go, Masha Chavarina and uh, Altai. Four-year-old Saluki, first Saluki to qualify for Crufter in agility, the only Saluki to earn an agility warrant. Born in Belgium. Four-year-old Saluki. 
very interested to see how, how this one goes. And remember, these are these are novices. So we'll uh, we'll err on the side of kindness this morning, shall we, Graham? We don't want any waspishness from up here. Do we? Always err uh, uh, on the side of kindness, as you say. Uh, this is for grade one to five dogs, which is basically the novice in uh, the Kennel Club parlance. But uh, they could well actually have gone up the grades now by now. They, they qualified at novice. Uh, and this is a really, really good start. It's a lovely course been set here. And I think we're looking for a clear round. We are in. So that's going to set the benchmark clear round in 40.202. So well done to her. Yes, a very careful clear round as well. Beautiful looking dog. I don't think I've seen a dog go that carefully through the weaves in all my time at Crufts, but there we are. Next to go is Sally Clark and Arthur. Five-year-old Hungarian wirehead at Vizsla, member of the gun dog breed that will be um, in action here on the final day on Sunday. First agility dog for Sally, this one. I'm very surprised to have made it this far. Well, not quite sure why she's surprised. We uh, passed her this morning. Uh, that we've got a small practice jump out at the, the back in the collecting arena, so uh, dogs can get used to the carpet. And she was doing very well here. We always have a, a practice jump out in the collecting arena because uh, day on day people don't compete on grass. It's artificial, fantastic artificial grass. We've got them normally on earth, but this is again is shaping up to a lovely round and a great, great time as well. 33.20. 024, well done. That's that's the best so far. Nice clear round. Two clear rounds thus far. Alison True and Gabby. Five year old Vai Morana. Magical moments. Um, Alison has had with Gabby. And can be a contrary lady, this one. And Alison just hoping it doesn't all end in mayhem here. We shall see. It's not. Go on, Graham. Just picking up uh, refusal there. Saw the judge with a clenched fist. Clenched fist means it's a refusal, and three refusals anywhere on the course is an unfortunate elimination, but they will, of course, be allowed to carry on should they wish to do so. But now it looks as though we're back on track. Now into the weaving poles. They must go to the right of the weaving poles and then in and out alternately after that. And now she changes side so that she's on the inside of this circle. You always want to be on the inside of the circle that the dog's going round. Coming round here, so it looks as though it's going to be just the five poles, but again, a good time, 39.170. Yep, good recovery from Gabby. After... An uncertain start, it's fair to say. Sarah Boya and Eric, five-year-old Labrador, super ginger ninja. This one known as first agility dog for Sarah, first time at Crofts as well. And like so many here, absolute dream come true, running on the green carpet that is a have been freshly laid for Crufts 2022. Good speed, good ability as well. This looks uh, just about the best so far. What about the weaves? It's very smartly through there. This keep If it keeps going like this, Eric the Labrador will be top of the pile in the end. Barking way round as well through the tunnel at the end. This is really good. Oh, little full 360, don't worry about that. Still good enough to be a couple of seconds inside it and go top of the pile. Very nice. I'm sure her uh, heart must have been in her mouth then when he turned the circle in front of the jump, but uh, <laughs> uh, wasn't marked because he wasn't in a position to do the jump at the time it turned in a circle, so a clear round. And Sizer and Sky, four-year-old Labrador from Eastley in Hampshire. Sky, a working bred Labrador. Examples here, Graham, really how... A lot of people, I'm sure, around the world looking at this saying, well, I'm sure my dog could do that, and there's no reason why the dog couldn't do this. 
You're absolutely true, Jim. It, it is truly a sport for uh, for all dogs. Obviously, some dogs are better suited to it at all. So, I mean, the large giant breeds uh, will actually, or can still do it, but they just do the very, very small jumps. Um, if you're interested in having a go, go onto the Kennel Club website, search for Find a Club, and uh, join a club, get some great tuition, uh, and be well looked after. And two problems with the weaves uh, for Sky, picking up uh, 10 faults. A very enthusiastic competitor. Debbie Hedger. Smooth coated version of the Hungarian Bisla. Zachary, Zach's third year of competition, second time here. Bit of a film star, this one. There's a bit of TV and film work and likes being under the bright lights, but he's in the right place here on the second morning of Crufts 2022. Good start as well. Very good so far and very quick. Faultless round. This is good from Zach. It's good and it's quick. What about the weaves? Yep, in the right way. Good speed through the weaves as well. Over the U-move jump right in front of our commentary position. A sharp turn there. And over the spread too. Through that final top. This is going to be really good. 31.334. And that is number one for Badebi. And the smooth-coated Hungarian Vizsla. This is Mac working bearded collie, nine years of age, and Joan Hart one to go after this. A homebred boy loves to run fast, this one. And a real true friend to the handler, Joan Hart. So a couple in the 31s and clear. One large dog to go after this. Oh, and unfortunately, just a, just a pole down. Uh, Joan's a very experienced handler, although this is one of her novice dogs. She's been involved with agility for a very long time. In fact, Joan and I did our uh, Kennel Club judging course together <laughs> back in the blue whenever it was, but she uh, still loves her agility. This is a, a lovely dog that she's got here, very enthusiastic. And as I say, it's a big ask here to be in the main arena, but a great thrill for them, I'm sure. So just the five faults as she comes up. Go on, get over, well done. Great time as well, just under 31 seconds. Quickest time, what a shame about those faults. Just the, just nicking that, that barrier there. Pushing her down the list a bit. Last of the large dogs, Tracy Hunt and Ragnar, another Vizsla. This one's uh, smooth coated, five year old. First time at Crufts. Other Vizsla. Of Tracy's won this competition back in 2016. Ragnar, a bit like Peter Pan, apparently. A boy who never grew up. Only five, though. Now, this could be really good because it's really. Oh, just went wide there. There's pick up, pick up penalties. Just didn't go through that first weave from the right hand side, and that will compromise the round greatly. Was really generating some speed. Another full 360 degrees turn over the new move jump over the spread through the tunnel and over the kennel club as the finale. So well done to Debbie Hedger, Toddy's red hot uh, winner of that part of the competition in 31.334. Uh, we're now going to the jumps are going down to the new intermediate height that we introduced a couple of years ago, but it's the first time we've actually seen it at Crufts. This is now the start of actually a separate competition. It's still for ABC dogs. Just confirmation of that result then. Uh, Debbie and uh, Zachary, top of the pile. Uh, Sarah and Eric, second and Sally, Clark and Arthur, third, making that top three in the large novice section. Sorry, Graham, um, we interrupted you there to show you those results. You carry That's on. That's fine. I was just going to say this is uh, a, a new competition. It's for intermediate dogs, still novice dogs we're going to see, and still all ABC, but now over the new intermediate height. First of eight intermediate dogs, Raf, three-year-old crossbreed, and Ellie Buffett. Rescue dog, this one, got him at four months old. His fourth home, very hard to work to start with. 
but uh, described his man as a box of frogs, so anything could happen here. Can you say box of frogs in a dog agility competition? I just Jim? have, probably not. <laughs> Decent start. And okay through the weeds. That big tail wagging and the ears flapping. Great sight. Great pictures too. Good finale. This will be reasonably quick. This will be good. Yep. That's the best so far. 30.5 and no faults for Ellie Buffett and Raff. Very enthusiastic style. Look at that tail, ears, head, body, all going in different directions at the same time. How's that possible? 12-year-old Jibbers, the whippet. Nigel Staines, the handler. A good old girl, says Nigel. Rarely trains, blows very hot and cold, this one. We're hoping for a, a hot performance. We've already seen one in this section, haven't we? We have, but uh, 12 years of age is a really, really good age, and probably you wouldn't normally be running a dog, but people say to me quite often, when should I stop running my dog? Well, the dog will tell you. You will know yourself. This dog is still having a ball still very able it's it's agility has kept her fit and able uh, and good on you nigel um as i say he probably this probably will be a last year but uh, who knows it's kept nigel uh, fit and able as well through the tunnel over the kennel car oh. oh, just went round the side of it would you believe it just put it down the side right at the end there you have to go have to go the full full course and that's a shame at the end of that, Graham. It was. I think Nigel started to get a bit excited then, Jim, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he forgot what was going on. Look look at him. He's going, what an idiot I am. But uh, <laughs> as I say, nobody's told the dog. Dog's having a great time. Okay. Two-year-old Kelpie, Krugerand and Bethany Todd. Very young Kelpie, only his ninth competition, this. Nigel Staines is training. This one at the Dark Destroyer Agility up there near Carnforth. And away we go. A little slap of the hands. Ah, didn't work that one. You're going to have to start again. Now, away we go. Shame about the mistake at the start there because uh, Krugerand looks to have the makings. Elegant jumping style that. And that's about the quickest through the weaves we've seen this morning over the new move jump. And again. And that spread, that's a really flying finish. What a shame about that start. That's really, really good. Tell us about the start, Graham. It was. She picked up speed as she went uh, went through there. But you see, at the start, she decided that she's going to recall the dog over the first jump. The dog got a little bit confused. As I say, big big occasion for these dogs, uh, and I incurred a refusal. Four-year-old Ernie, bearded collie. I'm sure that uh, he'd have had a nice brush and bath today. Heavily coated. Laura Brenchley, the handler, first time at Crufts. Lovely little dog who loves to work and goes into the zone when he does agi agility. <laughs> Described as a flying carpet when he runs. I can see what Laura means. But the carpet is uh, going well. I think she's just hoping it's going to be a magic carpet today. Like it, like it. Who said you were bad in the mornings, Graham? Very good. This is a really good round. It could even be the best of the lot. We'll see. 30.8. Just into second place. But that's a great performance from Laura Brenchley and Ernie. Really, really good effort. As I say, I'm, I'm loving seeing these uh, ABCs going round. Just to show that they'd have just as much fun as anybody else. Well done. And she's had fun as well. Look at that. Great delight. Cassie Webster, an ace, five-year-old English Springer Spaniel. Cheeky one, this. Likes to eat anything. You don't leave your socks lying around when the uh, ace is around the house. From Hull, these two. And that is a perfect start from ace, barking all the way around. But 
faults there. Hannah Banks we caught her uh, raised arm. Picking up speed through the middle part of the course. That's uh, that is really excellent work uh, from Ace. Comes down towards our commentary position, that tight right hand turn. Now the finale over the spread and through the tunnel and completing the kennel club jump. Shame about that fault, but uh, probably those of you would notice that at the very beginning there that uh, Cassie dropped the ball that she had. Uh, she then picked it up and put it in her pocket. You can't carry anything in, in your hand when you're competing. Next to go, Julian Rook and Millie. Spanish water dog, three years of age. Gun dog, this one. Loyal and active. And look at that beautiful curly coat as well. Started competing with Millie last April, so a relatively new combination. Julian Rook and the Spanish water dog, Millie. sense of the massive enjoyment and fun that Handler and Dog are getting from this early on the second morning of Crufts 2022. This is a very neat and tidy round so far. Might not be the quickest, but it's very precise and accurate. And through we go through the tunnel. And it's 33. 33 dead. And that is good enough for third place at the moment. Very good performance, Graham. Very nice round. You see that uh, he starts the dog from the opposite side of the jump. The, the round doesn't start until the dog goes through the timing gates. And it also allows Julian to, to get onto the course. So uh, nothing wrong with what he did. Great expertise that uh, from Graham. One to go after this one. This is Erin, nine-year-old working bearded collie, and June McKinnon. Nine years of age, a proper golden oldie. All good from Erin and June thus far. Great <laughs> work. That clear, and it's a good start to the round. What about Moon here? Entered the right way. Great stuff through the weaves. Over the U move, jump tight right hander again. Have to pick up a bit of time here, probably. But what a good round this is. Really, really excellent. Ooh. Ooh, that's the one you want to go to. Little swerve at the end. Great stuff from June and Erin, the nine-year-old working bearded collie. Super. Great, great advert for dog agility. We've got an ABC dog, and, uh, and I'm sure that June uh, won't mind me saying that she's uh, not in the early years of her life. One of the more experienced hands. One we've of the more experienced hands. So absolutely fantastic. Great advert. Great images there, too. Last of the intermediate dogs, Maddie Newton leading in Luna, nine-year-old Springer cross Cocker. Her last show this before she retires, and Maddie and all her connections are really proud of her. Nine years of age, looking for a grand finale on the biggest stage of all at Crufts. So we know that uh, Luna is there. And it's a good, it's a quick round as well. All but uh, the weaves. That is definitely not how to do them. So pick up five faults there. Did it right in the end. Yeah. And it's apart from the weaves, this looks really, really good. Well done. Well done to Maddie and uh, Luna. And that's, if it is the last time, that's not a bad way to say goodbye. Bro. I was just about to say, if, you, if you're going to stop retire or stop competing, the biggest and best dog show in the world in the main arena, um, in this setting, absolutely fantastic. So Ellie Buffett, Ellie Buffett and... Uh, Raf first, Laura Brenchley and Ernie in second place, and Julian Rook and Millie closing out our top three, and we'll just give you the complete list. 
of that uh, excellent competition that we've just all enjoyed. So now we move on to the medium ABC. This is for one to seven dogs. So another a separate competition and for slightly open. It's an open competition basically from any grade. So it should be a good competition. This first to go is Giza, five-year-old Shetland Sheepdog. Nicola Garrett, experienced, successful handler. Giza's first time at Crofts, and he's certainly going to have fun. That's a fine start from Nicola and Giza. Really quick tight turn into the tunnel real buzz around the arena on this round this is really setting the standard this is high quality great through the weaves too that tail bashing away on those poles hard right over the U move then a little left hander then the spread this is going to be inside 30 seconds comfortably and over the final what a great round that is Nicola Garrett and Giza clear and 27 seconds the time. I mean, Nicola's a, a fantastic handler anyway, very experienced international and domestic uh, competitor, but just demonstrating the, the jump up now from the novice dogs to the more senior dogs as well. Great stuff. Sam, eight-year-old Springer Spaniel and Erin Inverarity from East Lothian. Always big Scottish support here at Crufts and quite a few of them have got up reasonably early to support Erin and Sam and another good quick very competitive round so far from these two weaves in from the right and smoothly in and out of the weaves as well little left-hander into the second of the, the U move jumps and again another very quick round indeed very good 30.3 and clear second place excellent competition so far Graham it is great round there from Erin. Dog having an absolute ball. Look, the first thing he does when he finishes over that jump is to say, come on, where's my toy? So she'll go and get that from the steward. There so it is. There goes the toy. That's the reward for doing it so well. Lily Dakin and Scout, five-year-old Shelty from Andover. Up and running. Excellent through that jumping section. Good sound coming out of, out of the tunnel too. And covering the ground really quickly. I can't see anything wrong with this so far. But a fair bit to go. Got to turn really tightly there. Yep, good turn, good grip on the carpet. Good finale over the spread. Oh. This is really quick, really quick. 28.8 for Lily and Scout. And second place for these two. Loving it, Jim. Absolutely loving it. These dogs are having the best time of their lives. And when, when you get a clear round, it's also the same for the handler. Colette Atwell and Jacko, five-year-old miniature poodle, first time at Crofts, are both of them very nervous and excited. And just to mark your card, nickname of Jacko is Wacko Jacko. We'll see. Well, it seems pretty orderly and pretty good and pretty faultless as well. Yeah, that's great going through, going through the weaves. Scurrying towards the next obstacle. It's going to be up there. It is going to be in the frame, this one, for sure. 28.9. And into the top three they go, deservedly so. Very nice to see two footing through the weaves, not necessarily the quickest, but still very efficient. And then we just had that slight hesitation at the end. This is Kaiser, four-year-old working Cocker Spaniel, and Linda Westerby. Kaiser is her fourth agility dog. Croft's final, though, is a first for both of them. He is an absolute joy to run, this one. Some very quick dogs have gone ahead of Kaiser. But it made a very, very good first half of this course. Just a slight flicker going into the weeds, but it's all OK. That's a really good turn, too, over the spread. It's going to be very fast, very fast. 28.6. And that's second place for Kaiser and Linda. 
very, very nice. Uh, perhaps I should just explain to people that you're seeing the name Pogo Star Pandemonium coming up. That's actually the Kennel Club name, and all the dogs you see competing here have to be registered with the Kennel Club, either on the breed or the activity register. Deborah Teds and Stitch, working Cocker Spaniel from Warwickshire. Trained gun dog. This one worked all season in between agility competitions. And there we go. It's a multi-talented dog, this working dog, and does agility just for uh, just for a bit of fun, I think you call it. But this is far from fun. This is a very accomplished dog here and partnership. Very quick courses into that tunnel. The dog working away from the dog very nicely here. At some stage, she needs to get on the other side of these weaving poles. She opts to change behind the dog, which unfortunately makes the dog turn the wrong way and picking up an elimination. So such a shame, but she'll have had a great, uh, great time, great chance to demonstrate and strut their stuff at cross. Great spot that from Graham. Spotting that uh, Deborah was the wrong side of those poles, and uh, yep, sadly an elimination. It was a good round up to then. Penultimate medium dog, Mr. Kelpie, Nigel Staines, and Zico, four year old Kelpie, a young dog. Nigel, a real champion of the breed, and a beautiful looking breed, those Kelpies are as well, and with a wonderfully distinctive jumping style. Really flies and almost hangs in the air to Zico and the Kelpies. And at the moment, they're very competitive as they go into those weaves. Slight stutter going into the U move, but uh, might just cost a bit of time. Again, through the tunnel, they're never the quickest, but they're very entertaining. A bit of hesitation at the end as well. Well done, Nigel, and well done, Zico. Yeah, well done to them. As you say, this dog, uh, I think, still maturing, still gaining in confidence. Although they are generally a confident breed, uh, they can be quite slow to pick up their confidence. So I think there's more to come from that dog. This is the last... The last dog, Hannah Fairweather and Spyro, five-year-old Shetland Sheepdog from Sheffield. First time at Crofts, named after Spyro the Dragon which Graham tells me is from the video game. I don't play such things myself. Only has little legs, this one, but always tries her best. Oh, dear, that's oh. a wrong course. And, uh, but, of course, the dog will complete the round. We just caught uh, the crossed hands from uh, Judge Hannah Banks. But why not? They're going to have a bit of fun and try her best. Spyro, the five-year-old Shetland Sheepdog, and Hannah Fairweather completing this part of the competition. So Nicola Garrett, Experienced Hander and Giza at number one, Linda Westerby and Kaiser, the working cocker, second, and Lily Dakin and Scout, the Sheltie in third place. Just round up and complete, complete the results for you.
we go with the prize giving for the three competitions that we've just seen here, the ABCs. The winner of the Crafts Medium ABC final. And Jackie we're starting Mann, off with the presentation for the Medium ABC. Obey, presentation has been made by Hannah Banks there. To Nicola Garrett, the winner. Obey, that's unlikely. Very experienced competitor. But uh, she says she never, never, ever gets tired of winning here on this green carpet. And then Linda Westerby. Is she pleased? Yes, she is. The dog gets a great big fuss. Look at the big smile as well. And then the intermediate and winner Hattie is Hattie Ellie Hattie Buffett Hattie. with Raph, the crossbreed. And again, look at him looking up at her saying, did I do good, Mum? Did I do good? I've got my toy. I don't care about anything else. And then Laura Brenchley as well. Big smile from her. Where better to win than cross on this green carpet. And then the winner of the large, and I know she's going to be absolutely thrilled with this. I know Debbie quite well. Uh, the winner of the large, Toddy's Red Hot Ginger, fantastic. Look at him, he's just saying, oh, he says, I've enjoyed myself. And there we go, Sarah Boyer picking up the reserve, second place, showing us all the rosette. Great, great stuff. Great advert for the ABC. The cameraman's going to have to get his, wipe his lens out now. And there we go for the customary lap of honour. And why not? And still, we've got a pretty good crowd in here for this time in the morning which is really, really good to see. And it's going to be a fantastic Friday here at Cross. Everyone loves Simba. He's either bouncing off the walls or he's asleep. He is a very, very friendly dog. He loves people. There's not many dogs like him in the country. We're a very small team that supports all of the London Fire Brigade. Our job is to investigate fires to determine their cause and origin. And we have our dogs to support us. Simba's an English Springer Spaniel. We got him when he was uh, a year old. I picked him up in Birmingham, and the very next day, we went to work. He was very much part of the fire brigade from that point on. They have a number of qualities that are absolutely vital to what we do. The dogs themselves are known as a hydrocarbon detector dog. They are looking for the presence of ignitable liquids and solids. The dogs, with their keen sense of smell, can identify that rapidly. So we have a wooden stirring stick. So he'll put a little bit of paraffin on the stick and then I'll go and hide it. And Simba's job is to find it. Even if I place it down, he's seen where it's been put, he will still use his nose to look for it. So he must trust his nose first. The best part of the search is not finding it, it's the searching for it. If you look at his tail, when he's searching, that's when it's moving the fastest. So the rule of a dog's tail never lies, always applies. And as soon as he finds it, he gives you the ball back and he wants to go find the next one. He always amazes me still sometimes when I think, oh, it's going to take us a few minutes to do this. And within seconds, Simba's found it. He's a very, very unique dog. What Simba's in now is mainly what he wear in a fire. So these are boots to protect his paws from sharps. They're not fireproof because he doesn't go into a hot fire scene. But it's important that his paws are safe from kind of metal or broken glass. We go absolutely everywhere together. So we genuinely are a team. We're on duty half the time and then are available in case there's an incident. Whenever we're working, I don't really need to tell Simba what to do because he's already second guessed. He also uh, works as a bit of an unofficial therapy dog as well. Some of the work we do may not be particularly pleasant and the one great thing that he does, he actually supports our other fire investigators. He's always there, he's, he's genuinely one of the team. 
He's emotionally intelligent as well, so um, I always like telling the story of Simba's first shout, and we were called to investigate an arson. He did indicate a number of areas where an accelerant had been used. The sad thing was the owner of the house, she was pregnant. She was really, really upset. But Simba's mood changed immediately. He went from being really excited to really calm. He went straight over to her, laid his head on her lap, and he allowed her to stroke him for, I think it was nearly 20 minutes. At the most serious of incidents, he does really calm people down. Simba is the perfect dog for the role. You've heard the term, if you find a, a job you love, you'll never work another day in your life. He's got a job that he loves. Every dog's a hero, but the only difference is that Simba's been given the opportunity to do a really important job, and that's what makes him a hero. We're not heroes. I help people in my job, I help people doing this. We're not heroes. My name is Peter Lewin. I'm a paramedic for East Midlands Ambulance Service. I also run Pete Lewin Newfoundlands. We take people swimming in open water with the dogs for emotional support. This is Bob. Bob is our non-swimmer. Uh, Bob is our mascot dog. Storm, he's very needy. Sonar, he'll swim his heart out for you. And Walker, he's been given to us by the American Foundation for prevention of suicide. Love a bit of a swim across, like normal. We get the guys to swim out with us, and I'll call one of the dogs out. Come on. Say sonar, and all you can hear is sonar blowing out of his nose as he's swimming by. It's just peace and quiet and takes you away from the stress of everything that we go through. We've been doing a lot of work this last summer with the East Midlands Ambulance Service. As you can imagine, it's been quite a tough time for all of us. It's okay not to be okay. And who helps those that are helping the others? Not just paramedics and ambulance staff, but the nurses, everybody else. Who's there to help them? I did a staff wellbeing day here when I did the quiet swim. I got extremely emotional when I finished it, I cried. And then Sona just sat with me for the whole day then. Just give me a little nudge every now and again. When you're in the water, you just get that element of, it makes you just feel great. You see, we were never ever gonna get used for real rescue in this country, unfortunately. And I sort of developed different maneuvers for getting people out of the water. But these moves are not just for real rescue. These are great for emotional support because as I've got that person in that hold, it's given that confidence that somebody's there for them. We are physically rescuing them, but it's more so mentally rescuing them. There's three people around that would tell you that they're here today because of swimming with these, which is an amazing, an amazing thing to do. I go into schools and I do water safety workshops the girl who helped me with that from the start, she absolutely loved it. We're having a discussion around at her house about what we're going to do. She says to me, do you remember I was late coming to give you a hand with your training session? I says, yeah, I do. And she says, well, I was going to take an overdose that day. But I decided I'd go and help you out because of the dogs and that. And she said it was his eyes, the way they look at you. He wasn't there to judge. He wasn't there to criticise, condemn or anything. All he wanted to do was come out and take me back to shore. She said that was it. And she's still here today because of that swim. And I just thought, yeah, that's pretty powerful. It makes me feel proud passionate about what we're doing, proud of the team, proud of these boys. To have that ability to help people, it's just amazing. My pets are helping these people, it's amazing. A 
couldn't see my girls' faces. I felt like my world was crumbling. It was like my eyes were closed. I was then matched with Milo. It was one of the happiest days of my life. Milo's a hero because he's given me my life back. He's enabled me to be a dad again to my girls and to be a husband again to my wife. I first lost my sight three years ago. That happened when I was at work. I used to work on a farm. I've got a condition called diabetic retinopathy, which is when blood vessels grow into the back of the eye and then they can leak into your eye, obscuring the vision. I had a bleed in my eye. My wife Amanda picked me up and I never went back to the farm. I went into a very dark place, which I never want to go in again. Being trapped in four walls, not being able to go out, I was petrified. I would say he hadn't just lost his sight, I think he just lost himself, if that makes sense. We're not afraid to talk about it now, but he'd often cry at night because life had changed for him and he had to adapt and learn things all over again. So yeah, it was, it was tough. Now in my left eye, I can't see nothing at all and in my right eye, I can see blurry shapes. I wouldn't go anywhere without Milo, and Milo doesn't go anywhere without me. He's enabled me to go out independently, confidently, knowing that I'm gonna be safe. I felt an instant connection with Milo. As soon as he put his chin on my, on my knee, as soon as he gave me his paw, it was amazing. Milo's looking out for dangers. He's looking out for curbs, cars, anything ahead of me that I can't see. Milo will find a bench as well, so if I asked him to find a bench, he will take me straight to a bench and put his chin on it. It's like I've got my eyes when I've got Milo. I just feel so safe with him. There's a few moments Milo has actually saved my life. We were at a crossing and I'd pushed the button and the beepers had just gone off, so I asked Milo to go forward and Milo didn't move. He was like his concrete to the ground two cars sped past through the crossing as the beepers were going. A couple of seconds later, while we were walking up the street, a police car sped past after these two cars. If we'd have walked forward, me and Milo would have both been hit by these cars, and it was that fast. And Milo didn't move, he kept me safe. He used his eyes, his instincts, and he saved my life. Every day, I put my life in Milo's paws. He's everything, not just to me, to my whole family. You know, people see Scott or other people walking with a guide dog and they just think, oh, that's just their aid. But no, it's, it's far much more than that. He really is. I feel like Milo is my hero as well. He's given me my husband back, you know. He's given the children that dad figure back. He helps my dad and not just my dad, everyone. And he makes them all happy. He's like become a lot happier because he's got a lot more freedom now. Sorry. He helps him when he's like crossing the roads. Perfectly. I can be happy again now and it gives me a real sense of purpose. I'm now at college studying counselling. I would never have had the confidence to go to college if it wasn't for Milo. He helps me with my anxiety if I do start to panic slightly. I really want to use the skills that I'm going to learn because of Milo to help other people that are in my position. Milo's given me my sight back. He's given me a vision. He's given me everything and I can't thank him enough. We rescued Chewie at 12 weeks of age. He was found abandoned with his litter mates, his brother and sister in a garden. They were tied in a bag. They'd got duct tape around their paws, their mouths. Never really identified who'd abandoned the pups. The lady whose garden it was found them, thank goodness, took them to her vet. They put a post on their Facebook page with like, oh my goodness, look at these little puppies. They'll be looking for their homes. So I went down on the train and met him, brought him back first class. The train was actually 15 minutes late leaving Preston because all the Virgin train crew wanted their photograph taken with him. And he's been with us ever since. When we adopted him, we decided that we'd, we'd give something back. 
In 2019, I read a report on Facebook um, about a puppy that had been found buried alive, very close to where we are now. He was actually sitting on my knee when I read the article and it, it just rang so many bells that, that there but for the grace of God, for the ones from the expression, that could have been him. Unfortunately, his, his injuries were too severe, he had to be put to sleep. And I thought, do you know what, this little dog just deserves to be forever remembered by this town. As a permanent memorial to Shiloh, we planted a tree for him because it's just continually going to grow, it's going to change as he would have done. So one of the reasons why we selected this tree is because it's an evergreen, so it's almost like a symbol of eternity. So yeah, this is the tree we planted for, for Shiloh. When we first got Chewy, we decided that we'd actually teach him to do CPR on one of our other dogs, just purely as a trick. And that actually proved quite useful, probably coming up for about two years ago now, where he effectively saved my husband's life. Right, he's got quite advanced multiple sclerosis, he's wheelchair bound, struggles very much with his speech now. But it's almost like he's found a way to communicate with Chewy and Chewy's found a way to communicate with him. He's always got one eye on Ray and what Ray's doing. It's just like he's his soulmate. I was actually out in the garden. The two bigger dogs were upstairs. He was with Ray. I've heard him barking and his barking got more and more frantic. Luckily, the, the French doors were open. I think if the, the doors had been shut, um, I probably wouldn't have heard him. I've come into the house and Chewy was licking his face, jumping on his chest, licking his face. And I thought, oh my goodness, you know, just, just what's going on? Ray had actually stopped breathing and then suddenly his heart stopped. I managed to get him onto the floor, did some CPR on him while talking to a, a, an ambulance crew and Chewy never left his side. It was almost like he was making sure that I was doing everything right. And every day that passes now, I, I just thank whatever's upstairs that we've got him because without him, I wouldn't have my husband. We're celebrating 30 years of marriage this year and it's all thanks to this little guy. Sorry. With Chewie, apart from what he did for, for Ray, he's just such a special little soul. You know, his life could have been so much different. His life could have been so tragic. He's just had such a huge impact on both our lives. It's, it's just amazing. Jim Rosenthal and Graham Partridge welcoming you back 
to the main arena at Crufts 2022. What a competition we have around the corner here. The Crufts singles, all four heights, a three-part competition, jumping, agility, and then a final. Top four combined in each height. 16 will go through, plus the winner of each round if they're not in the top four, and that is unlikely. And we all start from scratch in the final later on. It's a really interesting course, and Graham Partridge, who has set many a course in his time, We'll tell you all about it. On you go, Graham. Thanks, Jim. It's a lovely course, very quick, but uh, quickness also brings its own problems. There is one just a little section of the course uh, which we're looking at now, uh, and it goes from obstacles 8, 9 and 10. So 8 is the tunnel on the right-hand side, and they go in the top side of that tunnel. They come out. They've got to go into the bottom end. You can just see the number four number nine there they've got to go into that one and then they've got to come out of that tunnel and they've got to go into the weaving poles well the issues with this are from tunnel to tunnel entrance is, is probably about the maximum you can have in between two obstacles which is 10 meters um, so that's going to be a real problem for the dog because they like to identify what is next as soon as possible so they'll be into that tunnel they'll come out and they'll turn right and they've got to go into the weaving poles but they've got to go across the face of the other tunnel which is not the correct course. So we will see what we will see. But I think uh, because it's so quick and it's so spaced out, that could present its few problems of its own. Thank you so much. Chris Huckle, Hannah Banks, our, our, excuse me, Hannah Banks is our judge there today. Hannah supporting Ukraine, as many people are here at Crufts. First to go is Gareth Cunnell and Maggie May. Paddadale working Terrier. And it is Terrier and Hound Day here at Crufts on this Friday. Seven years of age, first time competing at Crufts for Gareth and for Maggie May. Big moment. Don't underestimate the tension that will be churning around out there. Handler and from Maggie May as well, and we're away. <laughs> Neat, quick start from Maggie May up on that far side of the course. Through that first of the tunnels, through the second tunnels, well, will there be a problem here? Not at the moment. Straight to the weaving poles, Gareth and Maggie May. Not particularly quick through there, but it's still nice and nice and clean. Again, through that tunnel and up through the second tunnel, up on that far end of the course. And that's a good finale. And over the kennel club we go to finish. Setting the standard, 38 and clear for Gareth and for Maggie May. Very nice round there from Gareth. Uh, all these competitors will be looking to put in two really nice clear rounds to try and get them into that all-important final this evening. Looking at Munchie, six-year-old Border Collie. Dalton Meredith has seen him in action on day one. And Munchie setting off really sharply. Good tight right hand turn. Dalton sprinting to keep up with Munchie at the moment. That's got to enter the right side of the weaves. Tail flapping there. This has to be a twisting turn. In front of our position now, through the tunnel again, and the second tunnel. This is a really good round, this. Another tight turn at the top. This will set the standard. It's going to be quick, and it's going to be clean. Faultless. 32.7 for Dalton and Munchie, number one. Fantastic, and if I can say that'll put the cat among the pigeons with the rest of the competitors, because he's just laid down the, the mantle and said, beat that. Zebedee, Papillon, Collie Cross, Shelty, and Lauren Burns. First agility dog this for, for Lauren. Taking her to every big event in the UK. Exceptional little dog, picking up some early faults there, sadly. And an elimination as well, Graham, yeah? Yes, unfortunately, uh, she ran round the tunnel, which uh, is a refusal, uh, and then didn't come back and complete it. But of course, 
Zebedee and Lauren will complete the course. And will benefit from the experience as well. But Lauren Burns and Zebedee. But for a first dog to uh, get up and get into this level, you see she goes round the back of the tunnel, almost taking out the judge. <laughs> And says, oh goodness, she said, I don't hate, hate those crossed arms, she says. Midget, eight-year-old working cocker spaniel with Natasha Pudubeki from Devon. Crazy little dog, apparently loves life. Screams her way around the... Oh, my goodness me. That, that uh, really did take a lump out of the uh, orange I am's barrier there. Full 360 degrees as well. The pace is there, definitely, with little midget. And on the sound effects. And still only five faults, despite uh, the, the demolition of that obstacle. And it's still pretty quick, Graham. <laughs> Typical Spaniel. Who put that in the way? Get it up. I'll just get up and get on with the job. That's what I like to do. And there we go, as you say, tails, leg, body, ears, everything going in an opposite direction. Very happy dog. And you see the jump go down, well, uh, that's why they are movable, so that it will give. Two-year-old Maggie, young dog, this one. Collie Cross Miniature Poodle, great future. Liz Carpenter, the handler, from Manningford in Wiltshire. And again really fast starters in the opening 10 seconds looking really good Liz really sprinting down towards them there's hesitation and a full turn as well but no faults but precious time lost through the weaves another tight right-hander towards us now and into the first tunnel flies out of the tunnel into the second tunnel in and out there as well gonna be a tight finale it is a good time Picking up those uh, five faults along the way. 34 seconds up into the top three as things stand, but a lot of quick dogs to come. Great speed across the ground, but you see here the dog was in a position to do it. It turned away, and the judge says, no, that's a refusal. Willow, working cocker spaniel, handler James Adams, already a big winner at Crofts 2022, five years of age, is Willow. Working cocker. Just to remind you, 32.7 and clear is the best time at the moment. And these two are right up in that area. Lovely work through the weeds. Quick, tight turn. No time, no ground being lost there. This is shaping up to be something very, very tidy. It'll be right in the mix, this will be. 32.6 and not only is it in the mix James has gone to the very top these two don't know the meaning of the word steady this dog has only got one gear and that is absolutely a flat out but great round love watching this dog work love it Eliza eight-year-old bearded collie Ashley Butler the handler second overall in Thursday's championship always puts everything into her work has achieved all the goals last year including winning championship ticket and two reserve tickets as well so a very accomplished partnership this one Ashley Butler and Eliza and all going okay thus far might not have the genuine speed but we shall see, it's, it's clean. And Ashley and Eliza in perfect sync. And good over that last finale there. 34.1 then uh, for Ashley and for Eliza. Again in the top three. Good stuff. Very nice. Very, very genuine dog. This always gives 100% there for Ashley. Ashley, a great handler. Uh, and just showing us how how tight is that and that's where you make up your time Jim last dog Fern crossbreed and Stephen Swanky time to beat to remind you 32.6 gotta go clear as well and that will not happen with this one 
missing the entry to the tunnel. Picking up five faults. Again, a bit of hesitation. I'm going to take you, move jump at the far end of the course, and that'll be a elimination, sadly, for Fern and for Stephen, the last of our medium dogs. Plenty more to come, though. Hope this has whetted your appetite for the rest of the competition, which is sprinkled with high class quality. Oh dear, he doesn't like that tunnel for some reason. I've got no idea why, but uh, <laughs> we'll ask the dog later on. We'll get Radzi to speak to the dog later yeah. on and see, and see what happens. Yes, that's right. If anyone can get anything out of Fern, it's Radzi. There we go. He does start to peel away, so you'd expect the dog to go with him, but in actual fact, the dog went to the left of that tunnel. Very strange. Congratulations, James. How did it feel? How did she perform for you? Yeah, I was really pleased with her. Her speed felt really nice, so yeah, it was good, especially after yesterday. It was a long day. So, yeah, Brilliant. Well done. And what did you think of the course here? Yeah, it suited us. Some nice turns in there. Um, some places I can tighten her up on for sure. So, um, sack on the course. Brilliant. It was nice to see the dogs open up on this course. So, yeah, um, brilliant. Well done. Congratulations and Thank good you. luck later on in the day. Thank you. Thank you. A really successful few days or opening couple of days here at Cross for James Adams and for Willow. In second place, Dalton Meredith and, and Munchie. Excellent performance from them. And Ashley Butler so consistent with that lovely little bearded collie, Eliza, in the top three. First of the eight large dog, Dalton Meredith again, and Costa, working sheepdog. Under the large dogs we go, we have eight of these. Second time at Crufts for Costa. And he's retiring from agility after this at the age of 10. He's going to enjoy every single second here, no matter what happens. And it's a good opening 10 seconds or so. Flicker of a of a hesitation entering the second tunnel, but good, no hesitation going through the weaves, high stepping through there. Again, those tight turns are so important. We get down to fractions of a second here. This is shaping up into a very competitive effort if the, fi if the finish is good and strong, which I think it will be. Absolutely excellent from Dalton Meredith and from Costa. That's a good, that is a really good time that these two have set, 33.5. Yeah, he's lost none of it as Costa, brick out of the wall there, but Dalton won't worry. I mean, to qualify one dog for, for this final, but to qualify two is uh, is uh, just plain greedy. And as you say, just, just the brick coming off, they do dislodge very easily, but uh, a great ending for a great dog. Fernie Nigella, four-year-old Border Collie, and Shannon Springford competed on Thursday with gift to Shannon. <laughs> Flying over that uh, I am's jump there. Again, Shannon working really hard. And Fernie Nigella in very good order, that middle part. Turning and twisting as fast as she can. And it's uh, again, it's going to be in the shake up probably. Let's keep an eye on those bricks. They stay intact this time. 32.4 and clear. The best thus far. Great time, great display of handling and distance handling there. And the dog, look at that, two footing, pushing off one foot and then the other, the most economical way to do it, uh, and a great finish, and she'll be really pleased with that round. Bowden, five-year-old working sheepdog, and Amanda Ellerton, first time at Crofts, a big dog, this one. Very fast, though, over the ground. See what I mean? Yep, long striding dog. This course should suit this dog. As I say, plenty of chance for it to open up there. And you can see straight into that tunnel. She picks the dog up on the right-hand side. 
And now she's actually got to just push the dog away around that jump. She comes back, collects the dog on the left-hand side to be on the inside of this all-important circle. She can take a shortcut, change her sides there. Oh, and just didn't get her shoulders round enough there in time. Such a shame. She'll be, she'll be so disappointed with that. Well done, Amanda. Yes, Amanda Ellerton and uh, Bowden did so well to avoid the pitfalls that Graham had pointed out with the tunnels. But then, yeah, just that bit of miscommunication there. Shame. Sean Ellingworth, an agent, border collie, six years of age, homebred boy, heart of a lion, this one. Got to be 32 seconds and clear or thereabouts. we are qualifying a few from this particular event and they went oh that's a full turn but it's okay no faults incurred yep agent knows knows the way through those weaves okay lovely jumping style tail high in the air this is a real quality classy round from sean and from agent just excellent Very nice round there from Sean. Hopefully you could hear in the background. Just you can almost almost shouting to get above the crowd noise here. So that it's all about communication. The dog needs to know where to go. Well done, Sean. Rio, seven-year-old working sheep dog. The handler Stephanie Best won the British Open with fate on day one. Rescue dog, this one. And looking really good early on in the round oh just clip that one just got a little bit too close to it bit of hesitation there coming down towards us now and through the two tunnels a really good really good round there's just apart from that one tiny blemish very good time as well, 33.4, just the five faults for Stephanie and for Rio. Third at the moment, Graham. Very nice, and you can see Stephanie just started to move away just a fraction early. These dogs try so hard to please, and just very unlucky polo. Clippy, three-year-old Border Collie, and Dalton Meredith, his second dog. We've already seen Costa, Clippy's first time across in a young promising dog this one beautifully over over that spread Ooh, that was just a little wobble but it was okay almost blocking that second tunnel that graham pointed out there and this is a lovely dog with clippy there's genuine speed there, scurrying towards the jump. It's going to be really fast, this is. Lovely fast time, 32. First one into, or the second one, I should say, into the 32s, just behind uh, Shannon at the moment. And there we go, as I was alluding to, Dalton's on the left-hand side of the tunnel, the dog comes out the tunnel and turns towards him, just losing those tenths of a second, which is so important, but otherwise a fantastic round, a dog with a lot of promise. Lemon, five-year-old Border Collie, Nara Cuddy in great form at Crufts. The penultimate dog, this one in the large section. Last time at Crufts on the British Open and has recently won at Olympia as well. Nara Cuddy and Lemon. Again, hesitation there, that'll be five. That'll be five faults picked up going into the tunnel. Needs to generate a bit of pace here, probably. And the big finish from Nara Cuddy and Lemon, the border collie. 33.7. And say so very unlucky that, the, as I say, the dog expects to be turning to the left coming out of that first tunnel because the handlers on that side, they've got to be so precise with what they're telling the dog. Turn right, turn right, turn right. Uh, but she's still in the mix, only five folks. Last dog, Martin Reed, Nara Cuddy's partner, handling Snooze, five-year-old Border Collie. 
it is the top four to go through from this, so nice to win, but uh, the top four will do. And to get into that top four, you've got to be within 33 and a half seconds and preferably a clear round as well. Go on, Graham. Yeah, no, it's the top four of the combined results from the jumping this morning and the agility, but you are right, it's the top four, Jim, plus the winner uh, of any of the rounds if they're not already in that top four. Love this pairing. Uh, they, they just look so comfortable together. Martin's a great handler. This is a great dog, and it's been shaping up for a great round as well. Well done. 34.3 seconds and clear, and Martin Reed goes into the top three, so that is pretty much job done for those two. Shannon. Um, now, everybody in the room, let's, of course, let's give her a big round of applause. That's an amazing run. How does it feel to be back at Crofts? Oh, I'm just so happy. Like, Crofts is such a cool event, and it's her first time, so I couldn't be happier with her. She's cool. She's done a good job, hasn't she? Yeah, will she, will she get a special treat tonight? Oh, of course, steak for dinner. Always. She'll get dinner. Oh, yeah, <laughs> steak for dinner. So, so one of the things I've noticed, and I'm sure all the ladies and gentlemen here have noticed as well, is you obviously have a fantastic relationship with her. She seems to know where to go. How do you build that relationship with her? Uh, she's just obsessed with me. Um, <laughs> but mainly she works for her toy. So as long as you reward her a lot, she's quite happy to do anything. Yeah, so lots of positive reinforcement. Yeah, lots of play, lots of reinforcement. Like, she loves her toy. Um, so as long as I use that, she's pretty happy she'll do it. Because she actually looks like, and I'm sure everyone will agree, she actually looks like she can read the numbers. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that easy. Well, well done. Thank you so much. Let's give a big round of applause to Shannon uh, for a fantastic run. Well done. Yes, well done, Shannon. Well done, uh, Fernie Nigella. A bit of steak dinner aw awaiting uh, this evening, apparently. So Shannon first, Dalton Meredith and Cliffy second place. Don't forget the top four to go through. Martin Reed in third. Good event, good competition. Rounding off uh, the results then of the large jumping section of the singles. First of nine intermediate dogs is Gamble, Border Collie and Stephen Richardson, who is in excellent form. Over that Yumu jump at the top end of, 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 of the course. That's a good style going through the weaves from Gamble. First of the intermediate dogs. Enjoying the work. Stephen and Gamble, this is a good combination. I think we'll see more of them later in the day. 32.8 and faultless. Very nice there, round. You see, Stephen's now on the other side of the tunnel, so the confusion doesn't arrive because the dog knows it's coming out and it's actually going to the right. So that's just the illustration between the good and maybe could do better. You're looking at image, very successful dog over the years, 10 this month, Border Collie, and Sean Illingworth, hugely experienced competitor, home and abroad. Nothing to prove this one, likely to be his last appearance at Crufts. Sean's saying very lucky to run image today, been a wonderful dog. Oh, just a flicker of hesitation, it's okay, and Sean, yeah, as Graham has pointed out, almost blocking the entrance to the tunnel to take image into the weeds. Lovely style, beautifully through the tunnel again, and this will be fine. If they keep it going, this will be fine. This, will, this should be good enough to get through, that's really good. 34.4 and clear for Sean and second place. Very nice, Sean's an extremely experienced handler, and as you say, this dog's now 10, so it knows all about it, it's been here before, or just a slight slip recovers really well, but this carpet is so, so good these days, and great action shot there. Is he having a good time? Yes, he is. Zest, six-year-old Border Collie next to go, and Nicola Wildman. Zest, crazy loud and full-on, and can be a challenge for Nicola. 
beautiful style hanging in the air in front of us over that I am's jump. Got a great view of that. Oh, almost, yes, there was a slight bit of hesitation. And that uh, will pick up five faults there going into the tunnel. Style and clearing those, uh, clearing those barriers effortlessly. Nicola Warman and Zest, 35.2. Very nice there, as you say, a dog just flicked to the left and then she overcorrected and the judge had no option but to uh, give her a refusal there. There she goes, the clenched fist, yes, shall I, shan't I? Yes, I will, definitely, good decision. You're looking at fate, five-year-old Border Collie and Stephanie Best. This partnership won the British Open on day one here at Crufts 2022. First dog to become an agility champion for Stephanie. Second time at Crufts and has qualified for everything possible. A very classy combination and one to watch. Again, a little flicker of going left, but uh, Stephanie pointing fate towards the weaves. And this is uh, right up there. This is good. This is faultless. Crashing through the tunnel and the second one as well. This will be a good, quick, competitive time, but oh. at the end, the round totally compromised. Called it, called it, and, and again. Oh dear, the round, it is an amazing sport. Is it just unraveled and what you think is going to be the grand finale, Graham? Well, she, she did really well to start with because she saved herself from elimination. She stopped the dog back jumping, corrected it. Now she's thinking, oh, that was lucky. And now she takes her mind off the, off the last jump. But it's, it's easy for me to sit here and say very <laughs> difficult when you're out there. Unlucky, Stephanie. Flex, seven-year-old Border Collie and Stephen Seal. Really proud that... Uh, the amazing pup that is Fleck has qualified for the singles. The dog that relishes the big occasion. Round Fleck is the instruction. From Stephen and Fleck obeying. Again, the dogs, quite a few of them, a tendency to run left coming out of the tunnel, have to be pointed right. But it's all good so far. It's, cle it's clear and it's clean. And it's fast as well. Very competitive this from Stephen. What about the last few obstacles? No problem. 32.8 for Stephen and for Fleck. Number one. Applause from Hannah as well. Very pleased for uh, Stephen. He's worked very hard with this dog at seven now, but uh, the last year or so they've just seemed to have clicked and come on as a partnership. So he'll be more than happy what he's just done. Pebbles, nine-year-old Border Collie, handled by Natasha Wise, three times world champion with that wonderful dog, Dizzy. Pebbles, a dog who is almost inspired running on the green carpet here at Crufts. Look left, went right, there did Pebbles, which is absolutely the right thing to do. This is a very good time well up on the course clear and clean again through the tunnel a little at the end there will it be a tricky or this is a good time for Natasha and for Pebbles very good 33.0 into the top three that's where they want to be Graham very nice there from Natasha probably one of the most committed uh, dedicated people she'll be uh, out later on replaying all this to see how she could get that extra tenth of a second but a great round there from Pebbles and Natasha. Look, big, big blow out of air there. So, it's over. <laughs> Zing, six-year-old Border Collie, and Alan Wildman, the handler in good form, international competitor. Zing achieving agility champion status last year. Six years of age. Over the second obstacle, the eye out. Over the spread. Round you come. Good tight turn. Took it well. 
and headed straight for that second tunnel. That's good. This is good. No hesitation there from Zing or from Allen as well. Twisting turn, a couple of barks heading right towards us now. Sharp right hander. In and out of both tunnels. What about the finale now? The time is good, very competitive, and the round is clear. 33 for Allen and for Zing. And again, up into the top four. Very nice control ground. Dog asked, did everything that Alan asked of it, and that's put him exactly where he wants to be, just in the mix. Like to have been winning, obviously, but he's got a clear round and in a good time in the bag. Costa, really handsome dog, this one. And uh, Matthew Goodliff, senior coach on Team GB, seven year old Border Collie. First time in the main ring at Crofts. Never quite sure how that oh dear, how that affects a dog. Took that jump the wrong way round, and that will be an elimination, sadly. Things, things happen so quickly in this sport, Graham, can't they? Just one little misstep. And they uh, do. They the, do. the day's ruined. And it's the first time he's had this dog in the main ring, so he's, he's obviously a little bit worried about how it's going to be react. But uh, tremendous respect there for Matthew. Uh, he is one of the best. He's a fantastic coach for Team GB. And I am sure that uh, this coming year we're going to have a fantastic team and do so well at the European and World Championships. We'll talk more about those later on. Never like to see those. Last dog. Tunde Bell, Betty, six-year-old Border Collie. Betty, the first Collie, very chilled and cuddly at home, but uh, on an agility course, absolutely transformed. Is Betty? Let's see what she can do. Really accelerating into the tunnels. Time is. Exceptional, it's really good, first 15 seconds. This is good from Tunde and from Betty. Come on, Betty, come on. Just need need that big finale now. Need a big finale from Betty and, uh, and from Tunde. Time dropped away a bit in the second part of that round. Yes. Still a very nice round here, and as you say, unless the dog just seemed to be slightly hesitant, but I think that's probably a confidence issue running on artificial grass, possibly even for the first time, but uh, still lots more to come from this great dog and great handler. So, Steve, well done, first of all, for uh, doing an absolutely fantastic run. I think you've uh, even got your own fan club. Let's give Steve a bit of a cheer there for a great run. So, um, just just tell us in the room, um, we saw you walk in the course earlier. How do you decide which way you're going to go and, and how you're going to handle it that's going to make a difference over all the other handlers? Basically, for, it's, it's, um, it's the course of my dog. I just take the lines that I'm looking for with her to keep her smooth, let her do the work, and I get out of her way keep that, and keep the power down going. Yeah, so each, each dog is different, is that right? Would you say yeah. you're working with the stride length and things like that of that particular dog? Well, it's 26 years since I've been to Crufts. I had 22 years out retired, and the last dog I worked here was Fell, yeah. and he was a different dog. I would have been ahead of her. That's when yeah. she's happy, and trust yeah. me, she loves the big occasion. Um, <laughs> she said uh, hello to every person on the bus <laughs> on the way here. <laughs> I couldn't stop her. I yeah. think she's having a great time. She loves she's it. earned her tea, hasn't she, she tonight? Oh, she, she definitely she made me has. Work. Well done, Steve. Thank Let's you give very Steve much indeed. a big round of applause. Thank you. Yes, congratulations to Stephen and to Fleck, and confirmation of uh, the result of the intermediate right, so section. There we go, Stephen and Fleck. Uh, number one, a reminder that um, it's the combined top fours that go through so even those who are not in the top four are still uh, in with a reasonable chance Stephen Richardson second with Gamble and Natasha Wise and Pebbles and just uh, winding down those results there so this is a, um, a combined event of course and we're all going to build up to the big finale later on this afternoon
here we go with the first of eight small dogs. Uh, Bell Bell, four-year-old working cocker spaniel. Lee Harfield, the handler. Runs a livery of uh, 20 horses, and Bell comes to work every day on the yard. Kind and sweet. First time, another first timer at Crufts. <laughs> That's proper hesitancy, I think, there, Graham. On you go. Got there in the end, though. That's all that matters. No fault. So still clear as we come round now into a really fast section of the course. Changes sides. Now, will she turn the dog towards her or away? She opts for the safe option of turning it towards her, telling the dog to go on. Oh, just a little hesitancy there. Cost her a bit of time. Still 40.774, but she's clear. Yeah, she was clear despite the full 360 at the end there. Entertaining round, first timer, Bell Bell and Lee Harfield. Looking at the four year old working cocker, Fanny. This combination there from Camberley. Sander Tit is the handler. And not particularly quick, but it is clean thus far for Sander and for Fanny. Lovely little dog. Done. Can be really proud of her work here today. Good combination. 38.8 and faultless for Sander and for Fanny. Very nice round there from Sander. There we are. Unfortunately eliminated, but uh, he's had a good time and the dog's uh, just know it's been eliminated. Keep saying that, Jim, but I mean it. Samantha Lane and uh, Ninja Zippy, six-year-old Cocker Spaniel. Run of the European Championships, uh, this one, and came fifth. <laughs> A bit of hesitation, wasn't quite sure, looked to the weaves, ended up in the tunnel, precious time lost, though. Picking up uh, faults going into that weave. Go through there again. Didn't enter from the right side. the end of the course now and oh dear that'll be an elimination that will be an elimination confirmed by Hannah Banks Ninja Zippy and Samantha eliminated right at the end there Graham yes unfortunately as you say a little bit of confusion there so she started to lose time there but uh, and then this dog just screams its enjoyment the whole way round and then unfortunately picking up an elimination for doing the wrong side of the jump but uh, well done Sam Looking at Takeda, wearing a bit of Crufts bling there, the shiny collar on Takeda. Alan Bray uh, competed yesterday. Fun-loving dog, this one. It's a great sight seeing these uh, small dogs go around and strut their stuff here, really. Just a bit of hesitation again, a complete turn that will cost time, but won't cost any points for Alan or Takeda. Really keen to get to the next obstacle. And to keep it tight right hand up, one over the bricks and over the cannon club for the Ferrari. 34 and clear. That's very, very respectable from Alan and Takita. Very nice. You can see the bling collar there. The only stipulation is about wearing collars, is that it must be close uh, fitting. Uh, can only be wearing one, but look at the enthusiasm of this dog going through the weaves. That is just its favourite thing to do. Apart from have a cuddle with Alan, that is. Sizzle, four-year-old Shetland Sheepdog, handler Katrina, hands this pair won the British Open on day one and were runner-up in the championship in great form already here at Crufts 22. Sizzle.
beautifully fast and beautifully accurate as well from Sizzle. Just hesitation there. That was the one that Graham pointed out, in fact. You never know, they might have been missing that. And uh, Katrina did very well to block the entrance to the tunnel, which is where Sizzle was heading. Now you can go into that tunnel, Sizzle. And the time is really good, too. Sizzle looking for the grand finish. Oh! And again, right at the end, Graham. Right it at is. the end. Such a shame. Just when you start to relax and then the dog runs past it. But you see Katrina also wearing uh, a yellow and blue uh, headband there. Uh, the, so many agility people contributing to the uh, to the relief effort there. But, uh, and I say, just running past, but, but she's had a great time. This is Fuse, 10-year-old Shetland Sheepdog and Louise Eden. Taken uh, this dog, Dream Dog, has taken uh, Louise to every major final just about all over the world. Last year, qualifying for a craft to want to enjoy every single second. Ten year old fuse. That was, that was a nervous, nervous moment up on the far end of the course. Great little dog, this competed internationally and nationally. Uh, she does very, very well because she comes from the Channel Islands uh, and they don't get a chance to uh, compete in the bigger competitions over there. So she does really, really well. This dog, dog owes her nothing. It's, uh, she's had a fantastic career and she's in really, really proud of it and had kind a of great time. Well done. And no problems at the end there. Up into uh, second place at the moment for 40 seconds, but uh, very importantly, a clear round for Louise and Fuse. You're looking at Blink, personal favourite, Lauren Langman, last but one, the working cocker, eight years of age. This is bound to be high-quality entertainment from Blink and Lauren, and, well, it's entertaining, but it's not the way to go. Blink missing the entry to the tunnel, missing it by a long way, too. Five faults for Blink, but... Straight back uh, into her work. That's the right way to go into it. It's won so many events here at Crofts. And will look to recover from that early error. <laughs> and three to go at the end there for Blink and for Lauren. Just those five faults, 41.4. The time. So just looking at mistake here, you see, all of a sudden she she flings her left arm up quite late, and I think the dog just took that as a signal to go to the left of the tunnel. But that's how quickly these mistakes uh, can happen. Blink and you miss it, Jim. This is Winnie, cross cockapoo, eight years of age. Charlotte Wilkinson, first agility dog for Charlotte, first time at Crufts as well. Let's have a look and see what the first-timers can do. All OK so far for Charlotte and for, for Winnie. Taking the right to course, not spectacularly quick. But Winnie going as quickly as she can. Yeah, this is a round to be proud of so far for Charlotte Wilkinson and for Winnie. They will look to complete it in the same very competent fashion. Really good. 42 seconds and clear. Can't do more than that, Graham, really. That, you can only do what the dog offers you uh, on the day. Very nice round there. Quite steady, but uh, she's got a clear round, and that's what you need in this three-part competition. So they combine the results just to confirm between jumping and agility. OK, so let's welcome Alan Bray to the arena. He's just done a fantastic run, our current leader in the small section. Alan, we've known each other a long time. We've been doing this agility lot for a long time, haven't we? Um, can you tell me and everybody else in the room, what is it about agility that you love? What keeps you coming back year after year? I think it's the friendship of the people we see and meet and, and have developed over the years and the love of the dogs and, and wanting everyone to do well, really, because yeah. it's a great companionship and, and sport together. 
Absolutely. Uh, it's a great community, isn't it? Yes. And, and everybody gets to know each other. And we all have a love of dogs, as I'm sure everybody else does yeah. in the room as well. So if anybody um, was inspired by your run, and I'm sure many were, um, how would they get into agility? How can they start with their own dog? Yeah, very easy. Go on to the Kennel Club website and you'll find the agility clubs all listed there. All you have to do is find one that's near you and um, find, find one from there and they'll, they'll point you in the right direction. Even if they're full, they'll find one for you. Brilliant, fantastic. Thank you so much. I think she's ready to get going, yes. isn't she? She's whining at us. She's telling us, come on, keep, let's get on with this. So thank you so thank much, you. Alan. Thank let's you. give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. It was a fantastic run. Thank you. And we'll see you later Brilliant. in the Good agility. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, Alan Bray and uh, Takita will be back later on for the climax of the competition. Uh, Louise Eden and Fuse up into second place and Lee Harfield and Bell Bell into the top three. But don't forget, as Graham was saying, um, the results are all combined to sort out the grand final later on in the afternoon here on day two at Crufts 2022. Presentation time, Graham. That means uh, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Jim. Great, great competition. To say we saw the best of the best there. Presentations are going to be made by our judge, Hannah Banks. Okay, and we have our judge, Hannah Banks, here to present the award. I think we're going to start so off the with the small the category, and the winner judges. of the small category yes, was Alan Bray. There he is. With Takita, working Cocker Spaniel, seven years of age. Uh, it's been there, done it, got the T-shirt, but it, it never fails to get a smile out of him. He's so proud. And I know someone else is going to be really, really pleased with themselves. Louise Eden. With Fuse, ten years old now, probably one of his last major competitions. All the way from Jersey, she'll be over the moon with that. And moving on now to the mediums, he's been in great form for the last couple of days. James Adams with Willow, the one-speed dog, and that's flat and out. Followed up by someone else who's had, uh, I think he's had three dogs in this competition, and that's Dalton Meredith, but uh, he's placed now with Munchie. The winner of the intermediate section of this competition, Stephen Seal. Been building up to this uh, all year at the end of last year, so really good reward for them. And followed by, in second place, the ever-competitive Stephen Richardson with his young border collie, Gamble, and he's still only four years of age. And the winner of the large was Shannon Springford. And then I think we're going to dart back to the left because being greedy, such as he is, we in second place in the large was Dalton Meredith again. With Clippy. Again, this is his young like, dog, so <laughs> done really, really well. You can't start competing in agility in the UK uh, until your dog's at least 18 months of age. And That's just to make sure that they're not overtrained too early. And then we're going to have the customary lap of honour. Everyone's got their toys in their mouth, just about. You want to keep a spaniel happy? Oh, the dog is going to do a bit of searching. I think, Alan, get your dog off the red seats, you'll be in real trouble. Got his favourite ball in his mouth. Big wave for the crowds. Great competition, Jim. Well done. <laughs> Everybody enjoying it here at Crufts. Your puppy will grow into a dog over four stages. Stage one, sleep. Then they'll play and explore and play some more. That's stage two. Still playing. Stage three, confidence and great leaps forward. By stage four, they're almost fully grown. Royal Canin's Puppy Growth Program provides everything you need to give them the ideal foundation for a healthy life. Day two here at Crufts 2022, and it is so good to be back. 
Uh, do stay with us in the main arena. He'll work to music finals coming up at 10 past 11. But now we're going to see the fantastic work of the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Scheme. They teach everything from basic obedience right the way through to more advanced stuff as well uh, at three different levels. We're going to find out all about that and we're going to see their fantastic work. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm welcome to the Good Citizen Dog Scheme display team. I'm going to hand you over to Mark Callis. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, and welcome to our very short demonstration on the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Training Scheme. And welcome to the Good Citizen Dog Training Scheme. And during our opening sequence, we can see various elements of the scheme. We were doing pseudo road walks, we were crossing the road, walking amongst other people with dogs, lots of things all going on at the same time. And we're going to cover those in a little bit more detail shortly. We're going to start with how we begin. Right, we're looking here at our young dogs, our puppies, how it all begins, the puppy foundation. foundation. And we're looking at socialising our dogs with adults, with noises, and with other dogs. And particularly over the last two years during lockdown, there's been an increase in dog owners in the UK, and they've done very well with socialising their dogs, but sometimes not always the right way. It always has to be controlled, Socialising our dogs with other dogs isn't about letting them all loose and running riot together. It's about having control. So we see different ways of socialising our dogs. We see our handler going over there, dangling keys. We've got to get used to noises as well, everyday noises. And at the same time, we're playing with our puppies and teaching them good food manners. This is all the basics of the Puppy Foundation Assessment. This time we're going to be looking more towards the bronze level of the scheme, where we're starting to get out and about with our dogs. We can see here, walking over different surfaces, 
Dogs are going to encounter a number of surfaces during their lifetime. Pavements, grass, lino, carpet. So it's getting them used to walking on these strange surfaces. At the same time, we can see the door and gate exercise. We're teaching our dogs that when we come through a door or gate, they're not to yank us through, pulling our arm behind them. It's in a controlled manner, and that's what we should see from these dogs. We're also looking at handling the dogs. We've got towel drying the dog's paws here, rubbing it all over. At the bronze level of the scheme, we need to be having our dogs ready for examination, looking at their eyes and ears and mouth and checking their body, and also being able to groom them. And we progress that as we go through the scheme to the gold level where we've got a stranger coming in to do this. So various stages of the bronze level. Over here, we're looking at the recalls. We start off with the puppy recall. Puppy on the lead, getting it used to its name, calling it as it comes towards us on the lead. We've got two types of bronze recall here. One with the slip lead, we see Bodhi being held, recalled, letting him go and back to his handler. At the bronze level, that's 10 paces. We've also got recall with a toy. And at the silver level, we've got rejoin the handler. That's where the dog gets distracted, the handler walks away, and the dog joins them. And then to the gold level, where the handler continues walking while the dog joins them. And of course, this is all about having everyday dogs in everyday situations. It's not just about the dog in the home or the dog in the training club. So here we've got a road scene. We've got dogs following the green cross code. Lovely lollipop lady. Crossing the road. There we are, on command. Now, we've got nice loose leads. The occasional tight lead is required. We've got dogs passing one another. We spoke about socialization a while ago. Two dogs focused on the handlers. We've also got dogs walking at different speeds, some fast, some slow. So various different aspects of starting to take our dogs out into the community and having well-mannered dogs. Well done. Now that brings us on nicely, as we're out on the road, to how we travel with our dogs in a car. So here we are in the center, we've got our car. Might be taking the dog out to the common or the park. See how they get on, how we handle tr travel with our dogs. Oh dear, that's not what we want to see, is it folks? We didn't have the dog restrained in the car, it was on somebody's lap on the back seat. Unfortunately, there was a car accident, and it happens. Okay, everybody in the car was safe, but the dog got thrown forwards through the windscreen on this occasion, and it could be a rather fatal outcome. We don't want that, do we? There's a number of different ways you can restrain your dogs in the car. You can buy body harnesses now that then clip into the seatbelt arrangement. You can put the dog in a cage in the back, a divider. We've got the dog in a cage on this time, so let's see how our drivers get on. That's right. It might be a little bit traumatic for everyone, including the dog, but we've managed to keep the dog safe. So here we are straight out, checking that the dog's safe. Out he comes, we all stay nice and safe. So vehicle travel, very important. And this features at the silver level of the scheme where we have to see that your dog can travel safely in a vehicle. Well done, folks. Now that takes us on to being out and about with our dogs. It might be that we are on our way to the park to exercise our dogs. And as I said before, the scheme is all about taking dogs outdoors. It's about having well-mannered dogs out in public and a joy to have as well. So here we have perhaps a typical park scene and you're exercising your dog. Now again, 
During these strange times over the past two years, your local park, recreation ground, open space became a focal point for countless number of activities, not just dog walking. You had the local gym class there, yoga, running, cycling, all sorts of things happening. So we see a number of different things happening in this scene. We've got dogs being exercised off the lead, some on the lead, they're walking at different paces. And what we're looking for again is well-mannered dogs. We don't want dogs running up and disturbing other dogs that are on the lead. We've got somebody with a Zimmer frame, might have an old dog, the dog's walking at a much slower pace. What we don't want is our dogs running up to them and disturbing them. We do got dogs that might be perhaps a little bit nervous. We've got the nervous dog over here. He's got a nice coat on which tells us he's nervous, but we don't always know that. And he doesn't want unwelcome approaches either. So it's about keeping our dogs under control and respecting other dogs and other dog spaces. Now often in parks and open spaces, you'll find perhaps ponds, lakes, open water of some kind, and where that happens, we will often find wildfowl. When we're around these, these pond areas, we should be keeping our dogs on a lead and under control. Our dogs often get excited with wildfowl, especially when they flutter and fly away. They think it's a game of chase, and they can disturb eggs and nests and things like that. I've also known in the past that swans can be particularly dangerous to dogs, and I have seen some fatal outcomes as a result. So around ponds and lakes, we keep our dogs under control and on a lead. Now sometimes we get out into the wide open countryside and our walk might take us close to farmland, arable farms, uh, dairy farms and things like that. Our demonstration here has taken us over towards a, a field that's got cows and sheep in. Don't ask me why, but we've mixed them up. And what we should see here is the dogs under control, on the lead. Okay, loose lead, but occasionally a tight lead is required. And we shouldn't disturb the livestock. We should be looking for the signs around saying, don't come here, don't do this, don't do that. We always follow whatever instructions were given and we always follow the country code. Now, unfortunately, there are a few cases every year where dogs and owners get trampled by cows. Cows are very inquisitive. And if this happens, where you've suddenly got a stampede of cows coming towards you, the advice is to drop the lead of your dog and run to the exit. Be assured, your dog will beat you there. Your dog will be there before you are. Now, there's nothing better after a nice long walk than to stop at the local pub for a little drink and maybe some lunch. So we're looking here at food manners, first of all. We're looking at the dogs aren't jumping up demanding our food. Uh, this is very, very important at the gold level of the scheme where dogs come into close proximity of food. And we're also looking at dogs being kept under control. A couple of dogs here have been left in the stay. At the gold level of the scheme, dogs are left in the stay for up to two minutes. Might be they need to go to the toilet or perhaps go and make an order or something like that. So we're looking here at good food manners and well-mannered dogs under control that will wait when required. Well done, folks. Now, the next exercise we're going to look at is what we call send the dog to bed. This is an element at the gold level of the scheme. Now, sending the dog to bed is not a punishment and should never be a punishment. The dog's bed is a safe place in your home or wherever you are where the dog can go to. It might be that you need some time out. It might be you've got visitors. There's a number of reasons. Now, we've turned it into a bit of a game. It's going to be a race. And we'd love you all to take part by cheering and clapping and shouting at the dog's as they try and compete to see who is the fastest and best at sending their dog to bed. So we've got three going all at once. Give them a big round of applause and a cheer as they go. Are we ready? Handlers, ready, send your dog to bed.
Send your dog to its own bed, not somebody else's bed. <laughs> well, it's a clear win on this side. I'm not even going to go into what's going on on this side, but perhaps they always share beds. I don't know. So one winner, one in the final. Here we go with the second one. Handlers, send your dog to bed. Oh, very fast. Oh, I think, although they got to bed together, this one went down first. So it's a win on that side with Anna Gretz dog. Very, very close there. One just wanted a bedtime story from Daddy first. <clears throat> and the final heat. So handlers, send your dog to bed. <laughs> it's definitely a win on this side. I think there was a bit of interference over there and there's one very naughty one that doesn't want to go to bed yet. No, read me a bedtime story first, Mum. I want to stay up for another hour. That should give us three finalists. So this is our final. Give them a big cheer and clap and shout as they go to see who is the fastest at sending their dog to bed. They got very competitive down here all of a sudden. Handlers, send your dog to bed. Oh, I think that is a tie between these two. And our dog at the end, unfortunately, too many crumbs in the bed. You didn't shake the bed out, Mum. I'm not sleeping in there. Give them all a round of applause, folks. Remember, sending the dog to bed is not a punishment. And we've made it a bit of fun, but it is a requirement at the gold level of the scheme. Right, we're next going to be looking at stopping the dog. Sometimes we need to stop the dog in an emergency. It might be we can see some oncoming danger or some other reason why we need to stop the dog where it is. So we're gonna start with this very short and simple demonstration, five of them all at once. When you're ready, off we go. And they're gonna recall their dogs and then stop them on their way back. And recall your dog. They might not stop quickly, but they should stop. And then we have five dogs stopped from some sort of imminent danger. It could be there's glass on the floor. It could be that there's a vehicle or people about to cross their path. So very well done. Now we're gonna try that with a little bit more of a, an edge to it. So we're gonna see some recalls and this is 360. Give 360 a round of applause. He's got a five pound note, belongs to the Kennel Club. It's not often that the uh, Kennel Club will allow their cash out, but we have today. And we're going to recall a dog. Heb's on this side, Bourbon's on the other side. They're going to try and stop it on the five pound note. And on the five pound. <laughs> little bit of a creep, maybe a little bit of anticipation there. But it's about stopping the dog. And we're going to see that again with Hayley and Herbie Sausage. It looks tiny in this big ring, that five pound. She's going to recall her dog and then stop it. Oh, well done. But you know what? Let's live life on the edge, folks. Five pound isn't enough. They get to keep this five pound, by the way, but that's not each, that's two pound fifty. We're gonna go with a 20. Let's up the stakes. Can they do it the second time? Was it a fluke? Can these ladies both go home? Oh, it's a bit fast this time. Oh! <laughs> we haven't been practicing that, have we? He lands on the 20. That's 25 pound heads up at the moment. We're doing well. Can Herbie Sausage bring 25 pounds home with mummy today? Look at him, little fella sitting there waiting. He probably can't even see you this side of the ring. You're miles away. 
What's Herbie Sausage going to do? Hey, <laughs> without a doubt. That's 50 pounds of Kennel Club money going home with Heaven Haley, and I'm sure that's going to be in um, dog treats. That's interesting. They all left the 10 pound note in the middle of the ring. Can you all just draw their attention away? Ah, you saw me. Someone else is going to have to buy the beer tonight. Right, we're moving on now to recalling our dogs. We've seen at all the different levels, we start with the puppies, attentive name, response to name, and then we start going through recalls at bronze, silver, and gold levels. But we're going to do it all together here, hopefully in time, and we're going to do it with them all, all the dogs waiting in the sit. So handlers, command your dogs. Handlers, leave your dogs. And recall your dogs. And there's our retriever. You, we know already he's not going to run, is he? Um, at my pace, Mum. But he came back. The important thing is it doesn't matter about the speed. He came back to mum when she called. And we're going to do that again, but this time in the down. So we leave the dogs in the down. <laughs> or the dead, one or the other. Handlers, command your dogs. Handlers, leave your dogs. <laughs> I've had enough, mum. I want to go to sleep. Handlers, recall your dogs. And again, oh, what's going on? Oh, yeah, this is an interesting place, isn't it? It might take us some time, but the point is we can recall our dogs. We've always got control. Yes, give them a big round of applause, folks. That was great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, we are coming towards the end of our very short demonstration on the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Training Scheme. If you'd like to know more about the scheme, you can visit the Kennel Club website at any time, or we are in fact in Hall 3, uh, where there are different demonstrations going on throughout the day to support the scheme and show what we can do and have fun with our dogs. Because at the end of the day, the scheme is all about having well-mannered dogs in the public. But I think you'll agree they've all done really well, and the last word should be with the dog. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I present to you the Kennel Club Good Citizen Dog Training Scheme.
amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a massive round of applause. The Good Citizen Dog Scheme Display Team. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Once again, if you want to find out a little bit more about the work of the Kennel Club and the Good Citizen Scheme, you can find out more on their stand uh, here at Crufts. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is so good to be back. A very warm welcome to the world's greatest dog show, Crufts 2022. Welcome to the Crofts Main Arena here at the NEC Birmingham where we're just about to start the Heel Work to Music competition. We're looking forward to uh, nine brilliant Heel Work to Music routines, whereas yesterday we had the freestyle discipline where you would see a lot of different tricks performed. Today's the Heel Work to Music option and uh, Heel Work to Music is slightly different. We're looking for the dog to maintain a, a one of eight heel work positions during the routine around the handler. And there will be some freestyle, but a minimum of two thirds of the routine should consist of the heel work.
So we have uh, three judges for this competition, and uh, the, each judge will be looking at three different elements, and we'll have 30 marks to award each of the competitors. These are then averaged uh, to give us our final score. Our first judge today is Kim Lydon, an experienced handler who's actually been in this final uh, for uh, five years. And uh, so very experienced, knows what it's like to be down there. And second, we have our head judge, V. Richardson, also a very experienced judge, judged around the country. And uh, uh, Kath Hardman makes our third judge again, uh, another experience, previous uh, ju Crofts judge so, and competitor, so really knows what it's like to be here in the main arena. So I'm sure there's a few nerves out the back there um, because it is quite a big thing for our sport for uh, the handlers to make it into this main arena. It's what they will have been working to uh, all year, although this competition is slightly different because we didn't have any qualifiers over the last year. So these have all been invited because they actually managed to uh, make it into the 2020 semi-finals. And uh, our first competitor today actually uh, has uh, was the reserve dog and it's been called up. So, um, you know, we really wish this first dog good luck because they, they only found out on Monday that they were actually going to be in this competition. Whose full name is still more cloudy sunset? Pet name is Rogue. They started their cross journey back in 2015. So they are delighted. So the judges are all seated, ready to make their observations. And uh, here's our first competitor. This is Naomi Evans with her Border Collie Rogue, still more cloudy sunset. Uh, she's an eight-year-old bitch, and uh, she will be performing to a, a song called You Will Be Found. And all I'm in a Crufts competition. They have been here doing demonstrations in this main arena before, so they have been used to it. So we wish Naomi and Rogue luck. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? Let that lonely feeling wash away Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach, reach out your hand And oh, someone will come running And I know dark comes crashing through when you need a friend to carry you and when you're broken on the ground you will be found so let the sun come streaming in cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again lift your head and look around you will be found
Well done, Naomi and Rogue there with a nice straight bit of left backing there. And uh, it was nice to see a different change in pace there with that emotional piece of music starting off nice and slow. The judges will be looking at whether or not the hand maintains sort of one pace throughout or goes into slow pace, fast pace and normal pace. And so there was a nice mixture there with uh, that routine of the handle moving slowly. And it's a little bit harder sometimes to keep the dog focused when you're going at a slower pace. So she did really well at the start there, keeping that dog's attention. And, and as we're seeing there, she used the uh, bits of freestyle she could do. She can't do too much freestyle, but she really used that to convey that sort of feeling or also the, the sort of accents in the music when the dog jumped in the air. It really hit that uh, sort of cue in the music, which is one thing. Here we go. Here she goes into her jumps. And that is great interpretation for uh, the judges to take in. We're just going to ask our judges between each dog, uh, just to, for a few words. Um, I'm keen to learn, I know nothing, uh, and, and hopefully I'm sure our, our audience is keen to learn as well. So can you just tell us a little bit about overall, what is it you're looking for over your three scores? Well, I think what we're looking for, it, and it will vary, I guess, depending on judges, but we want to see elements of all the aspects, the content, the flow, the musical interpretation, a well put together routine that um, is linked to the music in some way, rhythmic, tells a story or whatever it is, but it all comes together. And another important thing is, is making sure that the dogs are enjoying it as much as the owners are. And it's a challenge in this environment because yeah. it's unique. Absolutely. And, and it's something these guys, it's difficult to train for this environment. So, yeah. you know, so it's wonderful that they're managing to keep their dog's attention, particularly when it's their first time, like Naomi. So. Absolutely. That's brilliant. Thank you so okay, much. We'll be back to you later on. Thank you, Kim. I'm sure uh, Kim please. there saying about the Kim. difficulty in keeping the dog's attention in the ring. She knows she's been in this ring five times. So she really, you know, it's nice that these judges, they've all been there and done it and they appreciate how hard it is to get the dogs up to this level. The dogs are working for up to four minutes with no treats, and no toys in there. And it's been built up over many years of training. You can see the points are coming in there and uh, into the sort of sevens and sixes there so a good start for Naomi no deductions that just means if there's any noise from the dog so 21.8 is a nice score to kick off our competition today so after a Lovely red and white border collie. We've got a very rare sight in Hillrex music, which is a German shorthead pointer. And this is Helen Boyd with Cedar, who's a 10 year old uh, GSP. And uh, they're performing to one last dance. And this is actually his uh, last routine. So it's his retirement performance of the apt music. This train has stopped at the end of 
Well, what a Ladies lovely performance to that piece of music. How Helen's not in floods of tears, I don't know. Because uh, that was obviously a great choice of music for their very last routine together. And, and Helen says that he's a bit of a mummy's boy and you can see he adores his mum. And uh, the judges are now going to be looking at sort of evaluating the content here. Yeah, how much, how many positions did she do? What directions did she do? And directions, I mean, about going sideways or backwards movement whilst they were in those different eight positions that they are looking at. Um, but Cedar here, you know, such a sort of character dog. And uh, you could just tell they have a great bond, these two. And I'm sure at 10 years old, he's still... Uh, going to be round for a long time yet um, on the sofa having a few cuddles with Helen because uh, you can just tell he's such a lovely gentleman of a dog. Welcome uh, to your judging appointment here at Crofts. Absolutely fantastic. Um, we've just seen a different breed there doing heel work to music. Can any breed do heel work to music? That's what's so wonderful about this sport. It is literally open to any breed. Um, it's up to the handler to choose a routine and music that really suits their breed. So uh, what might suit a tiny little dog um, will be completely different. We've seen Great Danes, we've seen Chihuahuas in this sport. It really is open to everything. And yes, it's up to the handler to showcase their dog's best movement by picking the music that suits their partnership and, and their, their particular breed. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. So you heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. You literally, Chihuahua or a Great Dane, it doesn't matter. You can, you can get involved in here work to music. Thank you very much, Virginia. Thank you. So, Vee making a very important point there about the choice of music. Really, that's one thing the judges are looking for in musical interpretation is, does that music really suit this team? So, uh, we've got the scores coming up for Helen and Cedar. And uh, we're into the sevens again, and an 8.2 there from Kim. Kim for interpretation, uh, which is great. Now, I don't think there's any deductions. I say deductions just means if the dog barks or makes some noise. So 22.57, go into first place there. So I think that music really sort of helped to sell that team. You know, if we, we had a fast, really fast track with that dog, it just wasn't going to suit. And, uh, you know, it's really up to the handler to find the right track that suits them and the dog. And uh, it takes quite a while to find it. So next we have our third competitor. This is Linda Webster with the lovely Lottie, a working sheepdog. She's six years old. And she's going to be performing to a Sounds of Music compilation. So we should all recognise this music, I reckon. She climbs a tree and scrapes her knee. Her dress has got a tear. She waltzes on her way to mass and whistles on the stair. And underneath her whimper, she has curlers in her hair. I've even heard her singing in the abbey. She's always late for chapel, but her penitence is real. She's always late for everything, except for every meal. I hate to have to say it, but I very firmly feel. Maria's not an asset to the Abbey. I'd like to say a word in her behalf. Maria makes me laugh. <laughs> How do you 
solve a problem like Maria? How do you catch a cloud and pin it down? How do you find a word that means Maria? A flippity jibbity, a will of the wisp, a clown. Many a thing you know you'd like to tell her. Many a thing she ought to understand. But how do you make her stay and listen to all you say? How do you keep a wave upon the sand? Oh, how do you solve? Problem like Maria, how do you hold on to me in your hand? What will this day be like? I wonder. What will my future be? Could be so exciting to be out in the world, to be free. My heart should be wildly rejoicing. Oh, what's the matter with me? I've always longed for adventure, to do the things I've never did. Now here I'm facing adventure. Then why? Well, a great little performance there for their first time in the ring. I mean, this dog's never been in this sort of atmosphere before. And so for a first performance in the ring, I think Linda will be over the moon with that. And uh, it really sort of showed the different directions that you could have there with the dog. Um, there was uh, eight, as I say, eight positions that dogs could be in. And the, the ones behind the handle are obviously a little bit harder for the dog to hold because the, the handler isn't looking down on the dog. So having the dog behind them and across the back there, you really have to have confidence here. You see that position. The handler really has to have confidence that the dog's there. And the, ha the judges are going to be looking how accurate that was. Was the dog straight behind? Was it staying in the position? And uh, that's something in the accuracy and team performance, which the judges have 10 marks for, which the, the uh, judges are going to be sort of deducting or adding points there if they really feel the dog has kept the position well. So um, I'd like to welcome Kath, um, the third of our Who Works Music judges here at Crofts 2022. It's just a really quick question, Kath. I've seen you doing your, routine, your training routines at Discover Dogs. What age do you start training a, a young dog for Who Works Music? Start, start when you get them. Okay, eight straight weeks, away. Eight weeks onward, yeah. There's a lot of things that you can be teaching the dog, even basic obedience at that stage, because yeah. you want a dog that's going to be staying with you in the ring. Yes. To dogs. Yeah. So the sooner you start bonding and getting a good play relationship with your dog, the best. Absolutely. And so it's so a little bit like good, responsible dog ownership, I guess. Absolutely. Getting your dog socialised and used to everything. Yes, it Brilliant. is. Brilliant. Thank you so much. My Thank pleasure. you. We'll be back. Thank you. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, that's Kat. So there, Kat's making the an Thank excellent you. point that these, these dogs will have started training from really quite young, just really with the basic obedience that you may have seen in the previous display here in the main arena, uh, because that is the, the sort of foundation of any sport like this, the dog being obedient. And then we can build on that with the various moves. And in this case, it's the heel work. And that heel work takes a lot of concentration from the dog. Um, you can see them sort of watching the handler intently. And uh, the dog's got to maintain that position for quite a, a long stretch. And as I say, they're working for up to four minutes today here. And uh, it's a lot of concentration the dogs have to place uh, on the handlers to maintain these positions. So here we have our next set of uh, marks. And uh, some nice marks there. A little bit of a deduction for a little bit of noise, perhaps, from uh, uh, one judge there. But uh, 21.87 into second place. So that was a good little first performance in the ring there for Lottie and Linda. I'm sure she will be happy with how uh, Lottie's performed because she's really had two years off because there's not really been a lot of competitions about. So it's been hard to keep these dogs uh, uh, on the ball. So we've got our next handler ready to come in. This is Irene Walsh with Jack, a nine-year-old working sheepdog. And they're performing to Hell's Medley. And uh, Jack's been in here once before, so he should be used to it. And he likes his training. So let's see what they're going to produce for us today.
<laughs> well, what a lovely, accurate little routine there from Irene and Jack. Some really nice close heel work, and that's something the judges are going to be really scoring. Should be scoring quite well there, I would think, because uh, he was maintaining a close position in nearly every position he was in. And Hannah was also showing off her training by holding her hands away from the position. You'll see some handlers may hold their hand nearer to the dog uh, to help the dog out, but this handler was helping the dog discreetly, but also showing that how well the positions had been taught by holding her hands well away from the dog and the dog having to maintain those positions there. And of course, um, uh, Irene created sort of interest by coming in in that black cloak. We all didn't know what was underneath, I didn't know. So uh, it was a bit of a difference when she took it off. Is I'm sure some of our audience may actually be wondering is what is the difference between heel work to music and freestyle? Okay, so what you'll notice here is they're using a number of positions. If you know obedience, you'll have the left side, but we have a cross, we have eight positions. So you'll see very similar things. If you look at freestyle, it's a wide variety of various moves. We do have a couple a few band moves that hit here but um, but it's a wide variety anything sort of goes within reason and make and the wellness of the dog so fantastic yeah. thank you so much Welcome. please a round of applause for our judge thank you thank you Kate so, so Kim giving us a good variation between the freestyle we saw yesterday and heel works music today and if you're around tomorrow then do come and watch the international freestyle always a very exciting to watch and yes here goes our scores are coming up and uh, we can see already that uh, we're we're into the eights there so some good scoring and uh, for the accuracy and some nice for the interpretation as well. So it didn't look like there was any barking at all. So 24.77 goes into first place. Excellent work there by Irene and Jack. Right, so Irene and Jack have set the standard. Will we see anything uh, better to pip them? but we've got a few more to go yet. So we've got our next dog and handler, which is Nikki with Elsa. Now, actually, if you were watching yesterday, you will know that they won the freestyle competition yesterday. So they are on form, and this little dog, Elsa, she is wired, and so probably it might have just helped her today so that she can keep the heel work sort of a bit more controlled. Now, they're performing to fame. So let's see what they've got in store for us today.
Well, well done, Nikki, keeping control of the, this busy little collie that she has there. They have an amazing bond, these two. And uh, choosing a great track, isn't it, Fame? Those of us of a certain age remember Fame, but even if you don't, it's just a piece of music you can get into, you can tap your foot to, and that's important when you're trying to engage the audience as well into your performance. And uh, Elsa there, big smile on her face, wagging that tail, and that's the great thing about this sport is the dogs really do enjoy it because there's lots of play, lots of treats during their training. And uh, a dog like Elsa, uh, who is uh, five years old now, she has been uh, working up to this moment really for five years and it's incremental all of the training we do. I'm a girl of the 80s. I love all that music. So we talked earlier uh, about the different content and, and marking categories. Can you just tell us a little bit about the musical interpretation, just in a few words? What does that mean? What are you looking for? Right, OK. I mean, we shouldn't be influenced in music, but it certainly helps if um, people pick music that everyone's familiar with and, you know, often something from the big screen. It really makes a difference and gets everybody tapping along. Um, but we're looking for a good interpretation of perhaps the phrases when the music changes from slow to fast, when the music, you know, has a definite accent. You know, we'd like to see something that happens on that. Um, like to see a, see a bit of a theme and a story, so getting into character that fits the music as well. So Brilliant. Thank you. That sounds like a, a lot of hard work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Back to John. Thank you. So V giving us some insight there into the, the type of music. And, and it is very hard to find this music. And for heel works music, you want something where you can do these long stretches of heel work. So it can be even harder to find a piece of music compared with freestyle. But some nice marks here into the uh, eights at the top there for the content. So there was nice content. And uh, interpretation again into the eights. That was nice. So uh, no deductions there by the looks of it. 25 dead just ahead of uh, Old Mine Jack, which is Irene Walsh's lovely red and white collie into 24.77. So does this mean Nikki and Elsa will do the double, as we call it, which is winning both the freestyle and the heel work to music competitions this year? But only time will tell. We've got a few more to go yet. So here's our next one. This is Sandra with her Bernie's Mountain Dog called Fizz, and this is a happy dog. She's got a permanent Bernie smile on her face. They're doing a Cockney medley, as you can tell by the outfit. Anytime you love a any evening, any day, you're fond of soul, doing the Lambeth walk. Hey, every little Lambeth gal with a little Lambeth howl, you're That don't matter very much. We play the Lambert way, not like you, but a bit more gay. And when we have a bit of fun, oh boy!
Wow, what a lovely dog that is. I mean, when they're just moving out, trotting out forward, that dog tail wagging, smile on her face, and Sandra's such a lovely handler with this dog. And uh, I really think that sort of epitomizes the whole sport of heel work to music when they were trotting out there with the dog on that left-hand side. Look at that little trot there. And, you know, we couldn't have had more different, really, from Elsa, that fizzy little red and white collie, and to this Bernese. And, this is not so easy to get this larger breed of dog to be able to use its body in this way, showing a great use of its back end there as it's pivoting on the spot. And all of these sideways movements and backwards movements that these dogs are doing really require the dog to know that they've got back ends. And uh, good use of the prop here, the barrel, um, made a useful prop to transition from uh, one move, one position to another, but also it was quite nice for the uh, interpretation of the music. So, as a judge, you don't know the routine. No. It's so, so how do you know they're being accurate? Because in in heel work to music, the dog has to be parallel to the handler, so it's it's as precise as obedience actually. So the dog should be shoulder to the handler's leg and should keep in that parallel position throughout. Okay, so, that, so you know the position that yeah. the dog should be in, and that's what you're marking in effect. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah, there are eight positions in heel work. There's eight positions, eight right. Positions, and yeah. you know them, and you know how well they're executing them. That's right, exactly. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kath. Thank that's you. brilliant. Thank you. So some really useful points there from Kath there about accuracy. And, and the other thing they're looking for in that division accuracy is team performance. And I really think uh, Sandra and Fizz, they're really sort of give out that team performance uh, very, very well. So some reasonable marks there and uh, interpretation quite nice to that Cockney medley. So we're going 22.53 into fourth place for lovely Fizz there, who I'm sure we're going to see back in this main arena again. And uh, because it will be, it's great to see these these other breeds in this uh, Heel Work to Music final. And we have another one next. This is a little rescue dog you may have seen her yesterday in the freestyle competition. This is Freckle with Anne. And she's 10 years old, this little dog. And was found on the streets by the dog warden. And that's when... Uh, and took her freckle on. They're performing to just a gigolo.
Bozzy, bozzy, bop, city bop. better picture of a motivated happy dog i mean freckles such character there and a cracking little routine i love that bit of music she was full of drive and enthusiasm throughout and showing off these heel work positions by taking her hands away from some of the positions and showing off the dog has been really well taught but you can really sort of see this dog's character in the routine and that's what makes it so interesting because uh, you know you could have a collie and it could be doing everything absolutely perfect but if it hasn't got that X factor look at that dog you know it just wants to do it it's enthusiastic and that's what we need in a routine um, one of the things you're judging on is content and flow. Can you just tell us all a little bit about what that means? Yeah, so it will include the positions that we talked about earlier, but it's also how it all flows with, within the music as well. It doesn't stutter. It goes from one move to another and appropriately in time with the music. So you just want it to be a continue, nice movement. So one one movement from another. It doesn't mean you don't stop, it just means it all links and means something. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you for your insight. Thank you so much. So we're gonna get these scores. So here's the scores for Freckle with Anne Shuka. And starting well there with some eights and uh, let's keep our fingers crossed it stays in the eights. Let's have a look here. So an 8.5 from V Richardson there for uh, accuracy and team performance. Interpretation. Oh, we've still got some eights in there. Now, was there any noise? So, uh, no. Into third place on 24.63. How close is that at the top? We've got Irene and Jack on 24.77 and uh, Nikki and Elsa on 25. So, Anne and Freckle going into third place. So our next competitor is Christina with Shay, and um, Shay, sorry, is a 11-year-old working sheepdog border collie. They're going to be performing to Rhapsody in Blue. So we've got a bit of a theme going on in this heel work routine. I think. I think they're off to New York.
Well, we're being treated to some happy heel working dogs today. I mean, shy there at nearly 11 years old, so enthusiastic in his heel work, and that's what you get through positive training. And, uh, you know, yes, he might have been a bit excited there, but he really exudes that, that, ex that entertainment which we want and that motivation that we want. And Christina choosing to do more of a story there. She obviously came off of the subway and then was following the map and eventually found the monument there. And, uh, you know, you often see more of a, perhaps an interpretational, of a, uh, interpretation of a track of music rather than a story in Heelworks music, whereas uh, freestyle, you might get a bit more of a story. Um, one of the things I've noticed, and I'm sure nobody in the room could have failed to notice, is the, how happy the dogs are. So how do you balance and train in the accuracy, but get the joy that every single dog absolutely is showing here today? It is a very fine balance between making them really enjoy it and having them go completely over the top. Um, so, and every dog is very different. So some dogs are very easily wound up and get very bouncy very quickly. And others, you do have to put an awful lot of work in with play and, and things like that to get the attitude. But yeah, we are very, very much looking to see that a dog is willing and natural and committed to what it's doing and to see a team partnership. And that really shines out when they're, you know, looking as happy as they are. So. Uh, I think it uh, helps if the handler feels relaxed and happy as well, feeds down to the dog and the dog works, you know, Brilliant. in a really happy manner. Thank you so much. I mean, all that positive reinforcement that obviously goes into the training really, really does, does shine out because these dogs just look so happy. It's wonderful. Thank you. So Christina and Shai were here back in 2020 for their first time. So this was their second time in the big ring. And uh, we're starting off with some sevens there across the judges. Accuracy, not too bad, a little bit lower there. But uh, interpretation, the story, did it go down well with the judges? Did they get the story? That's what you're always thinking as, as the handler. You know, you've got a, it's almost like a silent movie. 22.43 into sixth place go Christina and Shy. So we have uh, one more after this dog, and that is Helen Boyd again, but this time with Raven. And uh, this is a 12-year-old bitch, and they're going to be performing to Icarus. And as she's 12 years old, this again will be uh, Raven's last competition. So I don't know how Helen's keeping it together. Two dogs in this final both retiring today.
well done to Helen and Raven there. And it's no mean feat remembering two routines on the same day. I can tell you it takes quite a bit of brain, you know, power from you as the handler. And if you want a sport where, you know, it keeps your brain alive as well, I tell you this is the sport because these handlers, they've got to keep one ear on the music. They've got to keep one eye on the dog. They've got to be feeling the music as it's coming to the point where the transition is about to happen so that they can give the dog the command just before it so the dog is doing the transition on the accent in the music the bit where they want to do that accent to show off their interpretation so you know it really is a lot of concentration from the handlers that they have to put in there and and i know when i'm teaching people i get them to perform their routines without the dog but talking to the dog because you've got to get used to all these little things that you've got to say to the dog um, during the competition. Um, and I just wanted to ask if any of our audience has been inspired by what they've seen, how can they get involved in Hear Work to Music? Well, I think the first port of call is the Kennel Club. Um, if you go to uh, Hall 3, there is somebody there who will be able to direct them to local clubs. Um, or Try Facebook, you know, the spotted variety, and ask if anybody is doing heel work to music. Um, it's being taken up by a lot of clubs because it, it is a, it's, it inspires dogs to do more, it inspires you to do more as well. Yeah, and, and from what we've seen today, it's so inclusive. It doesn't matter what breed of dog exactly. you've got. You know, as a, as a person, it doesn't yeah. matter how old you are, how young you are, we've seen all ages, it's absolutely fantastic. Everything so. is encompassed by heel work to music, and of course you, you choose your own music, so you can choose your own speed, yeah. and make sure that it actually suits the dog. Yeah. No, it's brilliant. It's I've, I've really sport. enjoyed it, and I'm sure everybody else has as yeah. well. So ladies and gentlemen, please, can we put a big hand together for all our judges? They've been absolutely wonderful today, and I'm going to hand back to John. Thank you very much, Kate. So some great insights there into how to get started. And yes, have a look at the Kennel Club website. That's really going to help you out. And if you are coming along, go to that Hall 3. And there's a couple of rings there that are doing Hillworks Music, how to get started demonstrations. So this is the scores for our last dog there, which was Raven. Still more silk and satin. So some nice marks there for interpretation. So looking good, no deductions. Goes into fourth place with 23.43. So some fantastic routines we've seen today and the top three, I mean, they're really tight on scores. Um, Raven there going into fourth place on 23.43, but our winner uh, which is uh, Nikki with Elsa. With on 25 there, as you can see. And then Irene with Jack on 24.77. Look how close that is. And then the lovely, I have to say, a favourite freckle there into third place on 24.63. But I think every handler will be pleased with their dogs today. They've had two years off of the circuit with not many shows last year to get their dogs match fit. And uh, normally our last competition is perhaps about October time. And uh, so they won't have had any competitions to take the dogs to between then and now. Um, although there are plenty of training shows. And training shows are a great way of preparing your dog for the arena or any competition. So if you are interested in the sport and you, your dog perhaps does some of these tricks and you think, oh, I'd like to have a go, you can always pop along to a training show where you can dip your toe, but you can take your treats and everything in the ring because there won't be judges, but there will be experts on hand to help you out. So there is Nikki with Elsa, that lovely fizzy red collie. She's done the double, uh, which is to have won the freestyle yesterday and the heel work to music today. And she will, of course, be in tomorrow in the international because she won yesterday. She represents the UK in the international freestyle. And the international competition is it's always very wide open because we don't know what the handlers from abroad will be showing because uh, obviously they all keep their routines under wraps so 
Uh, we're going to hear a little bit from Nikki here. Oh, let's switch your microphone on. There we are. We need to make sure everyone can hear you. There we go. That does help. So how are you feeling Not right a word. Now? Not a word, you lot. <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling, Nikki? Um, yeah, I'm pretty amazed, to be honest. I was not expecting that today. Um, definitely wasn't expecting another win. Yeah, I'm really happy, really excited, a little bit shocked. And you chose Fame, the theme song from Fame. Is that one of your favourite movies? Is that why? Um, and to be honest, I've wanted to do that song for a long time, but I've never quite had the dog fast enough, and she definitely qualifies as fast enough. So we thought, yeah, let's go for it. I love the theme, I love musical theatre, so... And yeah. what's going through your head while you're doing that routine? Because, of course, he'll work to music a bit different to freestyle. It, does it take more concentration from you as you're going through the routine? To be honest, with Elsa, you have to be telling her every step what you want her to do. So all that goes through my head is close, spin, point, sit, turn. So, um, yeah, I don't have time for anything else other than the next cue. Well, you've done the double. Congratulations to you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do it for the incredibly talented Nikki Heinsen and Elsa. Well, Nikki and Elsa there are a real sort of uh, ambassador for the sport. And I know Nikki a little, and uh, I know that she really lives and breathes uh, doing this sport with her dogs. And uh, she's uh, been in the sport for many years with uh, red and white. She always has red and white border collies. Uh, she has another youngster coming up. So, uh, I mean, I'm guaranteed that she's going to be in this finals uh, over the next few years. So that's great. And then, of course, we've got Irene with Jack there, uh, an older, more experienced dog, but just showing that uh, the longevity that these dogs can uh, perform at, at in this sport. So a great example of happy dogs in heel work today in that ring. Really uh, did sell the sport, hopefully, if you're watching and you've never seen it before. You can see just now the dogs are still wagging their tails and so interested in what's going on today. So plenty more on this day two of Crufts 2022. At 1.15, we have the Rescue Dog Agility. At 1.45, the Crufts Singles for Agility. And it's the small, medium and large categories. At 2.30, we've got the Crufts Medium and Large Novice ABC Finals for Agility. At 3.10, Flyball Fast and Furious, that is. The Team Quarter Finals. At 3.50, the Vulnerable Breed Competition. And uh, always lovely to see the wide variety of breeds there. At 4.20, we'll see Nikki doing another uh, spotlight performance of that wonderful routine to fame. At 4.45, the Cruft Singles Finals were small, medium and large in agility. And then the Breeders' Competition Final, that's when you'll see a range of uh, breeds there, but all from the same kennel. And then we have the group judging, the Terrier group today at 6.10. And at 7 o'clock is the group judging for the Hound group. So stick around and continue to watch this main arena coverage. It's obviously hard as a parent to see your child in pain. Ruby would actually go on Olivia's bed and tuck herself into where Olivia's pain were. And that would probably be the only time when she would actually settle and feel a bit more relaxed. I think without Ruby, we would have 
you know, struggled even more to, to see Olivia suffer like she did. Olivia's got cerebral palsy. She's non-verbal, but even though she's non-verbal, she has a wicked sense of humour. She's laughing at me now. <laughs> as soon as we got Ruby, she immediately went straight underneath Olivia's wheelchair. In fact, when she were a puppy, she used to actually be on Olivia's knee uh, in the wheelchair. So yeah, the bond was from the beginning, from when she was a puppy. I think without Ruby, I think there'd be a big void in Olivia's life. She does play a massive part in Olivia's life. She gives them more confidence. The during COVID, she's been a fantastic companion for her. She helps her with a physio. She's not a trained therapy dog, but she does do quite a lot of therapies with Olivia through play and a physiotherapy, like with Olivia's athletic movements. Um, she seems to be able to make her quite still. She just uh, assists her where she, where she can and I think she gives her a lot of emotional, emotional support as well. Stretch your arms up, stretch both arms in the air. Olivia likes the cuddles because she gets to go, she, she gets to give Ruby a proper cuddle in this, this way. Mm. Don't you? Olivia just loves it. She just loves her, um, the affection. I think with Ruby, she's just got a bond uh, uh, that just can't be broken, really. Uh, because of Ruby, we're able to get outside in the fresh air and throw a few balls or go for a walk. difficult for her to interact in some ways um, but just finding little ways that you can uh, get her involved uh, and playing with, uh, with Ruby uh, is, a, is a great way of doing that um, so yeah so it's, it's been really good for Olivia Olivia's sort of um, health and well-being really just having Ruby around and being able to get out of the house and she enjoyed that yeah. Yeah. we're not always able to do things that other families can do but Ruby brings a lot to the family and she's just made family life and Olivia's life complete really so in our eyes she's she, she is a hero. Everyone loves Simba. He's either bouncing off the walls or he's asleep. He is a very, very friendly dog. He loves people. There's not many dogs like him in the country. We're a very small team that supports all of the London Fire Brigade. Our job is to investigate fires to determine their cause and origin. And we have our dogs to support us. Simba's an English Springer Spaniel. We got him when he was uh, a year old. I picked him up in Birmingham and the very next day we went to work. He was very much part of the fire brigade from that point on. They have a number of qualities that are absolutely vital to what we do. The dogs themselves are known as a hydrocarbon detector dog. They are looking for the presence of ignitable liquids and solids. The dogs, with their keen sense of smell, can identify that rapidly. So we have a wooden stirring stick, so you'll put a little bit of paraffin on the stick and then I'll go and hide it. And Simba's job is to find it. Even if I place it down, he's seen where it's been put, he will still use his nose to look for it. So he must trust his nose first. The best part of the search is not finding it, it's the searching for it. If you look at his tail, when he's searching, that's when it's moving the fastest. So the rule of a dog's tail never lies, always applies. And as soon as he finds it, he gives you the ball back and he wants to go find the next one. He always amazes me still sometimes when I think, oh, it's gonna take us a few minutes to do this. And within seconds, Simba's found it. He's a very, very unique dog. 
What Simba's in now is mainly what he wear in a fire. So these are boots to protect his paws from sharps. They're not fireproof because he doesn't go into a hot fire scene. But it's important that his paws are safe from kind of metal or broken glass. We go absolutely everywhere together. So we genuinely are a team. We're on duty half the time and then are available in case there's an incident. Whenever we're working, I don't really need to tell Simba what to do because he's already second guessed. He also uh, works as a bit of an unofficial therapy dog as well. Some of the work we do may not be particularly pleasant and the one great thing that he does, he actually supports our other fire investigators. He's always there, he's, he's genuinely one of the team. He's emotionally intelligent as well, so um, I always like telling the story of Simba's first shout and we were called to investigate an arson. He did indicate a number of areas where an accelerant had been used. The sad thing was the owner of the house, she was pregnant. She was really, really upset. But Simba's mood changed immediately. He went from being really excited to really calm. He went straight over to her, laid his head on her lap, and he allowed her to stroke him for, I think it was nearly 20 minutes. At the most serious of incidents, he does really calm people down. Simba is the perfect dog for the role. You've heard the term, if you find a, a job you love, you'll never work another day in your life. He's got a job that he loves. Every dog's a hero, but the only difference is that Simba's been given the opportunity to do a really important job, and that's what makes him a hero. We're not here. I help people in my job, I help people doing this. We're not heroes. My name is Peter Lewin. I'm a paramedic for East Midlands Ambulance Service. I also run Pete Lewin Newfoundlands. We take people swimming in open water with the dogs for emotional support. This is Bob. Bob is our non-swimmer. Uh, Bob is our mascot dog. Storm, he's very needy. Sonar, he'll swim his heart out for you. And Walker, he's been given to us by the American Foundation for prevention of suicide. Love a bit of a swim across, like normal. We get the guys to swim out with us and I'll call one of the dogs out. And say Sonar. And all you can hear is sonar blowing out of his nose as he's swimming by. It's just peace and quiet and takes you away from the stress of everything that we go through. We've been doing a lot of work this last summer with the East Midlands Ambulance Service. As you can imagine, it's been quite a tough time for all of us. It's okay not to be okay. And who helps those that are helping the others? Not just paramedics and ambulance staff, but the nurses, everybody else who's there to help them. I did a staff wellbeing day here when I did the quiet swim. I got extremely emotional when I finished it, I cried. And then Sonar just sat with me for the whole day then. Just give me a little nudge every now and again. When you're in the water, you just get that element of, it makes you just feel great. You see, we were never ever going to get used for real rescue in this country, unfortunately. And I sort of developed different manoeuvres for getting people out of the water. But these moves are not just for real rescue. These are great for emotional support. Because as I've got that person in that hold, it's given that confidence that somebody's there for them. We are physically rescuing them, but it's it more so mentally rescuing them. There's three people around that will tell you that they're here today because of swimming with these which is an amazing, an amazing thing to do. I go into schools and I do water safety workshops. The girl who helped me with that from the start, she absolutely loved it. We're having a discussion around at her house about what we're going to do. She says to me, do you remember I was late coming to give you hand with your training session? I says, yeah, I do. And she says, well, I was going to take an overdose that day. But I decided I'd go and help you out because of the dogs and that. And she said it was his eyes, the way they look at you. He wasn't there to judge, he wasn't there to criticise, condemn or anything. 
All he wanted to do was come out and take me back to shore. Did that for it. And she's still here today because of that swim. And I just thought, yeah, that's pretty powerful. It makes me feel proud, passionate about what we're doing, proud of the team, proud of these boys. To have that ability to help people, it's just amazing. My pets are helping these people, it's amazing. I couldn't see my girls' faces. I felt like my world was crumbling. It was like my eyes were closed. I was then matched with Milo. It was one of the happiest days of my life. Milo's a hero because he's given me my life back. He's enabled me to be a dad again to my girls and to be a husband again to my wife. I first lost my sight three years ago. It happened when I was at work. I used to work on a farm. I've got a condition called diabetic retinopathy, which is when blood vessels grow into the back of the eye and then they can leak into your eye, obscuring the vision. I had a bleed in my eye. My wife Amanda picked me up and I never went back to the farm. I went into a very dark place, which I never want to go in again. Being trapped in four walls, not being able to go out, I was petrified. I'd say he hadn't just lost his sight, I think he just lost himself, if that makes sense. We're not afraid to talk about it now, but he'd often cry at night because life had changed for him and he had to adapt and learn things all over again. So yeah, it was, it was tough. Now in my left eye, I can't see nothing at all. And in my right eye, I can see blurry shapes. I wouldn't go anywhere without Milo and Milo doesn't go anywhere without me. He's enabled me to go out independently, confidently, knowing that I'm going to be safe. I felt an instant connection with Milo. As soon as he put his chin on my, on my knee, as soon as he gave me his paw, it was amazing. Milo's looking out for dangers. He's looking out for curbs, cars, anything ahead of me that I can't see. Milo will find a bench as well, so if I asked him to find a bench, he will take me straight to the bench and put his chin on it. It's like I've got my eyes when I've got Milo. I just feel so safe with him. There's a few moments Milo has actually saved my life. We were at a crossing and I'd pushed the button and the beepers had just gone off. So I asked Milo to go forward and Milo didn't move. He was like he was concrete to the ground. Two cars sped past through the crossing as the beepers were going. A couple of seconds later, while we were walking up the street, a police car sped past after these two cars. If we'd have walked forward, me and Milo would have both been hit by these cars and it was that fast and Milo didn't move, he kept me safe, he used his eyes, his instincts and he saved my life. Every day I put my life in Milo's paws, he's everything not just to me to my whole family. You know, people see Scott or other people walking with their guide dog and they just think oh that's just their aid but no it's, it's far much more than that, he really is. I feel like Milo is my hero as well. He's given me my husband back, you know. He's given the children that dad figure back. He helps my dad and not just my dad, everyone, and he makes them all happy. He's like become a lot happier and because he's got a lot more freedom now. He helps him when he's like crossing the roads. Soft, he's cuddly, perfect cleanly. I can be happy again now and it gives me a real sense of purpose. I'm now at college studying counselling. I would never have had the confidence to go to college if it wasn't for Milo. He helps me with my anxiety if I do start to panic slightly. I really want to use the skills that I'm going to learn because of Milo to help other people that are in my position. Milo's given me my sight back. He's given me a vision. He's given me everything and I can't thank him enough.
We rescued Chewy at 12 weeks of age. He was found abandoned with his litter mates, his brother and sister, in a garden. They were tied in a bag. They'd got duct tape around their paws, their mouths. Never really identified who'd abandoned the pups. The lady whose garden it was found them, thank goodness, took them to her vet. They put a post on their Facebook page with like, oh my goodness, look at these little puppies. They'll be looking for their homes. So I went down on the train and met him, brought him back first class. The train was actually 15 minutes late leaving Preston because all the Virgin train crew wanted their photograph taken with him. And he's been with us ever since. When we adopted him, we decided that we'd, we'd give something back. In 2019, I read a report on Facebook um, about a puppy that had been found buried alive, very close to where we are now. He was actually sitting on my knee when I read the article, and it, it just rang so many bells that, that there but for the grace of God, for the ones from expression, that could have been him. Unfortunately, his, his injuries were too severe. He had to be put to sleep. And I thought, do you know what? This little dog just deserves to be forever remembered by this town. As a permanent memorial to Shiloh, we planted a tree for him because it's just continually going to grow, it's going to change as he would have done. So one of the reasons why we selected this tree is because it's an evergreen, so it's almost like a symbol of eternity. So yeah, it's just the tree we planted for, for Shiloh. When we first got Chewy, we decided that we'd actually teach him to do CPR on one of our other dogs, just purely as a trick. And that actually proved quite useful, probably coming up for about two years ago now, where he effectively saved my husband's life. Right, he's got quite advanced multiple sclerosis, he's wheelchair bound, struggles very much with his speech now, but it's almost like he's found a way to communicate with Chewie, and Chewie's found a way to communicate with him. He's always got one eye on Ray, and what Ray's doing. It's just like he's his soulmate. I was actually out in the garden. The two bigger dogs were upstairs. He was with Ray. I've heard him barking, and his barking got more and more frantic. Luckily, the, the French doors were open. I think if the, the doors had been shut, um, I probably wouldn't have heard him. I've come into the house, and Chewie was licking his face, jumping on his chest, licking his face, and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, just, just what's going on? Ray had actually stopped breathing, and then suddenly his heart stopped. I managed to get him onto the floor, did some CPR on him while talking to a, a, an ambulance crew, and Chewie never left his side. It was almost like he was making sure that I was doing everything right. And every day that passes now, I, I just thank whatever's upstairs that we've got him, because without him, I wouldn't have my husband. We're celebrating 30 years of marriage this year, and it's all thanks to this little guy. Yeah. Sorry. With Chewie, apart from what he did for, for Ray, he's just such a special little soul. You know, his life could have been so much different. His life could have been so tragic. He's just had such a huge impact on both our lives. It's, it's just amazing.
lives from the war. We're fundraising to help dogs during this humanitarian crisis. Together, the Kennel Club Charitable Trust and the Kennel Club have donated £50,000 to the appeal. And ladies and gentlemen, here today, you can help make a difference. Every single penny that you can donate, no matter how large or small that donation is, will help make a difference. You can donate now by going to the Kennel Club Charitable Trust website, which is kennelclubcharitabletrust.org forward slash support dash dogs dash Ukraine. Head online and donate however much you can. There are also donation points on all of the Kennel Club stands around the show this year. And as I said, this is all with the Kennel Club Charitable Trust and every single penny has been ring-fenced and will go towards the Ukrainian appeal. If you've already made a donation, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, are we ready for some rescue dog agility? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm Crufts welcome to our rescue dog agility demonstration team. I'm gonna hand you over to the Welcome back to Val. Crufts then and the rescue dog agility. Can't wait for this. This is a display to highlight the fantastic work and the success stories of some of the UK's dog rescue organization it's a very special event you're going to see unfold in front of us i've got our agility expert graham partridge alongside me graham what are you expecting to see here thanks very much ali nice to see you uh what am i expecting to see i'm expecting to see uh some agility hopefully uh, and those the purest amongst you you know don't hold your hopes up too far but this is all about the dogs but what you will see is probably a little bit of mayhem and you will certainly see some dogs competing here who are having the time of their life they've been rescued from the fantastic rescue organizations they fall on on their feet they're being loved and they're in the main arena at cross and they're going to have a great time yep and there are five rescue organizations represented here at crufts for this particular display and the first represents the national animal welfare trust and this is bev northy with the collie cross jemima so lining themselves up at the start of this course and Jemima is a Collie Cross Hunterway, four years old. Strong start here for Jemima. What is key, Graham, to working with a rescue dog in agility? Missed a couple of weaves, goes back. Look at that technique. Well, the, the key is, it's just doing something with your dog. It could be another, another activity, it could be obedience, could be working trials. Uh, this is a, a, an agility display, but if you, I always say, if you've got a, a mentally tired dog, a physically tired dog, you've got a dog that's much easier to, to live with. But I, I know Bev, she's from uh, Cornwall, where I'm from, uh, and she competes regularly, so I expect that she's going to finish off in some style here. Fabulous work. But Jemima was rehomed to Bev when she was just 18 months old, so she's been with her for some time now. And beforehand, Bev did say that Jemima barks for fun, and we certainly heard a bit of that on the way around. Thoroughly <laughs> enjoying herself. Exactly. She's, they're entitled to. We'll let them off on, right, on this one. So next out is Dieter, the German Shepherd, alongside Doug Lewis. Doug, somebody you also know, Graham. Yes, Doug, uh, no, Doug, he says he's representing the over 40s uh, out there today, but he said he didn't care, he said he loves his dogs, he, he, and he just loves doing agility. He's a member of Thames Dog Training Club in Berkshire, um, a very active member there, and he's just really proud to be representing the rescue organisations on display here. And Dieter was rescued from Val Grey's Border Collie and Animal Rescue. He was on the streets of Croydon before finding shelter at Val Grey's, and then came into Doug's life in September 2012, when just seven months old. And it's quite amusing because Dieter said that, well, Doug said that Dieter decided that Doug belonged to him. So that you can tell really who's in charge out of this partnership. I think that was actually Doug's wife who's in charge of the partnership, <laughs> but, uh, but no, just as I say, he, he, he really pleased to be here. This is always a popular event to watch because the dogs have such character, such a bond with their owners because of their background and the way their owners have 
managed to form you know, such a bond and improve these dogs' lives. And then in return, the dogs improve the lives of their owners. Some of them have had a really atrocious start um, in life, and I'm not going to go through them, but uh, they've been taken in by the rescue organisations, and these people that you see running them today uh, have, have been and chosen the dog after very careful consultation with the um, rescue organisations. They've decided that they can give these dogs a home, and they, as I said earlier, they've fallen on their feet. They, they just have the best time. Well, Diamond is getting underway and run by Sharon Can, 12-year-old Staffy, an excitable dog. And Sharon has said, you know, been challenging to train because of the background from when Diamond came into her life. Yes, it, it is very difficult. As you say, Diamond uh, wants to be with Sharon, but that's a really, really good thing. Um, you know, they, they've formed this bond. Um, she is a little bit frustrating. They come from Cornwall again. They used to train with me, so I know this pairing very well. The sweetest dog you could not, uh, you could imagine. Missed the A-frame, recovered well. Full of delight, wanting to complete the course. There we go. You see the understanding between the two. And Diamond from the National Animal Welfare Trust. Great work. That was a popular round for the crowd here. The National Animal Welfare Trust won the UK's top animal welfare charities, and they've got five rehoming centres across the south of England, Berkshire, Bedfordshire, Cornwall, Essex, and Hertfordshire. And they celebrated their 50th anniversary last year. Well, here's an energetic entry from Jess. And Wendy Nixon, Jess the Collie from Val Grays, again, full of energy. This looks like it could be a very quick round here, Graham. Hopefully, uh, if those of you at home, if you can see any numbers next to the obstacles, we normally put them in the correct order, but these are set up for a, a later part of the display. Um, you get the idea of where they're supposed to be going, so let's just see how she gets on with this A-frame. Strictly speaking, you should touch the white bits on the way up and on the way down. Perfectly done. Brilliant agility, brilliant pace. Wow, that was fabulous. Five years old, Jess arrived with Wendy when she was just nine months. And Wendy said she was very undernourished when she arrived with her, had to really teach her how to trust it and, and, and indeed how to play. And a lot of agility, Graham, is the training based around play and enjoyment and fun. All about repetition and reward. We don't, there's no force used in any agility training. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about that in just a minute. Here's a, another Collie Cross. This is another Jess uh, alongside Cats and they're representing the Happily Ever After Dog Rescue. It's all right, we're just having a little check of the audience there, just to see uh, whether everyone's watching her, you know, how well she's going to do, so. Didn't fancy that first poll, the weaves. There we go, a little bit of encouragement. Not so bad after all. Through the tunnel. There we go, now the tunnel. How would Jess take on the A-frame? Oh, yes, makes it. A few more jumps to go. Full of eagerness. Last you go. Lovely stuff, good recovery. But most importantly, it's about having the fun out there and showing what these rescue dogs can do. Exactly, it's not about perfection. It's about cementing and establishing the bond between owner and dog. Uh, and just making the dog's life just that little bit better. Another collie is three-year-old Megan, and Jodie Parry is representing Val Grays again. And Val Grays is a founded in 1978 and doing great work for a long time. It's a very tiny rescue, isn't it? Based around Val's own property in Surrey. Oh, deciding to take on the tunnel. Yeah, look at the speed over the jump, almost overrunning herself, just such as the, the eagerness and the pace. Fast and frenetic. The crowd are loving it. I'm going to convert you into an agility addict here soon. So, yeah, no, it is great fun. The dogs enjoy it. They love it. Um, as you say, they're having a great time. And the crowd have really enjoyed that one. And Kat says that Jess... Megan uh, hopes to compete a little bit more in the future. Rescued from Ireland as a puppy is Megan. So this is Lorna Goodban, uh, someone who's uh, a regular on the uh, agility circuit. Or oh, having said that, she just decides she's going to go straight past the weaving <laughs> poles. But uh, but that's fine. We'll, gl we'll gloss over that one. Great turn of speed. 
goes Molly. He's three years old. I'll tell you what, Lorna is, is having to work just as hard to keep up with that. And it's that closeness, isn't it, to the dog, physically wise, to be able to instruct them over the jumps. If you're looking to be really good competitively with the dogs, the closer you can be to the dog when it's doing an obstacle, the less of a chance of a mistake, yeah. Anubis comes out for Denko uh, with Sally, another representative of the Happily Ever After the Rescue Centre. And they don't have kennels. The dogs are cared for in the home by Kieran Adams and her family, or they're placed in foster homes. Here we go. Oh, we are off. This back. is more like it. This is what we want from Rescue Dog Agility. I'm just going to enjoy this arena. This is my time to shine. A few laps. <laughs> Well, I no. think we need to find an athletics track, and, an athletics track and have the 400 metres. It's much more suitable. <laughs> I think she said, why should I come back when I'm getting everybody laughing at me um, and I am just the centre of attention? And that's, that's really great. Are we coming back? Yes, I think we are. We're, we're not even going yeah, to in a minute. Yep. Yeah. Well done. So, crowd favourite Oh, come already. on, bring her back in. Oh, bring her back in. Come on. More. The crowd want more. Oh, well done, Anubis. No, didn't fancy the first one. <laughs> I see this lovely big space, and that means I can just have a good old run around. <laughs> Daisy and Julian. Daisy, the collie cross. And Julian looking after another dog from Valgraves, five and a half year old crossbreed. Needs a little bit of encouragement here. Mm, do I like that? Yes. <laughs> And I think probably one of the things we should just point out as well, e making it even more special for these dogs, is that they will never have seen probably artificial grass. They'll have never have been in an atmosphere. So it's a fantastic uh, test of their temperament uh, and the confidence that they now possess. So. Yeah. Sometimes things on the floor smell a little bit more interesting than, yeah. than the tunnel. <laughs> And the other thing, you know, these dogs probably haven't done much training, you know, what with lockdown and, and probably wouldn't have been around many shows. So the bright lights and the crowd, there's so many interesting things going on. Yeah, as, well, as I say, these dogs, apart from last year or the year before when they were here, uh, won't have been in this type of atmosphere at all. So, oh, come on, come on, Daisy. Yes. <laughs> Did you see? Did you see? Look, I'm going to do the jump. Look, I'll just wait for oh, it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Worth noting that Julian himself had retired from agility. So not only has he had a very short time to train up Daisy, he says he's only had a very short time to actually train himself back up to I do agility. I, we're a bit keen to get going now, this lab, I tell you. Oh, this is Elsa. Alongside uh, Hayley, Elsa was rescued from Wood Green for such a famous animal shelter. There, there we go, just displaying sniffer abilities. Now, do we like the tunnel? We like the tunnel. There we go. The best Elsa's way to motivate, sorry, Ali, best way to motivate in Labrador is food. Definitely. I've been there, done that. There's going to be a big treat at the end here for Elsa. He's eight and a half years old for uh, a Labrador. He was very exuberant, Taylor says, when she was rehomed at just 18 months. Come on, Elsa. So I think up and over that A-frame in the blink of an eye. There we go. Up and oh! <laughs> and that's a oh oh airborne. Oh, where's where's the bottom gone? Yeah. <laughs> it's what you call a flying round. I think so. Well, we'll see the jumps be lowered now for the final group of dogs to go over this course. So you've probably got a moment, Graham, just to reflect on you know how important it is to take on rescue dogs, but more importantly, you know, what if you're someone thinking about taking on a rescue dog, what should you be bearing in mind? Well, I think the first thing you should do is you should discuss it with the rest of your family, make sure that you can actually accommodate within your family. Um, and then I would uh, go to your nearest rescue center and speak to the people in charge and discuss what the best type of dog for you would be and whether there's any associated problems, etc. So definitely, do, do, do think about going and supporting one of your rescue organisations and giving one of these dogs a, a fantastic new home. I can tell you, Bear the Pomeranian is already a crowd favourite. Oohs and ahs of appreciation as Bear started this round. Four years old. Look at the way she's covering the ground, eating up the arena. 
And actually, a bit of fame behind this dog as well. Then adverts for the great British Bake Off. Yep, I didn't, didn't see it myself, but uh, yeah, no, they say they get involved in all sorts of things. And again, it's just another test of the dog's confidence. They've got cameras in front of them and all things. So it's just testament to the training that they've received in its new home. And Bear, who we just saw, he actually runs agility at grade six. A very accomplished round, we just saw. Lightning from Happily Ever After is with Bridget. And Lightning is seven years old, picked off the streets of Romania at two years old, brought to the UK and soon started a much happier life with Bridget and full of exuberance going around the course. Yes, they do. They do love it. It's, just, it's one of these things that I don't know why they just they just love doing things. But it's repetition and reward, and the dog is doing something with its owner, which always is, is really good. Huge amount of air going over those jumps. And such a small frame dog. It's an absolute delight to see. That was a very popular performance as well. It was very nice. Been proud of that in any agility competition. Time for the Terrier. This is Bilbo and Peter from Battersea Cats and Dogs Home, who care for thousands of dogs and cats every year. And it's established back in 1860, Battersea. Moved to South London in 1871 and has remained on the same site in Battersea until today. Oh, well, we, I mean, we're, we're shooting around this course now. Can we get another, we'll do a bit of agility commentary now. Can we get a tight turn around that jump? Yes, we can. She's into the tunnel, out of that and up and over the A-frame in the blink of an eye, back into that tunnel. Come on. Just a few more jumps now for Bilbo to clear. Sharp turning, short legs. Over the last and safely. That was fantastic, Graham. 30 seconds, there we are, and the winner is, and I've got my toy and you're not having it. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> and that, serious illustration, that's what it's about. It's repetition and reward, and that is the reward for the dog, getting that toy. Oh, look at oh. this. <laughs> Betty the Toy Poodle. Again, I think the arena has just melted. <laughs> Betty's having none of it, though. Far more interesting sniffing at socks. We're go J just leave them alone. He's the agility judge for later. A suckle there. Pop your leg on the red. Well, that, that has been known to happen before. Betty came into a wood green as a 10 week old puppy clears the first. All the weaves. I mean, for those little legs, this is a long course to get around. <laughs> oh, here we go. Now, what do we think of the tunnel? Looks a bit dark to me. Oh, in the tunnel. In the tunnel. Out and out the tunnel. Big leap. Those jumps must look absolutely enormous to Betty. <laughs> nope, not meant to go in there. Where, where are you, Betty? There's Betty. In, Is she going to go? No, no, too no, high. Let's just not worry about that. Just do heights, that dog. I mean, that be, that's like the Eiffel Tower to Betty, that A-frame. <laughs> tunnel, in the tunnel, back out the tunnel, yes. Over the jump, huge leap. No, missed that one. <laughs> Getting tired now. I think I've had enough. Time for a treat. Yes, and a cuddle. <laughs> Our real crowd favourite. Betty first appeared at Crufts two years ago in the rescue agility. So second time of pleasing the crowd here. But just look at this. It is flapping. Such enthusiasm <laughs> when she goes for it. <laughs> do I have to do that again? <laughs> Oh, well done, Betty. The super mix of Cocker Spaniel, Poodle and Westie. Right, Neve is a five-year-old Cocker Poo and putting on a real turn of pace here, Graham. Yep, I think we need to get the clock on this one again up in the gantry there. Look at this. Eating up that carpet over the jump. Real sharp turn to get back through the tunnel. A-frame, up, over safely. Makes good contact as well through the tunnel. Flying over these final jumps. Just a couple more to go. Brilliant performance from Neve the Cockapoo from Battersea. 28 seconds. Well, and I've just realised that that's A.B. Lawson, who is a regular agility competitor. But nevertheless, that was absolutely fantastic. And there she goes, a toy. Well done. On comes Teddy then, uh, the Spaniel, alongside Carrie, representing Woodgreen Animal Shelter again. 
And Teddy is six years old, was found as a stray with another, another dog and taken to Wood Green. And uh, it says on my notes, Graham, that uh, Teddy loves to follow his nose, which you're seeing a good example of. Oh, hello, cup of coffee, maybe? Oh, yes, that, oh, well, that carpet just feels too good. Here we go. Over the second then. Where are we going to go now? Who can we sniff? Who can we explore? We'll, we'll take the jump. Yeah, maybe start again. No. Don't fancy those weaves. They don't always look that appealing, do they? <laughs> They're far too difficult. They're actually, probably seriously, one of the most difficult things to teach is the weaving poles. But uh, we don't need to do them, in, not in this competition, we don't. Well, I think around the tunnel, you know, it's an inventive way of navigating it. Yes, come out the other side. Oh, the crowd are really warming to this performance. We're going to do the tunnel. Let's just do the A-frame. Oh, we'll go under the A-frame. Under, yeah, under's, under's easier. Trust me. <laughs> oh, there we go. Big cheer for making it over the A-frame. Through the tunnel, we're getting towards the final few fences of this course now. <laughs> final few jumps. Just wants a good reward. Look at that tail whacking. Absolutely loving it out there, Teddy. Last one, doesn't matter what, the, yeah, what yeah, direction yeah. you go over. <laughs> oh, that's a rapturous <laughs> round of applause for Teddy, and why not? Less. And that's the, they've, I've, I've got a working cocker spaniel myself, and they just look at you and you just melt. Uh, it's just that the eyes definitely have it. Here's another popular one, the Jack Russell Fergus. Something tells me, Graham, he's not going to have too many difficulties going over these jumps. No, I, I think my money would be on the dog as well, really, so... Here we go. Joe is with Fergus, and Fergus is representing Wood Green again. Oh, look at this. He's a showman, isn't he, Fergus? Enjoying the crowd, looking at him, and yeah, dealt with those weaves pretty well. We go through the tunnel. The other side. Yeah, very interested in the treat at the end of this. I, I suspect that we, uh, the handler might actually have some food in his hand, but. Uh, it's allowed in this demo, so we're not worrying about it, and that's what it's all about. Thing is, is, is that are we going to see the handler? Are we going to see Joe go up the A-frame? No, not necessary. <laughs> that would have been something to see. Come on then, Fergus. Nearly finished the course. That treat is not too far away. One to go. Oh, now we get the toy comes out. The reward. You've done what I wanted you to do. There's your reward. You can have it, and he's going to kill that. What is it? Is it a chicken? No, it's not. What is it? I think it's a squeaky chicken. Nothing better than a bit of squeaky chicken. <laughs> well, now I've got it. I'll just stay out here. Thank you. Everyone can watch me play with my chicken. Well, he probably knows that if he, if he goes back, then he's going to lose the chicken. I think that's probably the... <laughs> Happily following Joe up in the end. Something tells me that might not be the last we see of Fergus in this arena. <laughs> Here's Ellie, the collie, alongside Marion O'Neill, representing Val Graves. And Ellie is nine years old, a trained agility dog, but doesn't compete anymore. So she's got some past experience, but perhaps not the same turn of speed that Ellie might have had in yesteryear, but still familiar with these. Look at that. Take your time. Correctness over speed. And, and it really is a, a, a sport for all dogs, really. Uh, you don't have to be at the top end where, you know, with some of the competitions we're seeing here. But if you've got a dog and you fancy having a go at agility, it doesn't have to be a rescue dog. And it's not a big dog. Just do over minute little jumps. Just interact. Get out there. Get your bum off your seat. Go and have fun with your dog. That's what it's all about. What's a good way of even just starting? Can you do just set up a jump in the back garden? The, the perfect way to start is to actually go and find a, a, a registered dog training club on the Kennel Club website. You'll make sure that they're properly insured, you'll get properly qualified trainers, and that'll be the best start for you. In comes Sue into the arena, alongside Lollipop, who is the cor Corgi Collie Cross. And we've seen Sue at Crufts here before. And Graham, she's a regular on the agility circuit, Sue. Yes, she is. Sue's uh, the uh, rescue organisations there, although I think we're just going to have an inspect of the, the red carpet for a minute. Are we going to do some work here, Mum, or are we not going to do some work? Oh, what do you think? So, 
And obviously Sue has to be very careful because you know she's in a chair, motorised chair. So uh, it's actually a testament to her really, really good training that she, um, that the dog knows that it's not to come near the chair because otherwise we could have an accident. And that, we don't want that at all. Waiting for her instructions, lollipop. This goes to show you know, how agility is open to everybody. And Sue's got to have a real particular skill set. Yeah, there's a bit of interesting stuff on that carpet, I think. It's taking Lollipop's attention. Oh, oh dear, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> now, we did just have a quick discussion about this uh, earlier on, didn't we? Uh, so, welcome to the world of, of dogs, Ali. All right, so... Um, oh, look. A dog... <laughs> what we always say is, a dog will do what a dog wants to do, and if you've got to go, you've got to go. And it's the excitement, probably. Well, they do say at Crufts, every dog has its day. And Lollipop certainly making her mark. <laughs> now we're going to go a little bit quicker, because we're a little bit lighter as well, so... It's a very good point you make. <laughs> Look at this, careful work, that is beautiful through those weaving poles. Now the tunnel is next. <laughs> a bit of an Come argument on. going on here. <laughs> Come on, through the tunnel. No, I don't want to, Mum, I don't want to. Here we go, a jump. Yeah, she knows it's there, Lollipop. Turn around. That's it. Made it. Always waiting for the next direction. Yeah, a little treat to be had as well. That's it, through the tunnel. A-frame is next. Yeah, we'll follow that direction, that's the way. Make that touch pad at the bottom, yep, the contact point. Now she's getting into a bit of a rhythm. Another jump to go. That's it, it doesn't, doesn't matter which direction now, that's fine. And you can hear the verbal directions from Sue as well. So the hand motions and verbal cues. Oh, we're not looking for somewhere else to go, are we? Well, stand by, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I think if memory serves me correctly, Lollipop did similar at Crafts in 2020. <laughs> Becoming a habit. Yeah, well, yeah, probably not the first time, but uh, look at her shaking her head at it and said, what have you just done? You've made me look at, you know, proper ninny in the ring, but... Uh, that's not what it's about. As I say, she's been here, done it, so just, and it's a really nice demonstration. And now here's everybody that we've just seen over the largest jumps to the lowest jumps, and all these rescue dogs from Happily Ever After, from the National Animal Welfare Trust, from Wood Green Animal Shelter, Battersea Cats and Dogs Home, and Valgrave Border Collie and Animal Rescue. So all these organisations doing fabulous work, some on a bigger scale than others. And of course, so many of them rely on generous donations to keep them going and give dogs just like this good homes and wonderful warm futures. And I think probably the dog, don't always think about getting a puppy to, to start with. Think about seriously about going along to your local rescue centre uh, and having a look at the dogs and discussing the feasibility and the practicality of helping one of these dogs. And, and if you can make a little contribution on the way, I'm sure a lot of these organisations would be very, very, very grateful. Well, Lollipop will be the last to leave the arena and having the time of life out there. Well done to everybody who has taken part. We were able to chat to some of the handlers and see some of the dogs backstage and are saying, yep, yeah, the most important thing is that they are all here and a lot of them haven't had a chance to do much agility or much training at all in the lead up, but you just see how much the, uh, keeping that dog occupied and having a, a healthy mind and keeping it very active uh, is all part of having a, yeah, a, a healthy dog and a, a fit dog can be part of the family. Right, well, thank you very much indeed, Ali. Uh, really great uh, demonstration there from Rescue Dogs. Coming up next, more agility. That'll be more from Graham and Jim Rosenthal. We'll be with you.
it's obviously hard as a parent to see your child in pain. Ruby would actually go on Olivia's bed and tuck herself into where Olivia's pain were and that would probably be the only time when she would actually settle and feel a bit more relaxed. I think without Ruby we would have you know, struggled even more to, to see Olivia suffer like she did. Olivia's got cerebral palsy, she's non-verbal, but even though she's non-verbal, she has a wicked sense of humour. She's laughing at me now. <laughs> as soon as we got Ruby, she immediately went straight underneath Olivia's wheelchair. In fact, when she were a puppy, she used to actually be on Olivia's knee uh, in the wheelchair. So yeah, the bond was from the beginning, from when she was a puppy. I think without Ruby, I think there'd be a big void in Olivia's life. She does play a massive part in Olivia's life. She gives them more confidence. The during COVID, she's been a fantastic companion for her. She helps her with a physio. She's not a trained therapy dog, but she does do quite a lot of therapies with Olivia through play and a physiotherapy, like with Olivia's athletic movements. Um, she seems to be able to make her quite still. She just uh, assists her where she, where she can and I think she gives her a lot of emotional, emotional support as well. Stretch your arms up, stretch both arms in the air. Olivia likes her cuddles because she, go, she, she gets to give Ruby a proper cuddle in this, this way. Mm. Don't you? Olivia just loves it. She just loves her, um, the affection. I think with Ruby, she's just got a bond uh, uh, that just can't be broken, really. Uh, because of Ruby, we're able to get outside in the fresh air and throw a few balls or go for a walk. difficult for her to interact in some ways um, but just finding little ways that you can uh, get her involved uh, and playing with uh, with Ruby uh, is, a, is a great way of doing that um, so yeah so it's, it's been really good for Olivia Olivia's sort of um, health and well-being really just having Ruby around and being able to get out of the house and she enjoyed that yeah. Yeah. we're not always able to do things that other families can do but Ruby brings a lot to the family and she's just made family life and Olivia's life complete really so in our eyes she's, she, she's a hero. Everyone loves Simba. He's either bouncing off the walls or he's asleep. He is a very, very friendly dog. He loves people. There's not many dogs like him in the country. We're a very small team that supports all of the London Fire Brigade. Our job is to investigate fires to determine their cause and origin. And we have our dogs to support us. Simba's an English Springer Spaniel. We got him when he was uh, a year old. I picked him up in Birmingham and the very next day we went to work. He was very much part of the fire brigade from that point on. They have a number of qualities that are absolutely vital to what we do. The dogs themselves are known as a hydrocarbon detector dog. They are looking for the presence of ignitable liquids and solids. The dogs, with their keen sense of smell, can identify that rapidly. So we have a wooden stirring stick, so we'll put a little bit of paraffin on the stick and then I'll go and hide it. And Simba's job is to find it. Even if I place it down, he's seen where it's been put, he will still use his nose to look for it. So he was trust his nose first. The best part of the search is not finding it, it's the searching for it. If you look at his tail, when he's searching, that's when it's moving the fastest. So the rule of a dog's tail never lies, always applies. 
and as soon as he finds it, he gives you the ball back and he wants to go find the next one. He always amazes me still sometimes when I think, oh, it's going to take us a few minutes to do this. And within seconds, Simba's found it. He's a very, very unique dog. What Simba's in now is mainly what he'd wear in a fire. So these are boots to protect his paws from sharps. They're not fireproof because he doesn't go into a hot fire scene. But it's important that his paws are safe from kind of metal or broken glass. We go absolutely everywhere together. So we genuinely are a team. We're on duty half the time and then are available in case there's an incident. Whenever we're working, I don't really need to tell Simba what to do because he's already second guessed. He also uh, works as a bit of an unofficial therapy dog as well. Some of the work we do may not be particularly pleasant and the one great thing that he does, he actually supports our other fire investigators. He's always there, he's, he's genuinely one of the team. He's emotionally intelligent as well, so um, I always like telling the story of Simba's first shout, and we were called to investigate an arson. He did indicate a number of areas where an accelerant had been used. The sad thing was the owner of the house, she was pregnant. She was really, really upset. Went from being really excited to really calm, he went straight over to her, laid his head on her lap, and he allowed her to stroke him for, I think it was nearly 20 minutes. At the most serious of incidents, he does really calm people down. Simba is the perfect dog for the role. You've heard the term, if you find a, a job you love, you'll never work another day in your life. He's got a job that he loves. Every dog's a hero, but the only difference is that Simba's been given the opportunity to do a really important job, and that's what makes him a hero. We're not here. I help people in my job, I help people doing this. We're not heroes. My name is Peter Lewin. I'm a paramedic for East Midlands Ambulance Service. I also run Pete Lewin Newfoundlands. We take people swimming in open water with the dogs for emotional support. This is Bob. Bob is our non-swimmer. Uh, Bob is our mascot dog. Storm, he's very needy. Sonar, he'll swim his heart out for you. And Walker, he's been given to us by the American Foundation for prevention of suicide. Love a bit of a swim across, like normal. We get the guys to swim out with us and I'll call one of the dogs out. And say sonar and all you can hear is sonar blowing out of his nose as he's swimming by. It's just peace and quiet and takes you away from the stress of everything that we go through. We've been doing a lot of work this last summer with the East Midlands Ambulance Service. As you can imagine, it's been quite a tough time for all of us. It's okay not to be okay. And who helps those that are helping the others? not just paramedics and ambulance staff, but the nurses, everybody else, who's there to help them. I did a staff wellbeing day here. When I did the quiet swim, I got extremely emotional. When I finished it, I cried. And then Sonar just sat with me for the whole day then. Just give me a little nudge every now and again. When you're in the water, you just get that element of, <sighs> it makes you just feel great. You see, we were never ever going to get used for real rescue in this country, unfortunately. And I sort of developed different manoeuvres for getting people out of the water. But these moves are not just for real rescue. These are great for emotional support. Because as I've got that person in that hold, it's given that confidence that somebody's there for them. We are physically rescuing them, but it's more so mentally rescuing them. There's three people around that would tell you that they're here today because of swimming with these which is an amazing, an amazing thing to do. I go into schools and I do water safety workshops. The girl who helped me with that from the start, she absolutely loved it. We're having a discussion around at her house about what we're going to do. She says to me, do you remember I was late coming to give you a hand with your training session? I says, yeah, I do. And she says, well, I was going to take an overdose that day. 
but I decided I'd go and help you out because of the dogs and that. And she said it was his eyes, the way they look at you. He wasn't there to judge, he wasn't there to criticise, condemn or anything. All he wanted to do was come out and take me back to shore. She said that was it. And she's still here today because of that swim. And I just thought, yeah, that's pretty powerful. It makes me feel proud, passionate about what we're doing, proud of the team, proud of these boys. To have that ability to help people, it's just amazing. My pets are helping these people, it's amazing. Jim Rosenthal and Graham Partridge welcoming you back to the main arena at Crufts 2022. We are all set for the continuation of the Crufts singles. All four heights, a three-part competition, jumping, agility, and a final. We've seen the jumping. Now it is the agility. They will be combined for a final later on in the afternoon. But they will be running the agility in reverse order from where they finished this morning as well. 
Graham Partridge alongside me. And we'll get his views on the course very very shortly. It's 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 a testing one, Graham, isn't it? I think fair to say. Yep, it's a little bit different style, but we've got a different judge. We've got Chris Suckle there coming out into the middle of the arena. Very experienced judge, culmination of his judging career. Um, uh, it's a little bit tight in places, but it's perfectly legal and it's uh, it's a test. So we'll just see how we get on. I think it's all going to be good, Jim. First of the large dogs to go, Amanda Ellerton and Bowden, five-year-old working sheepdog. Bowden's first time competing at Cross. Big dog, heart of gold, but travels quickly over the ground. An absolute joy to live with. First of eight large dogs. Over the I am stand early on, up and down over the A-frame. Good speed at the top of the course there. The seesaw is good as well. There's three jumps in very quick order there over the dog walk good speed too yep made contact with the wide at the end of it through the weaves excellent tail wagging through the weaves a very good start this for amanda and for Bowden. through the tire tight right hander at the end and that is quick and that is clean and that is 33.9 a fine start for amanda and for Bowden. and that's going to certainly uh, put the pressure on everyone else coming after a really great time Nara Cuddy and Lemon in great form from nearby Leamington Spa. Five-year-old Border Collie, amazing dog, is Lemon. Last time at Crufts, she won the British Open and has recently won the London International, the large agility stakes. Fairly straightforward start there, jump, jump into the tunnel. They turn back and up over that A-frame. They're now into the tunnel. They need to steady the dog down. This is a test of control and confidence as they step out now over those two jumps. They're fairly close together, but so that's, again, just testing the dog's perception of where they are. Turn into the weaving pole. So she just hangs back there slightly, waiting for the dog to catch up. She's right there with the dog, fast over the arena. She's got to avoid that tunnel entrance now. Over the spread and over the finish. Oh, yeah, there we go. Number one for Nara and for Lemon. We told you that they were in great form and a terrific high-quality start to this competition. Looking at Costa, 10-year-old working sheepdog, and Dalton Meredith, Costa's second time at Crufts, and Costa retiring from agility after this weekend, determined to enjoy every single second. Dalton Meredith and Costa. Little hesitation there going into the first turn. Took that irons jump neatly. Good contact at the bottom of the A-frame as well. Good over the seesaw. Missing, though, the uh, dog walk. And that'll be five faults. And uh, now over the dog walk. My mistake, missing the spread there. And eliminated. Just unraveled uh, in that round there, Graham. Missing the spread. Elimination. Yes, ran past it, the uh, culmination of folks there resulting in elimination, but he won't care. Dog's going out on a high. I think this is his last competition here at Crufts, so uh, he'll just have been grateful to be running here at Crufts. Looking at Rio, seven-year-old working sheepdog, and Stephanie Best won the British Open with fate on day one. Through the tunnel under the A-frame, just clip the uh, I am's uh, hurdle there, picking up five faults in the process. Okay and clean over the spread, just clipped it, in fact, but it stayed all intact over the dog walk. Good speed there, right in front of our commentary position. This weaves nice style through there, beautifully captured by our cameras as well. Great sound going through the tunnel and the tyre. Now the grand finale. Time is good. 34.4 and just the five faults, Graham. Third place. Very nice there. Just cutting it too tight, taking the pole off with the shoulder. But other than that, a really nice round there by Stephanie. Agent, eight-year-old Border Collie, and Sean Illingworth, homebred boy, this one. Heart of a lion and running him on the green carpet, Sean says, is always an exciting experience. Ooh, just a little flicker of hesitation there. No damage though. Very speedily over the A-frame. Great pace. Seesaw, seesaw. Seesaw, good. 
and the spread as well. Those tight jumps there. Has to turn very tightly as well. Good contact at the end of the dog walk. What about the weaves? Yep, no problem. And the time is good too. Through the tunnel. The tyre. Quick right-hander. And the finale. 33.5. Second place. Great round. Sean showing her uh, pedigree, really, her international and domestic pedigree. Very, very nice round there, brilliantly handled. Snooze the Border Collie and Martin Reed. Third in the jumping this morning. Over that U move jump for starters. Then the A frame. Far end of the course as we look at it, coming to Boris's now, a great sight going over that seesaw, barking his way round. Have to enter those weeds on the right, that's the way to do it, Snooze. Martin Reed and Snooze, in perfect synchronicity there. Good time as well. Yep, 33.7. Uh, for, for Martin, top three time. Very nice, brilliantly handled there, very quiet partnership this, you don't need to be flashy, you just need to get the job done, which he did, brilliant. Second dog for Dalton Meredith. Clippy, three-year-old Border Collie, young dog, this one. Dalton having a very, very productive Crufts 2022. <laughs> Quick. Really have to admire the pace and the accuracy and the control and obedience, of course. Went a little bit wide, flying off the top wall. Recovered well, though, it did Clippy, just three years of age. Young dog, doing everything that's being asked of her at the moment. Through the tyre. Great time, this is really good. 33.4, second place. Brilliant, brilliant. And I think this is a young dog, and he would have been just been happy with gaining the experience of being here at Crufts, but he's exceeded his expectations, I think. Looking forward to a really great final if he makes it. Last dog in the large jumping, Shannon, Spring, in, Sa, Sa, Shannon Springford. Sorry, finished first in the jumping this morning. Last to go in the agility this afternoon. Competed on Thursday with Gift, Shannon. Just looking for something in the 33s. And clean to come through later in the afternoon. A bit of a hesitation at the end there. Of the season. That really is a tight turn from the end of that dog walk to that wall. It's picked up five faults along the way. 32.8, quickest of the lot, shame about the faults. Yes, just flattened out there over the wall, I say those blick bricks, you've only got to just breathe on them when they come off, and again, that's for safety, but look at the style in that, brilliant. So the one, two, three, Nara Cuddy and Lemon in first place, uh, Dalton Meredith and Clippy, and Sean Illingworth and uh, Agent rounding up the top three. High, high quality throughout, though. And we're just checking the overall ranking, which, of course, will be used to decide the final later in the afternoon. So looking at those uh, rankings, you see that uh, Nara Cuddy finished in fifth place. Uh, so she didn't make the top four. So it's likely because um, if she won uh, earlier on, she'll be in those uh, in that final this evening. We'll just have to wait and see. Costa and Matthew Goodliffe are off. First of nine intermediate dogs. Costa down over the seesaw. So moving on to the intermediates now. 
Matthew Goodliffe, senior coach for the GB squad. And a nifty handler in his own right too. Handsome dog, Costa. 35.5 and clear, setting the stand. Very nice. Matthew will be very, very pleased with that. This is dog's first time at Crufts, and uh, to get a clear round in a very respectable time, he'll be very pleased with that. Stephanie Best and Fate, this partnership won the British Open on day one. Five-year-old Border Collie, first dog to become an agility champion for Stephanie. Through the tunnel, over the irons, over the A-frame. This is the quickest dog in this section that we have seen a really, really rapid. Fate again. Keeping that pace going, what? losing nothing in the weaves as well. Low to the ground and carrying a lot of speed. All clean, all clear. 33.2 and faultless for Stephanie. That's number one at the moment. And this is what we're seeing. We're seeing the best of the best of British utility here. Great demonstration. Nicola Wildman and Zest, six-year-old border collie. Full-on can be a challenge at times uh, for Nicola. Can Zest. <laughs> elegant jumping style over those first two. Tight right hander over the I am over the U move at the far end of the course through the tunnel. Good contact at the end of the seesaw. Excellent over that tight part of the course as well. Flying over the dog walk. We are seeing the best of the best, but just missing the end, I think, of the dog walk there, missing the contact point and picking up faults. And things are unraveling a little bit after that. Problems going into the weaves as well. Terrific start for Nicola. And now has to keep things together keep the respectability there but that is a six-year-old zest hugely entertaining bro. Jane finishing on 15 folks there really quick over the dog walk and quite clearly missing the white contact area which they must do if they don't want to be faulted Tunde Bell and Betty border collie six-year-old is bearing from Watford undergoes a dramatic change of personality when she competes, cuddly at home, but uh, goes crazy and gets very competitive on an agility course. Bit of hesitation going into the first time. A frame, good, good contact. Oh dear, that's Mr. Mr. Jump there, and that uh, will mean an elimination. And, um, as we so often say, uh, uh, Graham, once something like that happens, and uh, you can forgive, I can anyway, a little bit of lack of concentration and communication perhaps between Handler and Adam. Yes, you are. You're at the biggest stage in the world just about. Something's gone wrong and you just think, why? Um, but they've done fantastically well to get here, so it, it is no mean feat to be competing here at Club. There are thousands of other dogs wanting to be here. And I'll, you see there the elimination. She ran past the jump she was supposed to be doing into the next obstacle, eliminated. Looking at uh, image, very successful dog over the years, Border Collie. Ten this month could be her last. Crufts as well. And the Sean Illingworth, hugely experienced. <laughs> down the seesaw she's okay just uh, the five faults again coming off the dog walk in the top three with that just just uh, Check coming off the just came off the side of the dog walk and probably didn't make contact at well. the end. That's the ruling. This is Zing Border Collie, six years of age. Alan Wildman, the handler in good form. These international competitor, Alan Wildman. 
Very promising combination, this. And they're going to have to be at their very best to go through later on in the afternoon. On you go, Graham. Hugely competitive, Alan. Uh, always there or thereabouts. And he's, I know that he's extremely happy the way this dog's been coming on this year. Nice tight turn over the walls into those weaving poles. Look at the speed of that dog in there. Absolutely fantastic. Now, need a tight turn into this tunnel. Now he's going to be calling the dog away across the arena, over the tyre. Now, can he make the spread? Yes, he can. And finish what a great round that was. 33, 5, 4, 8, and clear. And that is good enough to take uh, Alan Wildman and Zing into second place as things stand. Don't forget, we're going to see the best dogs later on in the afternoon in the grand final. You're looking at uh, Natasha Wise and Pebbles third in the morning's jumping. Pebbles is away. And not hanging around either. Good contact on the A-frame. Great clearance of the U-move jump at the far end of the course. This is looking good for Natasha and for Pebbles. Yep, bit of hesitation, but good contact at the bottom of the dog walk. Weaves. Fine. Through the tunnel, through the time. Right up with the clock as well, right up with it. 32.9, that is number one for Natasha Wise and Pebbles. We will see them later in the afternoon, and don't be surprised if they go all the way. Beautiful images of Pebbles there. Such a popular dog. Deserving every bit of that love and congratulations. This is Stephen Richardson and Gamble, four-year-old Border Collie, penultimate dog, second in the jumping this morning. Always puts in a competitive round here, Stephen. It's been uh, at the top for a number of years now. Up and over that seesaw, touch, must touch the ground before the dog gets on it. The dog has to shorten up to get those jumps, which it does very nicely indeed. Just going to take it easy now on the dog walk. Oh, a bit too easy, we think, but uh, he's after a clear round here to try and get him into tonight's final, if he can do that. You can't go too slowly, though, because there's a lot of good dogs in this competition over the tyre. Now, just one more to go. Brilliant, very nice, 35, 2 and into the top four for Stephen Richardson. Clear round applauded by Chris Huckle, our, our judge. Yeah, that was a took it daintily that dog walk but kept the round clean and clear that was what matters last competitor Stephen Seal first in the jumping and Fleck seven-year-old border collie really proud that Fleck has qualified for Krupps Leicester combination these two last dog to go in this section flicker of heading for the A-frame but went safely through the tunnel there to Fleck. This is tremendous pace. This competition, when we reach the final stage, will be awesome later this afternoon. Great work by Stephen and by Fleck. No hesitation at all on the dog walk. Flying through the weaves. Good quick turns. Not missing anything at all. Through the tunnel. Goodness me. Oh my goodness me. Headed for the tunnel, took a lefty, should have gone right. What a shame, Graham. Took a lefty. Well, I think you actually, that probably just describes it really, really well. He says, I fancy the tyres. Steve said, I'm going the other way. But revolted and elimination. Hard luck. Combination then, that we like to see Natasha Wise. Stephanie Best, Fate, Alan Wildman and uh, Zing all looking great. Don't forget they're going to be combined for the grand final later on this afternoon. But uh, the quality of this competition, breathtaking. And this is how the overalls are shaping up at the moment all going through to uh, the final later on in just about a couple of hours two and a half hours in, in fact later on uh, in the afternoon of the second day of crofts 2022 
small dogs first to go samantha lane six-year-old ninja zippy cocker spaniel i love this dog love its attitude love its commitment to work um doesn't give a you know anything about anything and unfortunately elimination because it back jumped one of the jumps but uh what matter to this dog he's just having a, a ball um, and as i say sam doesn't really care either she's given it her best shot she's trained the dog as best she can dogs are dogs things happen on the day and this is absolutely fantastic demonstration well done to her yeah well done uh, for city and samantha lane an early elimination though for that combination the working cocker four-year-old fanny and sander tit from camberley just gone the wrong way going into the tunnel and problems problems with the tunnel, takes it in the end, picks up five faults, loses a load of time. The working cog are turning and looking good going over at the dog walk. They'll have to play this one out, but I don't think we're going to be seeing them later in the afternoon, Graham, unless I'm very much mistaken. I don't think so, but uh, it's really nice to see another working Cocker Spaniel becoming very popular in the UK now, uh, and you can see why they just love to work, they need to be doing something, they are a working breed, and say that's where they picked up the elimination, they should have gone in there, but he did come and correct it, and all was good. Lauren Langman and Blink, another working Cocker, great entertainer, whenever Blink is on the Crufts carpet, gives absolutely everything not always accurate but always quick lightning quick and loves her work i'd love to see blink make it through to the later stages of this competition and all looking good so far a really impressive opening 20 seconds from blink and from lauren is pairing from oakhampton flying through the weeds tight turn there no problem for blink straight away through the tire this is going to be a very good time to keep it respectable and keep it clean. 35.2 for Blink and for Lauren. And as things stand, that is the best. Look at the dog having a fantastic time. Brilliant. Sizzle, the Shetland Sheepdog, four years of age. Katrina Hands, impressive pairing this. Won the British Open on day one and a runner-up in the championship as well. They are enjoying Crufts 2022 hugely and looking to make a major impact in this competition as well. We have 35 seconds there, the best time at the moment. But, oh, just went the wrong way there. There'll be precious hundreds of a second drop there by Sizzle. Turned so tightly, not a problem at all. Again, veered a little bit left, has come right, and has done okay. 36.2 for Sizzle and for Katrina, and that's second place for them. Huge support in the arena here for Katrina, and you can see why this little dog uh, really is a pocket rocket. Great, great round. Winnie, eight year old cross, Cockapoo, and Charlotte Wilkinson from Cardiff. First time at Crofts, first agility dog for Charlotte. And I think this one will go round Winnie in her own time and at her own pace. And you can't ask for anything more because she will give absolutely everything. No, I think it, it's one of these things, Jim, that, uh, as, it, as I keep saying to you, day in, day out, and that competition-wise, we don't compete in this environment or necessarily on this carpet. And it does take... There's no substitute for experience. Yep. Uh, and, I, and I think this dog will get, you know, it's probably a lot lot quicker than this day-to-day. Uh, -day. And I'm sure if she comes here again, she's going to, you know, be again, be a lot quicker than she is at the moment. Well, it's a lovely dog, and it's a faultless round. And you can only do your best, and if your best means incurring no faults at all on 45 seconds that will do fine a really good effort to the top three at the moment things could change lovely style lovely dog well done winnie the cross cockapoo lee harfield 
And Bell Bell, four-year-old working cocker, third in the jumping this morning. Bit of confusion there, and a lot of time lost for Lee and for Bell Bell. But no faults incurred, but that'll push them down the timings. Nicely over that uh, complex three jump section right in front of us. Good. No, missed the end of the dog walk. Missed it clearly. And uh, more faults being picked up at the end of the weaves as well. Going to have to go back and complete them. And again, as always, we'll finish the round and a uh, bit more confusion, a bit more, bit more hesita hesitation. Lee Harfield and Bell Bell. Let's give them a big round for the finish. 15 volts and uh, a good effort. This is the penultimate dog, second in the jumping this morning, Louise Eden and Fuse, 10 year old Shetland Sheepdog. Could well be a last year, or his last year, I should say, at Crufts, determined to enjoy the occasion. What a beautiful sight. That is from Jersey, this partnership, Louise and Fuse. Skims over the surface there, Fuse. Oh! <laughs> just, a little, just a little hop. Yeah, a bunny work, hop, they call that, a bunny hop. But <laughs> <laughs> Picking up five faults. And another five there for a refusal, so that was two refusals there on the wall. Just got to keep a nerve now, keep it collected together. Let's finish off in the manner that she'd wish it to. Uh, this doesn't preclude her from being in tonight's final. We'll just have to see how the scores stack up. So, 10 volts showing here on the monitor 47.199. Last to go in the jumping. Alan Bray competed uh, yesterday. First in the morning jumping. Last to go in the agility. Alan Bray, always a respected handler and always brings his dogs here in marvellous condition. And a great competitor, Alan Bray Zikita. Never looks as though he's actually running very fast, Alan, um, but he puts himself in the best positions at all time. What he does is he very cleverly gets the dog to do all the work for him, and then while the dog's doing the work, he actually moves into the correct position like there. So now he will have to stretch his legs a little bit going across there, but again, he's just asking the dog to do it for him. Very nice taping it's up a for a great time for him. It is a great time, and it's good enough for, for second place for Alan Bray and Tikita. We will respect them again, and we will see them again later on, for sure. Lovely silver collar there. Bit of Crufts bling for Nikita. And the one, two, three, Lauren, Lingman, Lauren Langman and uh, Blink. And uh, Alan Bray and Nikita in second place, Katrina Hands and Sizzle, the Shetland Sheepdog in third running them all the way through, but don't forget these results are all going to be sort of crunched together so we get the best of the best for the grand final later this afternoon in a couple of hours' time. First dog of eight to go in the medium dogs. Stephen Swanky and Fern. And there's uh, five faults picked up very early on in the round. Over the A frame. <laughs> Lovely jumping style, this one, Graham. Clears the jumps with a, a lot to spare. Yes, but it gets the job done, but again, just a little bit of time lost uh, while it is in the air. If it jumped forward a bit more, that's obviously the preferred style. Through the tunnel and the tyre, little right-hander on the last couple, and finally the Kennel Club jump to complete it, 39.9 and five faults, getting our medium section underway. Next to go, Lauren Burns and uh, Zebedee, Papillon, Corley Cross, Shelty. First agility dog this uh, for Lauren. He's taken her to just about every big event in the UK. Exceptional little dog. 
That is Zebedee. Good contact at the bottom of the A frame, got over up and down that very, very quickly indeed. Zebedee, great pace and commitment in his work. Ooh, look at that. Over the dog walk. Wide turn as well. Zebedee in sharp form. Lauren doing a great job out there as well. Through that tyre. Right hand turn. Keep an eye on the clock because this is going to be special. 33 dead. No faults. Lauren Burns and Zebedee. Quality. Natasha Pudubeki and Midget, the eight-year-old working Cocker Spaniel. And she, we would expect Midget to scream her way around this course. Natasha Pudubeki from Devon, the handler. <laughs> there we go. There go the screams. Nothing like a bit of sound effects, Graham. And just a little bit of clarification here. The dog's answered the question, actually. It is the dog that screamed his way around. <laughs> but uh, you can't fault this dog's enthusiasm, can you? But uh, there we are, picking up five faults for refusal and another refusal resulting in a back jump and an elimination there for Natasha. But uh, both her, her and the dog will continue around here and have a marvellous time. But, uh, our, our judge, Chris Huckle, in the same part of the world in Devon, very, very reluctant there when he crossed his arms and said, sorry, you guys are eliminated. I think they call that a little bit of overexcitement, Jim. This is Liz Carpenter and Maggie, two-year-old Collie Cross miniature poodle, a dog with a great future. Started uh, competing last year from May to December, reached the top grade, grade seven. And in the Team GB selection process as well. This Carpenter and Maggie, just two years of age, this Collie Cross. Wearing the blue and yellow, supporting Ukraine, the agility community in this country does, is doing a fantastic amount to support the relief effort in aid of dogs and their handlers over there. But uh, this dog's actually doing its own job of uh, advertising Ukraine as well. And going very well through the weeds, this two-year-old Maggie, and the time looks very good to me as well. Can't hang around at the, at the far end of the course. Turns right over that kennel club. That's a good time. 33.4. Runner up right now. Deserved applause from Chris Huffle. Gareth, Cornell, and Maggie May, Paddadale working Terrier. We are enjoying Terrier and Hound Day today here at Crofts on day two. Seven years of age is Maggie May. First time for this pairing competing at Crofts. Such a it's really such a different style. It's really interesting to look at the dogs and compare their, their jumping style in particular. Very neat and very precise. And faultless thus far, Maggie May and Gareth. Probably quicker than you think as well, I think, although just picking up five faults. Um, but uh, won't be among the, the quickest times, but uh, a very, very fine effort. 39 seconds into the top three right now, but that could well change. Here is uh, Ashley Butler and Eliza, lovely lucky dog, eight-year-old bearded collie. Third in the jumping this morning and second overall in the championship on day one here at Crofts. Ashley Butler, remember the quickest time, 33.0, but remember everything gets crunched together. And as long as you're right up there, and as long as the round is clean, not compulsory of course, but that should keep you in the competition. The pitter patter at the end of the, the dog walk there. But yeah, Ashley whispering her instructions almost to the tyre. It's a good time. It's a clear round. Ashley Butler and Eliza nicely done. Top three. 
Dalton Meredith, penultimate dog, and Munchie. Six-year-old Border Collie. Second in this morning's jumping. And what can they do here in the agility? Over the IAMS jump there, up the far end of the course. Clears the U move obstacle with some alacrity. Picks up some faults, probably didn't uh, touch the, the white section at the end of the seesaw there. And more faults accrued for Dalton and for Munchie. Munchie is clean through the weaves though. It's an awkward little right hander up through the tyre. Again, the time is good. Ten faults though. 36.2 and the 10 faults in the top six might not be good enough. We'll wait and see when the number crunching happens at the end of this. OK, the last dog first in the jumping this morning, James Adams and Willow. Working Cocker Spaniel. Already a big winner here at Crufts, the last one to go in this medium section. Best time, 33, in the 33s, really unclear. Can they beat that? Well, looking so good at the moment, little Willow. Scampering across, almost eating up the obstacles there as Willow. That is so quick over the dog wall. This time is looking great at the moment. First 20 seconds, and the weaves completed successfully. Into that tunnel, out of it we go, up to the tyre. This is going to be a great time. It's going to be outstanding time. It really is a great time. It's the best time so far for James Adams and Willow. Great stuff. Outstanding time and an outstanding round. Brilliant. Glorious pictures of Willow and James. James Adams and Willow then, best in the medium section. Lauren Burns and Zebedee uh, second place. And Liz Carpenter and Maggie in third. But uh, we'll see them all again later in the afternoon. It is going to be a heck of a competition, a heck of a finale. Just rounding off the result for you. We've got John Howie from Lint Bells going to do the presentations and they're going to start off with the smalls and Lauren Langman there, the winner of this round of the Croft Singles. And Alan Bray is the runner up in this section. Well done, Alan. And after a very exciting medium section and we've got James Adams looking uh, very good for this evening's final uh, but I think he's going to be pushed hard there by Lauren Burns with Zebedee I oh, know somebody who's going to be very pleased and well used to being in the limelight the winner of the intermediate and it's Natasha Wise and closely followed up uh, into second place there by Stephanie Best. 
And then the inform Nara Cuddy. Watch her this evening if she's made the final. Uh, with Lemon, the border collie. And Dalton Meredith, who we've seen a lot of today. So big smiles from everybody. And we will uh, look forward to seeing most of these people here this evening. So they're just collecting the glasses so that they don't get dropped on the way here. They're doing their lap of honour.
but a collie. And uh, agility is actually dominated by border collies, to be fair. And so this competition really, really gives all the other breeds that are fantastic at agility the chance to shine. So uh, we need a judge. There the action is. continues on the second day of Crux 2022 okay, as you look at the our, our agility Chris judge, Huckle. Chris Huckle. It continues with the anything uh, but a collie ABC Crufts medium and large so intermediate the novice the final is, uh, seen the jumping this morning now the agility and they will be combined for a final we have seen the jumping this morning I'm really sorry we've seen the jumping this morning it's in two parts and now we will see the agility two separate awards and an overall winner for this one and first to go is uh, Hannah Fairweather, first of eight medium dogs, and Spyro, five-year-old Shetland sheepdog, first time at Crofts. Right, 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 right. Little legs, but always tries her best. Give us your thoughts on the course, could you, Graham? Yep, it's a very nice course here, uh, set appropriately for the grades. Uh, this is a, a basically in three parts three competitions you've got the medium dogs which are running uh, for grades one to seven and then we'll see the large and intermediates which are actually for the novice dogs which are less experienced so this course it's the same course for everybody it must be a mixture of both so very nice course indeed and 36.4 and clear for spyro and hannah fairweather from sheffield good start deborah teds and stitch working cocker spaniel from uh, Warwickshire, not far to come here to the NEC. A trained gun dog this and worked all season in between agility competitions. A good enthusiastic pace over the IAMS jump. Up and down over the dog walk. Great contact and great speed at the moment. This is but unfortunately wrong side means the arms get crossed, Mr. Chris Huckle, and it means an elimination. Obeying the command to come round and away from the tyre through that tunnel. Far end of the course, back up and down over the A-frame. Deborah and Stitch sadly picking up an elimination along the way. This is Mr Kelpie, as we call him, Nigel Staines and Zico, four-year-old Kelpie. Beautiful dogs. If you're joining us here for the first time, just watch the jumping style and elegance of Zico, the Kelpie. Lovely, so it hangs in the air. <laughs> skims through that tyre. Turns towards us over the irons. Over that dog walk. Always a little bit delicate over that one. Never really flies over the dog walk. But nice and quick and nice and clear so far as well. Yeah. So he has to make contact with the whites at the, at the start and end of the seesaw. Very decent effort this will turn back towards us now, up and down over the A-frame. And then the left-hander over the wall at the finish, 39.2. Very nice indeed, well done Nigel, much better round, dogs gaining in confidence. Erin Inverarity and Sam, eight-year-old Springer Spaniel from East Lothian. That's a flying star for Sam. Speedy perfection so far. Ooh. Recovered, Graham. Very well recovered. Very quick thinking, and that's what you need to be when you're out here on this course. You've got to, you've got to react in a split second, and she did that brilliantly. So let's just hope the rest of the course goes just as well, Jim. Indeed, coming up, completing the course now. A frame up and down, sharp left hander. It's a good time. 36.7. Up there into a second place at the moment for, for Sam and Erin. You're looking at Colette Atwell and Jacko, five-year-old miniature poodle, Derbyshire. First time as a Crofts, nervous and very, very excited. Doing agility for 12 years as Colette, and like everyone else, gets a massive amount of fun and enjoyment out of it. And that is a very, very speedy start from Jacko. Affectionately nicknamed Wacko Jacko. 
just made contact with the, the white at the bottom of the dog walk. What a shame. The complexities of the weaves confusing Wacko Jacko. But it's still a hugely entertaining round seeing Jacko, the miniature poodle, scampering over the green carpet here in the main arena at Crufts. It's got a very, very sizable crowd here as well, by the way. 39.85 volts in the top four as things stand. Lucy Dakin and Scout, five-year-old Sheltie from Andover. And we're away. Ooh. Well, I don't, you don't need me to tell you that the contact was made with the tyre, and for safety reasons, Graham, just explain it, that tyre disintegrated. Did they break away now? Uh, if before we used to have a solid tyre, which if you hit it, although it was padded, was very safe. Now we have ones that break away, and they're absolutely fantastic. Safety and comfort of the dogs, paramount, no matter what you're looking at throughout Crofts. It's a good round for Lily and for Scout, despite the brush with the tyre. 35.4 and the five volts. Fourth place. Looking here at Linda Westerby and Kaiser, four-year-old working cocker spaniel, second in the jumping this morning, the penultimate dog in the medium class. An absolute joy to run, Linda says, is Kaiser. Dear, wrong course, Graham. And again, sadly, an elimination. Such a shame there. It's, it's a really, really long run across the arena there in, towards that tunnel. And of course, unless you're up with your dog, it'll turn towards you, which it did. It took the right end or the right end of the tunnel, which was the wrong end of the tunnel. We all understand you, Graham. We all understand you. <laughs> But the round never stops with an elimination. Always complete the round. The dog always has to have the satisfaction. So does the handler. The dog has to enjoy himself and get a treat at the end of it. Kaiser and Linda Westerby, absolutely no different. This is Nicola Garrett and Giza, five-year-old Shetland Sheepdog, the last of the medium dogs to run first in the jumping this morning. Let us see what the Giza can do in the agility. Quickly into his work, Giza. Over the IAMs facing us, high in the commentary box here. Hesitation, hesitation, time lost on the dog wall. Entering the weaves on the right side, the right side. Hesitation at the end of the seesaw as well. So it's rapid. Oh, again, went very, very wide there. But again, kept it clean, kept it tidy. And have come through with zero faults and 37.7. And no, and that's into the top three, Brian. Commonly referred to as a cruise liner turn, I think, that one, Jim. <laughs> Seen milk turn quicker. <laughs> and here we are as things stand. Hannah Fairweather and Spyro. Erin in Verity and Sam in second place. And third, Nicola Garrett and the geezer. We move to the intermediate section now. First of eight intermediate dogs to go in this one. And this is uh, Nigel Staines and Gibbers. Whip it 12 years of age. Nigel saying uh, jibbers, yep, no, she's an old girl, doesn't train that often, and it uh, blows very hot and cold. If jibbers is in the mood, all will be well. <laughs> and the crowd really, really enjoying the first uh, three jumps completed by jibbers. And daintily over the dog walk. Precise. 
Go on, Graham. You've got something to say. Oh, no, I was going to say it's not as quick as uh, as she used to be, but that's the same as uh, <laughs> of all of us, Jim. But uh, oh she's still having a good time there. I think there were fault. I don't think anybody saw that fault when the they saw it, though. Um, Nobody wanted um, to see it. Having a really way. good time. And as I say, people say, when should I stop agility with my dog? Well, when the dog tells you it's the right time. And, uh, this isn't quite the right time for this dog yet. Well done, Nigel. And well done, Jim has just stepped up the side there of the seesaw for those five points. Next is Maddie Newton. And Luna, nine-year-old Springer, cross cocker. Really proud of uh, her achievements, especially at the age of nine. From Stafford, these two. And they're just calming Luna down before they get to work. And we're away. I think that uh, pre-match talk was now just calm down and listen to me, please. I think it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, listening and performing well so far over the first four or five obstacles, but not over the dog walk. Went round the wrong side of the dog walk and picking up five faults on the way. Grunting through the weaves. Good contact at the bottom of the seesaw. Cleanly through the I ams and oh. oh dear, hold on. I think that's known as losing interest. I think that's known as stopping for a bit of pressing business. <laughs> well, they say and when you've got to go, you've got to go. And that's I mean, an elimination. That, yeah, that's an elimination. And that's another one for the can, I think, for the uh, bloopers section. I think. Well, I don't know about bloopers, <laughs> got the job done. I think that's very sporting of the judge, because if I'd have been stood out there, and I have been, I think I would have said, well, well it's yours, yep. Every dog owner knows what happened there. And, so, uh, and Luna giving us a round to remember. Gets passed from to the judge, and then the judge passes it to the timekeeper, and we're just going to see what he's going to do with it now, I think, so... <laughs> Ace and Cassie Webster, five-year-old English Springer Spaniel, Cheeky dog. You have to keep an eye on your socks when Ace is around. And here's Cassie, ready to go. English Springer Spaniel. Lovely sight as well. What a beautiful dog that is. Oh, beautiful dog, but doesn't really like her going over the dog walk. Will second time round, and that'll mean five faults. Bit of hesitation at the end as well. Where next through the weaves is good. How's about the seesaw? That's fine as well. So is the IM's jump. Great images. Go and just click that pole. There's more faults for Cassie and for Ace as they complete their round. 40 seconds and 15 faults for Cassie and for Ace. Kelpie next, two year old. Kruger Rand and Bethany Todd from Wharton near Carnforth. Very young Morgan's Kelpie. This is only his ninth competition as well. A young dog. A little, a little bit of a false start, but uh, the clock not running so they can compose themselves and, and start again. That's fine. And we're away. Very stylish job, but uh, sadly... A elimination should have been the tyre, went elsewhere. Only a very young dog, though, Graham. It is, but she, she hats off to her. She, she took her time, she just refocused the dog, asked it to concentrate and listen to her. As I say, they won't have uh, probably been in an arena anywhere near as big as this or, or with, the, with the distractions that are going on. So it's now it's all about making this a really, really good... As you see, there she is, just uh, re reassuring the dog on the seesaw. Uh, just making this a really good experience for the dog so that when it comes back again, it's going to go, do you know what, I had a really good time in that yes. arena, Jim. Yeah, and also, do you know what, I think I know which way to go here as well. So, great experience for the two-year-old, just a couple of years old then, Kruger, Rand and Kelpie, and well done, Beth and Todd. Got a great future, that dog. Here's Erin, the working bearded collie, nine years of age, and Julie McKinnon. A 
real favourite here, both of them, June and Erin. Tremendous combination and a buzz of appreciation going round with the crowd at the main arena here at the NEC in Birmingham. Erin well, going the right way all, all the time. Well done, June, as well. Oh, come on. Yes, yeah, she's, she's clear so far. No, she's oh. Oh, dear. oh, dear. Oh, dear. I was just letting them get on with it there, Graham, and you said that, and then the elimination occurred. But listen, what a, what, what a, fi a fine effort, and again, they... They're a very popular couple. Well done, June. Well done, Erin. The nine-year-old working border collie. I think he's got, you know, we've got a packed audience here, just about 7,000 people. I think every one of them was willing her on then, including me. Absolutely right. Third in the jumping this morning, Julian Rook and Millie. Spanish water dog. Gun dog. Just take a check on that uh, lovely curly coat. So you notice here that Julian is starting the dog from the other side of the jump. He's allowed to do that, so the dog will go round the jump and it'll then negotiate the jump from the correct side. Nothing wrong with that, Jim. Own individual style and it's working for this partnership. Good start as well. Well done, Millie. Real loyal, active dog, this. Yep, it's going fine for Millie and for Julian. Have to try again with that one, five faults. Refusal going in, into the tunnel, and sadly, the wrong course, and uh, it unraveled so rapidly in this event, and that is another elimination for Julian Rook and for Millie. Such a shame. Around. I think Julian actually forgot where he was going and, and thought he was heading for that well, jump anyway, but uh, well done. I'm looking at Julian holding his head in his hands there, you're probably right. No clear rounds yet as we approach Laura Brenchley and Ernie, heavily coated, beardy collie. First time at Crufts. Will Laura and the beardy collie Ernie, four years of age, give us our first clear round? It's no, they will not. Just miss the miss the wide at the end of the, of the dog walk. And problems with the weave as well as with the faults continue to accumulate. Great sight though, the dog. More faults, unfortunately. <laughs> In full stride, it's a terrific sight. Ernie the bearded collie. Ten faults in 37 seconds. Still no clear rounds then. This is the last dog, Ellie Buffett, first in the jumping this morning with Raph, the three-year-old crossbeat, rescue dog this. Will we see the first clear round here from Ellie Buffett and Raph? All good so far. That is quick over the dog walk. Tight turn. That's the way to go into the weaves from the right-hand side. Signs are promising as we look for the clear round. Good over the seesaw, good over the IAMs as well. Very classy through the tunnel. She's done the same thing, Jim. Amazing. Amazing. It's got a magnet in it, that wall. Well, I think well, she was running towards the jump. Um, but that's what pressure does to you when you're yeah. competing in this environment. Such a change. So very unusually, then, no clear rounds. Uh, Nigel Staines and uh, Jibbers, the best, though. Cassie Webster and Ace in second place. And scrolling through to complete the final result for you. And I know Nigel will be absolutely thrilled with that. 12 years of age um, and likely to be its last uh, big competition, so he'll be made up.
Large dogs coming up next then. First of uh, eight large dogs and Sizer and Sky, four-year-old Labrador from Eastleigh in Hampshire. Sky, a working bred Labrador. First of the large dogs. Intermediate novice, ABC, anything but a collie final. work from Sky earlier on in the round. Very competent over the dog walk, planting both feet of the right section of the bottom he had to do and then getting eliminated, unfortunately. Yeah, had a pole down, then backed up the jump, which you're not allowed to do. I think it's worth taking just a second, Jim, just to emphasise that this is what well, the competitions we're seeing now are for anything but collie, commonly referred to as ABCs. Uh, you are not allowed to run a collie or a collie cross in any of these competitions. And it's just fantastic to see the other breeds being able to strut their stuff. Alison True and Gabby. A fine mariner. Elegant silver grey coat for this uh, five year old Gabby. And uh, comes with a reputation of being either very, very good or very, very poor. He's just uh, ambling down the side of the dog walk there. And have to be repointed towards it. And just for the purest amongst you, uh, the dog did get an elimination, and then you will have noticed it actually ran under the dog walk. Yeah. That's not wrong course, it's just described as part of the elimination. And treating the dog walk as a walk. What's the problem here? It says walk, I'm going to walk over it. <laughs> Gabby and uh, Alison True will complete their round. And um, as we said, they have varied days at Gabby and probably not one of her better ones. And a time for unusual. Tracy Hunt and Ragnar, Hungarian Vizsla. Smooth coated this one, another Vizsla, smooth coated. First time at Crofts. What will we get here? Well, we get an excellent start, that's for sure. Picking up speed on that far side of the course over the Iams jump. Smartly over the first bit of the dog walk, hesitation at the end, but uh, no faults accrued. Into the Wies and the right hand side, and successfully through as well. Good contact on the seesaw, good jump. Oh dear, oh dear, wrong course elimination. Yeah, real shame, a little bit of confusion there. It's all about communication, uh, making sure the dog knows where you want it to go. And the dog just said, well, uh, if you're not going to tell me what else to do, I'm going to carry straight on. Such a shame there for Tracy. It is, but uh, Tracy and Ragnar, the Hungarian uh, Vizsla, will complete the course as they are entitled to do. Joan Hart and Mack, nine-year-old working bearded collie from Falkirk, homebred boy. Loves running fast. And a proper pal to Joan as well. And we're off and running. Oh, just to clip the end of the spread and picked up five faults there. Hesitation. The end of the dog walk, too. And more penalty points accrued, more faults accrued going into the weeds. For Joan Hart and Mack. Unfortunately, another five there for missing the up on the dog walk. And as you say, once it starts to go wrong, it continues to go wrong, which is such a shame. But come on, Joan, you can pick this up. Oh, and another fault on the spread there. So she'll just take her time, that's really nice to see. Just settling the dog down, restoring the dog's confidence, giving it every opportunity to finish on a really, really good note, which hopefully she's going to do. Yes, she does. Brilliant. Well done.
Marsha Shavarneva and Altai, four-year-old Saluki, first Saluki to qualify for Crufts. The only Saluki to earn an agility warrant as well. Great concentration, great poise. What will Altai, the Saluki, deliver? Just a little pause as uh, the course gets repaired. Very chilled approach, looks like. This is chilled, and this is uh, pretty elegant, but uh, running round the side of the jump means an instant elimination. Too chilled, perhaps, Graham. Maybe, maybe, but uh, we can't all be, uh, you know, high frequency, high voltage, can we, really? So, you are what you are, Jim. <laughs> Don't we know it? <laughs> That's a little wonder through the wheeze, but so elegant. Maximum exposure, I think they call it. Like, just look at me, I'm just having a great time. Yeah. Breaking into a stroll almost. <laughs> Good work, Altai. Well done, the mashup. Tail wagging, so Altai's enjoying the experience, as both of them should. <laughs> Sally Clark and Arthur. Hungarian wirehead of Vizsla, member of the gun dog breed. Another little reminder it is uh, the gun dog breed. You can see them on Sunday afternoon. Climax of Crafts 2022, five years of age. First agility dog is for Sally. Let's see how Arthur does. Good and a good, uh, good time right up with the clock. Missing the right section at the end of the dog walk though and picking up at more faults around uh, that new move jump too. Thirty-seven seconds. The clock ticking, and the finale is fun. Forty-two seconds and ten volts. At the moment, that is the best. Sarah Bowyer, penultimate dog. Eric, five-year-old Labrador, super ginger ninja. This one, first time at Crufts, an absolute dream for this combination to be on the green carpet. And that's a very smart start indeed from Eric the Labrador. Who, to my mind, looks the quickest that we have seen. And if we can keep the faults off the page, this could be the one. You never know. Have a look through the weaves. Good style, good action, good pace. The seesaw is fine as well. 23 and no faults. Looking good. Crash through the tunnel. That to be a sharp left-hander. Took it as well. Still good. Still good. This up and over the last couple. Very, very good indeed. 38 and clear. <laughs> well done, Eric. Brilliant. Number one. And the last one to go is Debbie Hedger and Zachary. Smooth head version of the Hungarian Vizsla. Very athletic breed, this. And they know 38.2 and clear. Debbie Hedger knows it. That's what they have to be. This competition coming to the boil in the last few minutes. This looks impressive too from Zachary. Barking his way over the dogwood. Yeah, just about fine. Good turn as well. Weaves. Lovely style. And speedy as well. Right up with it as things stand. But sadly, that'll cost them. That'll cost them hugely. Not liking that uh, seesaw one little bit and losing the. 15 faults on it, and so that has compromised their round. Looked at so good. Up and down on the A-frame, tight left-hander. Such a shame there, 15 faults on one obstacle, two refusals on the seesaw, and then it missed the up on the seesaw as well, so such a shame for Debbie uh, after this morning's success. Sarah Boyer and Eric the Labrador take it with the only clean round, clear round, Sally Clark in, in second place, and we'll scroll all the way through you to give you the, the full results of the large section.
of the medium ABC agility round is Hannah Fairweather and Spiron out of control. And the intermediate is Nigel Staines and Morgan's Black Panther. And the winner of the Large Novice ABC Agility Round is Sarah Boyer and Holly Tan Russet. So the overall medium ABC final winning is Nicola Garrett and Obey That's Unlikely. Well done. Thank you very much. Brilliant. That is seven, so be careful. <laughs> and the winner of the intermediate novice ABC final is Nigel Staines and Morgan's Black Panther. Thank you. Too much glassware. Well done, Jimmy's. That's yours. <laughs> and the winner of the Cross Large Good Novice girl. ABC final is Sarah Boyer and Holly Tarn Russet. Really good. Brilliant. Who's that? <laughs> We're not doing it again, are we? Yep. <laughs> Try some more games. It's lap of honour time. will grow into a dog over four stages. Stage one, sleep. Then they'll play and explore and play some more. That's stage two. Still playing. Stage three, confidence and great leaps forward. By stage four, they're almost fully grown. Royal Canin's puppy growth program provides everything you need to give them the ideal foundation for a healthy life.
Oh, oh, hang, on, hang, hang on, hang on, John. That, that, that's not loud enough. That's loud. Come on, come on. We'll do it. To, we'll do it together. Are you ready for fly ball? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our judge, Jenny. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the louder you are, the faster the dogs will run. And this is going to be fast, it's going to be loud, we're also going to be live on Channel 4, so make as much noise as you possibly can. This is our final quarterfinals, and we're going to introduce... You're back with us in the main arena, you're back with us for the start of Flyball, Jenny Knight, our judge. Being in charge of a thrilling day yesterday, Jenny competes with her own fly ball team in Cambridgeshire. And uh, the opening quarter final on Friday is going to be between uh, Wild West Wincanton from Somerset, wearing the blue that you see there on the near side, Wild West, and on the far side, Lightning Strikes train in Chorley Wood, Hampshire, on the far side. And, uh, they will have a little practice run as ever before the action begins. I cannot uh, underestimate how compelling the fly ball was yesterday. Along the way, we had a, a new Cruft record of 15.10 seconds as well. And everyone said that the quality of this year's competition was absolutely outstanding and it got off to a flying start yesterday. What? Just loading the ball there, and of course it's the quickest game of fetch you've ever seen, really. Little relay, four dogs up and down the course, and that, that uh, have to pick the ball up from the box loader as well. Those boxes are padded and very safe to prevent any sort of injury or to the dogs. And uh, just, just to remind you, these are like the pre-match warm-up, the pre-match stretches for Wild West of Wing Canton, who will run Pushka first of all across Freedom and Charlie, Ziggy and Eddie all border collies. And uh, Lightning Strikes will go with Jelly Banks, Mako, Mazikeen and Flair. But this is a... This is just a little warm-up race there for Wild West on, on the near side and also for Lightning Strikes on the far. So they'll have one of these and then settle down for the real thing in just a, a couple of minutes' time. Lightning Strikes. Club made up of four families who come together, Lincolnshire, Hertfordshire, Berkshire, all over the country really. First time all these dogs have competed at Crufts as well, lightning strikes. That is in the red on the far side. And now we're getting ready for the real thing. Wild West in the blue on the near side. Great timing. We are all set for the first quarter final here on Friday. On the near side, Wild West in the blue, and on the far side, the red, it is lightning strikes from Chorley Wood. Best of three to remind you. And we're all set and we are running. And there's a good start on that to the far side by Jelly Bags, who has it at the moment. Mako, the border collie on the far side as well. There's a fault on that far side, I'm hearing though. And so Wild West, if they keep it clean on the near and the blue side, will go one to the good. Best of three. 
doesn't look to be too much between these two, but at the end we'll wait and see who Jenny Knight, our judge, points to. Yes, as anticipated, she points to the near side, to the blue. The Wild West are one to the good. So lightning strikes have to strike right back. Drop the ball there. That's the reason for the fault on the far side, and that means that lightning strikes have to strike back straight away, otherwise their history, it's cruel, it's unforgiving. Wild West in the blue, on the near side, one, two, the good. Will that drop ball be costly? Will Wild West on the near side get their way through? It's a flying start on the far, that is for sure. A really good start on the far side by Lightning Strikes. Macro, the second dog, going well as well. They have it at the moment on the far side with Mazzy Keane, the border collie. And there's a fault on the near side as well as Flair brings it home for the strike. So I think that is going to be one apiece, I would imagine. Lightning Strikes get it on the far side. One apiece, and we once again go into a decider in the opening Friday quarter final. So in the, in the blue on the near side, Wild West, Pushka, Charlie, Ziggy and Eddie, their running order, Jelly Bags, Mako, Mazzy, Keen and Flair, Border Collies to the fore very much, this, the absolute decider, whoever wins this progresses, whoever loses packs up and heads home. Will they be heading home to Wing Canton or to Chorley Wood? We're about to find out in the next few seconds. Yeah, just to, it's all about safety, and we've noticed that uh, part of the matting which the dogs run on, which is non-slip, is starting to come up. So before we do anything else, we're going to make sure that it's perfectly safe for the dogs to run, and I think it is. Well spotted, Graham. Little hesitation. This the decider. One apiece. Wild Reds in the blue on the near. Lightning strikes on the red on the far. Pushka and Jellybags. Pushka for Wild West, Jellybags for Lightning Strikes. Away they... There's a fault on the near side from Wild West. A fault on the near side from Wild West that could be very, very costly if Lightning Strikes on the far. Keep it clean. It looks as though Lightning Strikes from Chorley Wood are going to be progressing. We will wait for official confirmation. We've got it. It is the Lightning Strikes. They'll be looking to strike again on Saturday. In the semi-finals, Wild West, a brief, brief appearance at Crufts for the Wincanton team. Yep, we promised you fun, furious and fast, and that's exactly what you've got. Deadly serious competition, though, but you cannot go, you cannot pass the start line until the lights turn green. So they had a false start on this near side, which meant they had to run another dog, which cost them, ultimately cost them the, uh, the leg gym. It did indeed. We lose four teams there. Uh, Every day, four teams on the Thursday, four teams on the Friday, four teams tomorrow, and then we are left uh, with four for the uh, grand final here at Crofts on Sunday afternoon. Just making sure that they're happy with the course, and then we'll do a bit of a practice run. 
Ready on the boxes. We want to try and avoid those false starts. So the next quarterfinal, look oh, at the crowd. Nice. This place is always round for the uh, fly ball, close to 7,000 here. And uh, practice run then. there will be a little practice run here. Don't worry, this is just a practice run. This is just the, the pre match stretches as I describe aces hold them from Kent in the blue on the near side and on the far tails we win members really across the country uh, tails okay, holding like the Sir British Rob, and Dr. European Hoy, record and the fastest time of 14.53 seconds as well and could we even here see a new Crufts record 15.10 is the time to be established by those brilliant Belgians who arrived here yesterday so tails we win really have to be the favorites for this one tails we win in the red on the Do far you side just check your box? Kaniki, arlo wiggy and ginny border collie border collie border collie whip it then that is the leading four for tails we win and Havert shoots chaos and ever will go for aces holden from kent on blue which is the near side just checking one or two things here, just to, just checking that box, Graham, yeah? They weren't they were quite sure whether they had a... It was basically a malfunction on the box, and obviously we don't want that. The dog, the ball has to come out cleanly as soon as the front of the box is touched. So they're just making sure that it's fair for everybody and everything's working. Jenny Knight, you bring up in. The second quarter final to order there. So aces hold them from Kent, the outsiders they have to be in this one, the blue on the near side, tails we win, red on the far side, best of three, away we go, good start though by the aces on the near side, it's with tails we win on the far at the moment, Arlo the second dog making good pace, there goes Wiggy on the far side, there's a fault on the near side as well, so this looks like it's going to go the way of tails we win, Ginny Taking them home on that far side and confirmation from Jenny that tails we win. British and European record holders are one to the good, as anticipated. Such a shame. Dog dropped the ball and it must pick up the ball and bring it back over the four jumps for it to be a successful run. So they lost the reg. It's fast, it's compelling, it is unforgiving as well. Aces hold them, no, they have to upset the form book to stay around here at Crufts. Otherwise, the motorway towards Kent beckons. Tells we win, one up. On the far side, over the red jumps. Aces hold them, needing something exceptional on the side, and they've got away to a very quick start as well. It's with the Aces at the moment, but they made up ground on the far with Arlo, the second dog, and Wiggy, the third, for Tails we win on the far side, the red side. There's a fault, though, on the far side, I'm hearing. There is a fault, didn't get the ball, so this looks like it's going to be squared up. I think we're going to have another, another decider, another winner takes all. Let's have a look, let's get confirmation. Absolutely right, fault on that far side. One apiece, we have another decider, Graham. We love deciders, I'm not sure these teams do. And there we are, just starts to turn, doesn't even actually take the ball out. Such a shame. Picked up by some terrific camera work as well. So one apiece, and tails we win. Well, could we see an upset here? We were absolutely convinced that Tails We Win would be around here on Sunday. We were talking in terms of the possibility of a new Crufts record from them as well. But they have to win here, otherwise it's all over. And they made a good start on that far side too. Just with Tails We Win, the lead increasing on the far side with Arlo the second dog. Tails We Win have it on that far side. There's also a fault on the near side as well. Tails We Win are going to be staying with us. Tails We Win comfortably comfortably as well for tails we win they go through as anticipated with a bit of a shock along the way graham it was such a shame there there was a slight problem with the box load you can see he's still trying to get the box to function and get the ball in fails to do so and uh, there's no he can't take the ball out of the box which he must do that was Olivia Kennedy having a little bit of a problem with the box loading. And that's the end of Aces, Hold'em and Tails. We win, go through, very quick, bit of a scare along the way. Then.
our next two teams. Ladies and gentlemen, raise the roof for Brilliant Bobby So the group of the crew, they're all the hands of this, they've been hunting for us for many years. Aces have previously matched the previous cross record in their time. Thank you very much, guys. Welcome back. Yep, Brig Motley crew are here. In the uh, blue on the, the near side, our, our Brig uh, Motley crew against Aces High, who will be on the far side, the red side of the course. Aces High, the 2019 champions. As before, they'll have a they'll have a, a little practice run here. Aces High going with Icon Heist, Rampage and Hustle. What an icon Hustle is. The Whippet in the world of flyball. Always a terrific finisher. Aces High, the 2019 champions. And they did hold the cross record until yesterday when the Belgian road runners broke it. Brig, Muttley crew, consistent appearers, six time competing at Crufts from Brig in North Lincolnshire. Lollipop, Annie, Eric, and Ted. Border Collie, Border Collie, Patterdale, and another Border Collie. They will leave off. And a special mention for Ellie Keyworth. Boxes. And keep your eyes Box open judges. for Hustle, the Hustler. Ready on the line. Love seeing him run at Crufts. So it is on the near side. Brig, Muttley crew in the blue. Outsiders on the red, on the far. Aces high, the 2019 champions with the ace that they have in Hustle. First to go, Lollipop for Brig Muttley crew and uh, Icon for Aces High, the crossbreed. Jenny Knight is poised and they're away. Good start on the near side by Brig Muttley crew by Lolly. Lollipop are losing a bit of time and it's with the Aces on the far with Heist. Rampage goes next for the Aces. They're looking very, very confident they are on that far side. Here comes the Hustle. It's here comes the hustle, but that could all count for nothing. There is a fault on that far side. There is a fault on the far side. I think it was with Rampage, the third dog on the far side. And this will go the way of the Muttley crew. Again, a shock. Muttley crew, one to the good. One more and they'll be going through. And the 29 champions, hustle and all, will be goners. And there's the mistake, the dog failed to pick up the ball, didn't go back over the four jumps either, so had to rerun. All impeccably controlled by Jenny Knight, our judge. The coolest head in the arena. We are all set. So, Aces High have to strike back here. The Muttley crew on the edge, are they? Of a big upset. They're running. Good start by the Muttley crew on the near side again with Lolly. Icon keeping up down a bit of ground, working up with Heist just ahead on the far side of Annie. Third dog going rampage again. Looking good. This is the Hustle's territory. Here comes the finisher. The Hustle has finished it off and Aces get it. And Aces are all square. And there's one more hand to play, Graham. There is We Love a Third Leg, as you say, almost a perfect run there by Aces. Uh, they are one of the favourites, we think, for the competition, and they were just demonstrating their class there. We Love a Hustle. One apiece, one to go. It's been really close. Can the Muttley crew 
Lollipop and Eric and Ted. Can they do something? Can they surprise us all? Can they upset the aces? We're ready. We're set. And they are running. Again, a good start on the near side, but it's just with the uh, aces on the far now. Aces stretching that lead a bit. Annie battling back for the Muttley crew. It's still with the aces on the far side. There's a wider gap now on the red. And uh, when you get a gap of any description, hand over to the hustle. <laughs> the aces have it as anticipated. Well done, Brig Muttley crew, though. Gave them anything they could handle. The aces progress. The Muttley crew depart. Fantastic fly ball racing, fantastic entertainment for this capacity crowd. They're queuing up round the block, apparently outside, to try and get in to get a taste of the fantastic atmosphere and the great fly ball racing that we've got going on at the moment. Celebration for, for the aces there. Who are the the Thank you so much. Welcome back. Last of the Friday quarterfinals between Pauls on the run from Leicestershire in the blue on the near side. Formed in November 2018. Quite a new team then. Pauls on the run from Leicestershire against the familiar heavyweights. Focus and the red, that is the far side. The current uh, Cruft champions, the reigning champions from 2020, and they wear the record holders. 15-20, which was taken away uh, yesterday. They set that record with a dead heat. Remember that one, an absolute thriller in the final in 2019. Remember, you're not missing anything here. This is just a practice run. And pause on the run. We'll go with Fume, the crossbreed, Kiwi, Border Collie, a Riddle, crossbreed, and Poppy, Border Collie. While Focus go with Diesel the Whippet and then three crossbreeds, Mouse, Kenai and Panic. Uh, we would expect the far side, the Reds, to be the dominant force here, but you never know in fly ball. You never know. Best of three. Fume the crossbreed going first, the Wolf of Paws on the run. Diesel the Focus, the Whippet, the three-year-olds on the far side. It's just about with the uh, fume at the moment on the near. Very close, this one indeed. Really is close. It's with focus on the far side now. Focus have it on the far side and finishing off comes panic for focus. Poppy trying to make up ground. That'll be with focus. One to the good form team coming in on the far side. That was really excellent fly ball from Focus. We can see why they're one of the fancy teams, Graham. That was 15.35. Bearing in mind the new cross record is 15.10. We are building up for a record-breaking run. I'm sure we are, Jim. You wouldn't rule anything out here. The fly ball competition has been exhilarating so far. One more for Focus, and they will be going through. And pause on the run, need this one, and they're cheeing the crowd up on the near side. They need this one to stay here at Crofts. 
2022. Good start that by Fume on the near side. It's with Pauls on the run at the moment. Here goes Kiwi on the near side as well. Still with Pauls on the run, only just really close this indeed. And on the far side though, Kenai has made up ground. And now it's going to be with Panic on the far. And they will just get it. Focus will just get it. Exhilaration from Focus there. You cannot ever discount Focus, the current Crufts champions. They're the champs. They want to be that on Sunday as well. And an, an exhilarating performance. Pause on the run. Very, very commendable. But the curtain comes down on them for Crufts 2022. Brilliant, fabulous fly ball racing. Absolutely great. And you saw just now what it means to them to progress on to the next round. They really are a class act focus. Uh, and I'm expecting great things from them. Just enjoy the visuals of the F1 dogs, if you like, here at Crofts, the fly ball competitors. So confirmation. They have qualified for tomorrow's semi-finals. Lightning strikes, tails we win, aces and focus. They will all be back tomorrow. So now we're going to decide the, the Friday see. champions. And we have uh, the scrap for the best of the rest, really. Tails we win in the red on the far side. And lightning strikes in the blue in the near side. Still the best of three. No practice runs this time. Tails we win. British and European uh, record holders. And lightning strikes are on the nearest. It tells we win at the moment. Tells we win just on that far side, but not much in it. Third dog going for tells we win. Wheel. And there's a fault. Oh. And it's coming towards the near side there. Lightning strikes have won the opening leg of this as we complete the... Uh, Friday action here, looking to find the Friday champion. Lightning strikes are one to the good. Graham? There we are, that was a mistake. Missed pick up, and you can see on the far side as well, another mistake by the dog, failing to collect the ball and come back over the jumps. So lightning strikes in the blue and the near side are one to the good. Tails, we win. They will want to hit back here immediately. Lightning strikes in the nearest with tails we win immediately on that far side. Keniki, a quick dog, followed by Arlo on the far side, but I'm hearing there is a fault on that far side, so that means we could be in for a runoff here. Although they're going to finish uh, finish first with Ginny, the fourth dog for tails uh, we win. I believe, I believe it's going to come this way. It is indeed. Jenny points towards us in the commentary box. One. And lightning strikes it is who go through with that fault on the far side for Tails we win who will want to iron things out uh, later in the competition. Great couple of runs there, great fly ball racing, very, very close actually to start with Jim until we got a, just a couple of mistakes. So uh, expecting a lot from this lot. Bearing in mind now what we're asking, looking for is for a winner of the day, and that's as much about bragging rights. They want to win today's competition so that Absolutely. they can save the other dogs. If you want to beat us, you're going to have to go some. Absolutely. They want to go into the semi-finals and hopefully the final as champions. Aces high will be in the blue, the near side. Ashley Jennison, an icon. Maria Worrell, Heist, Andrew Worrell and Rami, the Hustler, 
Kelly Marie Stacy handling uh, the hustler. Jeanette Newbury, Shelley handling Riot, and Emma Powell Nova completing the Aces High team. And uh, focus on the far side, the red. Diesel, Mouse, Can I, Panic, and Dingabell, Onyx, and Risk It is the seventh dog who is not the current champions, of course. Focus, the reigning champions, and they were the record holders. Graham, you want to say something? Just showing the dogs the box at the far end. You can hear the, the uh, box loaders calling them. The box loaders can't touch the box. All they can do is communicate verbally with the dogs. So let's just hope they can keep to that. Ready on the box, This could be exceptional. Aces high on the near side in the blue, led off by Icon. Focus, led off by Diesel, the Whippet. On the far. We're going to decide Friday's champions. Focus on the far side. We're counting down now. The lights are on. Aces high on the nearest. We're focusing. The... Oh my goodness me! That's a proper fault. That's a proper fault. Unfortunately. That was Icon who went flying across uh, to Diesel's uh, to Diesel on that far side, and this will take just a little bit of sorting out there, Graham, so a little, little the consultation individually, and then we run the leg. Yeah, we're going to do a rerun. Do you want to rerun on your own? Okay, so they will rerun on their own on the far side. That will focus. And that'll mean that uh, focus will take uh, the opening leg here. Quick, sensible decision-making, Graham. Yeah, they just offered the dog to rerun by itself to make sure that it wasn't put off by the dog coming in from the opposing lane. Does happen occasionally, not very often, certainly not in this quality of competition. And they're just explaining uh, to the teams exactly what's happening so that they know what the ruling is on the ground. So it's actually where we start again. And then we'll do a team. <laughs> and quickly. <laughs> well, I tell you what. I tell you what. Uh, Icon, the five-year-old crossbeat, has got to would seem to have very much a mind of his own. Not sure that he fences the blue lane. I think he fences the red lane for some reason. <laughs> wow. <I tell> you. <laughs> That's what I can do. Big bit of big round of applause from people in at the moment. Yeah. So the water to focus. Right, okay. And then we start for the next race. Right, OK. We're going to award that to Focus because of I the think, interference. Then yeah. it's a new race you can switch. OK, so they have taken that uh, first leg, have Focus. They, they take that run because of the uh, infringements. Awarded because the dog interfered originally. The, the near side and the original interference Boxes. came from Icon uh, from judges. Aces High. So Focus, it is one to the good. And this could be decisive. So it is focus on the red on that far side and uh, aces high in the blue on the near. And we're all set. And they've changed their opening dog, not surprisingly. But it's still with focus on the far side now. That's Mouse going through there. On the far side, it is still very much uh, with focus. It's a flying finish on the near as well, but he's still with focus on the far side. That means that uh, after a messy quarterfinal, really, focus go through. Well done to them. So just to clarify uh, about that first leg, it was awarded to focus uh, on the basis of continued uh, interference. So, and that was why she, the, the decision eventually went over there to them. Even the best trained dogs do their own thing. Focus going through, then focus we will see again as uh, we look to decide our Friday champion. 
Right. We are ready for the final, ladies and gentlemen. This is the big one. It is ladies lightning. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back. Lightning strikes! Lightning strikes. In the blue on the near side against Focus. And the red on the far as we are going to decide our Friday champions here. No rest at all for Focus. Current Crufts champions, remember, the reigning champs. They wear record holders until yesterday. Lightning strikes. Train in Chorleywood, Hertfordshire. Focus on the far side. Lightning strikes on the near side. The prize is breaking rights, as Graham has described it. Friday champions. Lightning strikes. Jelly bags. Mako. Massey. Keen. Flair. Fizz. Honey. Focus, Diesel, Mouse, Can I, Panic, Dingabell, and Onyx. And they're away. And on the uh, near side, Lightning Strikes trailing at the moment. It's with Focus on the far. Focus looking good and in control if they keep it clean and quick. Good turn on that third box from Focus on the far side. And now looking to finish it off. Focus go emphatically one up. Fly ball at its best. Faultless from my eyes. And focus great celebrations in that team there, all ages and sizes. Yep, that little girl had exactly the same uh, impression that I did. Quality. Quality. <laughs> they start them young in fly ball. So focus on the far side, based in Selby. Team members coming from all over. Are looking good. The title. Of Friday champions is less than 30 seconds away. They are away running its level at the moment, still just with focus on the far. Little gap opening up to the focus's second dog. There is a fault on that far side, I'm hearing. Not such perfection from focus. There is a fault on the far side that we will tell you about at the end of the race. And a crossover fault it was, and that means that Jenny Knight will point towards us, and it's one apiece on the decider, Graham. And it is one apiece, but I've got some news from the first leg. Focus did it in 15.11 seconds. Whoa. They were a whisker away from breaking the cross record. Ready on the line. Just underlining how quick everything is here. 15.11, Crutch record is 15.10. Could they break it here if they, they're in flying form? Will they manage it? Phil Lightning strikes, upset them and claim the title as Friday's champion. Big roar from the crowd. Full house here at the NEC, at the main arena. We're all ready. Jenny's got them off and running, and it's very close in the opening leg as well. Just on the far side, we focus. Focus still just on the far side. There is a fault on the near side. So Focus will be the champions unless they mess up here. They're willing the final dog home. The final dog comes home for Focus. Focus, the reigning champions, are the Friday champions as well. And they've been within a whisker of the cross record too. What a nice day's work that is by Focus. And do not discount them. These guys want to retain their title badly. And that's what the crowd thinks, but that's why they get packed in here for fly ball. It is compelling entertainment, and I'm delighted to say there's a lot more to come over the next couple of days. Brilliant, brilliant entertainment. Uh, great fun for the dogs. And uh, there was a crossover fault on the near side. You can see that the dog's on the course before the previous dog had left it, uh, and that's a nose-to-nose -nose changeover. But uh, impressive, impressive fly ball. And what does it mean to them? Everything. No other competition like this receives the same coverage that it does here. Well done to Focus. They beat Lightning Strikes 2-1 in uh, Friday's uh, quarter-final. And that means uh, the last race, they're going to be Friday champions. And they will, we'll see them again in the semis tomorrow. Just about to have the presentation and present doing the presentation is uh, Mr. Jonathan Walsenholm representing Royal Cannon and he's going to be presenting the trophies to some very, very happy focus members okay. Ryan Hayward, Kim Gillespie, Jacko Jensen, Craig Burrows, Justin Shearing, right, Gary Minikin, uh, Samantha Hayward was not to mention you know, the uh, of mentioning the 
Box Lotus from Atha Hayward and Drake Dominican. So focus will return, of course, and uh, tomorrow we'll see the return of the outstanding Belgian team, the first the European team to be competing here at Croft, the Roadrunners beat, beat the Thursday champions. This is coming to the boil very, very nicely indeed. It is, and collecting their rosettes for, for running up is uh, Lightning Strike, Melissa Shearing, Kim Sermon, Lisa Nicholl, Becky Black, Kelly Black, Heather Beale, and the team captain was Kate Sermon and the box loader Mark Nicholl. And there we go with the traditional lap of honour. And then there we are, got a bit of cuteness overload there at the head of the line. a dog over four stages stage one sleep then they'll play and explore and play some more that's stage two still playing stage three confidence and great leaps forward by stage four they're almost fully grown Royal Canin's puppy growth program provides everything you need to give them the ideal foundation for a healthy life In order to qualify for the final, a dog must have won best of breed at the group or general championship show designated by the Kennel Club as the qualifying show. In a small number of instances, the best of breed winner is unable to compete, in which case the opposite sex winner in the breed is invited to compete in their place. Our judge this evening has been judging for over 46 years and is most well known for his success with Griffin Brusselois 
making up over 20 champions in the UK and overseas under the Donzi Eater affix. He is qualified to judge many breeds across the toy, terrier and utility groups, as well as being qualified to judge best in show at championship show level. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our vulnerable breeds judge, David Guy, who is escorted... You join us now the for the finals of the Kennel Club's Vulnerable British and Irish Breeds Competition. Now, these are so now breeds of dog that had well less well than 300 puppies registered last breeds. year. So they're going to come in one at a time. Now, they've been pre-judged, so our judge has already seen them. So first in the ring is the Mastiff from the working group. Bearded Collies, these competed yesterday in the pastoral group. Here we have the smaller frame of the Lancashire Healer. A wonderful outline there of the old English sheepdog. And the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. Two varieties of cardigan of Corgi. This one is now the cardigan. The first of our terriers coming into the ring. This is the miniature bull terrier. Miniature bull terrier. Here they will be in the group later this evening. Followed by the Dandy Dinmont terrier. Another terrier. These real characters. This is the Dandy Dinmont. Now we have the Glen the Mall terrier. Another terrier there, the Glen of Amal. And another Irish terrier breed, the Ken of Blue Terrier. You will unfortunately notice there are quite a lot of terrier breeds that are here. This one, the Kerry Blue, popular in the show ring, but not so popular as pets. And now we have the Manchester Terrier. Bred as rat killers, these are the Manchester Terrier. Followed by the Celium Terrier. And nice to see responsible dog ownership in the ring as well. And the Celium Terrier here. Striding out beautifully. Now, oh. please welcome the Sky Terrier. Look at that coat. Wonderful coat there, the Sky Terrier. And the English Toy Terrier. English Toy Terrier, very similar characteristics to the Manchester Terrier that we just saw. Followed by the soft coated Wheaton Terrier. The coat of these described as shades of ripening wheat. That is the soft coated Wheaton Terrier from the hand. Distinctive outline there of the Bloodhound. Oh, just a little gallop on the way in. Followed by the Deerhound. Really graceful for such a big dog there, is the Deerhound. And the Irish Wolfhound. Talking of bigger dogs, here we have the Irish Wolfhound, the real giant of this group. And here we have the Otterhound. The Otterhound coming Followed in. Followed by the King Charles Spaniel. Our toy Moving to toy representative here, we've got the King Charles Spaniel. And now the first of our, gun the first dogs, of our gun dogs English coming setter. in. This is the English setter. There are four setter breeds, and unfortunately, three of them are counted Follow as the vulnerable. So the larger the setters, this is the Gordon. Beautiful black and mahogany and coat. And then the oldest of the setter breeds, the Irish red and white setter. Now we have the curly coated retriever. The tight corded coat of the curly coated retriever. The first of our spaniels is the clumber spaniel. The heaviest of the spaniels here, the clumber. And now we have the field spaniel. Our second spaniel, this is the field spaniel. Followed by the Irish water spaniel. Another dog with a really characteristic coat the there, Irish Water there Spaniel. The Spaniel. And the final competitor, the Welsh Springer Spaniel. I'll now pass it over to our commentator, Marina White. Thank you, Jenny. So, our judge, David Guy, is going to take a closer look at these breeds, but as Jenny may have mentioned earlier, 
These breeds have been prejudged. So in our judge for this competition, David Guy, he's from the well-known Zonzita kennel of Griffon, Brussels. He's actually, actually prejudged almost all of the dogs that are here today. Is just a couple that were too busy in the breed ring. So he's going to take a look at them. The first of those, the Bloodhound. This is a champion. This is a Bloodhound, and it's from the Hound Group. This they can be traced back as far Maple as the 1300s Malazar. and are known as the Sleuth Hound. They were used on a leash to track deer and boar in the 19th century. And owned by Miss L. And we're looking Priestley. for a really noble, dignified dog. The Bloodhound is originally used one of the key features we can see there from the front, the wide ball. open nostrils, and that's so they can really so catch the scent very early times, of whatever it is that they're tracking. To track humans. The so this is one, one is champion Mapplemead Malazar of Quick Cotic. And has no interest so despite its size, they should move that with a free swinging movement, which we're seeing house. here. The Bloodhound. Now, as we mentioned, the judge has prejudged so judge all of the rest Giants of these dogs. So he's going to go round, have a look, and he's comparing them to their breed standard. So your breed standard is the description of the perfect dog for that breed. So we've got the Mastiff there, the Bearded Collie. We have breeds represented from Now, as we said, groups. less than 300 puppies registered for each of these breeds. And, really and there are 32 breeds currently on the Vulnerable Bees register. Breeds. And there are also some, um, some breeds that are, that are in danger of falling onto or that or list. Less than 300 puppy registration. So if you're looking yeah. round so and thinking, oh, I'd like to find out more line. about that particular so breed, you can head to the Kennel Club the website. Best. And you can also just search online the for the breed so club of that relevant all these breed. Dogs that have come into the ring today to compete at clubs. Many of these fantastic family pets, the setters there, our judges just looking at. These tend so to be have very list. active breeds that need to be stimulated, or some of them do have quite high maintenance coats. So it looks like we're going to have a short list here. And his first dog so the, the Manchester, Manchester Terrier, Terrier is coming out. Followed by the Celium, the Celium Terrier. And the Sky Terrier. And the Sky Terrier. And the English Toy, the Soft-Coated Wheaton. The Soft-Coated Wheaton the and hound. the English Toy. And the Deer and Hound. The Gordon Setter. And that makes our shortlist. So, ladies and gentlemen, the English Toy Terrier for the remaining beautiful and the Gordon Setter and the Curly Coated Retriever. White into David Guy's shortlist today, but what a fantastic opportunity for them to display their beautiful qualities in the ring today. So our judges selected eight dogs. We can move those again. So he's just giving some instructions there on what sort of movement he would like from them. But the first to move is going to be the Manchester Terrier. So here we have the Manchester Terrier. So these were developed, unlike many of the Terriers, as vermin control in the cities in the Industrial Revolution. Compact and elegant on the move. Next in our short we have, we have the Celium Terrier, Terrier, named after the Welsh village of its origin. Really These went to ground after otters, badgers, fox, polecats. It should be oblong in outline, and you can see they're slightly domed between the eyes. Brisk mover. So now we have the Sky the incredible Terrier. coat here of the Sky Terrier. Long this breed played a part in the development of all the Scottish Terriers here, terriers. and we see it was used Not to hunt fox and badger. It should be twice as long as it is high, and that coat should be like a veil, but it's hard to the touch. 
now the English Toy Terrier. Here we have the English Toy this Terrier from the, the Toy Group. It was once called the Miniature Black and Tan. And, the and, tan. and again, evolved from the Manchester Terrier, which we've seen. There Those candle flame shaped ears. So I mentioned before, now shades of ripening wheat. This is the soft coated wheat and terrier used for hunting fox and badger. The coat texture and colour is of utmost importance, as you can tell from the name. It should be free and graceful. Here to Scotland, known, formerly known as the Scottish So next up, we have the Deerhound. Originally, the Scottish Wolfhound dates back more than 500 years and was used for deer coursing. It's built for speed, power and endurance, but should have dignity. So I mentioned there are four set of breeds. Unfortunately, three of them are on this vulnerable breeds register. This gorgeous dog, this is the Gordon Setter. Named after the Duke of Gordon, who introduced the breed to Scotland, and they should be built on galloping lines. Second of our gun dogs in the final, this is the curly coated retriever. Those really dense, tight curls help it to be waterproof. The oldest and tallest of our retriever breeds. That wedge shaped head, and they should be effortless on the move. So as we said, our judges prejudged these. He has seen these dogs before. So now he's got his shortlist. He's just looking through, weighing up which one's got that extra bit of showmanship that's going to help it to win. So we're going to have a first and a reserve. Looks like our judge is calling for the boards. So who is going to be the winner? The winner is that beautiful Gordon Setter. I'm delighted. So this is show champion, Flaxheath, top model of Glen Morangi, owned by Mrs. A. Phillips and Mr. T. Watkins. Runner-up runner up is the Celium Terrier. Terrier. Champion Zippo, Sleepy Sapphire Sun at Latara, owned by Mrs. Finals. Bell. As I said, if any of those breeds have caught your eye, please do have a look on the Kennel Club website. The only way that we can save them is if people start choosing them as pets, choosing them as show dogs. But there we have our winner, the beautiful so Gordon Setter. That coat absolutely gleaming Gordon. under the lights here. This beautiful Gordon Setter is show champion Black Team top model at Glen Morangi. Gun dogs are always show champions rather than full champions unless they have proved themselves in the field. So this one is a show champion. Looking at picture here today. coat should be shining coal and lustrous tan. You can really see that there. Picture of health. And the Celium Terrier in reserve. Celiums will of course be in the Terrier group, which will be judged in the main arena later this evening. I think it's time for a lap of honour. So winner and runner-up of our Vulnerable Breeds competition. These dogs qualified by winning best of breed or best opposite sex at a qualifying show in the last year. And that Gordon Setter looking absolute picture there. Celium's got slightly shorter legs, so his lap of honor may take just that little bit longer. What a fantastic competition that was. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have got a fantastic evening program uh, to enjoy in the main arena a little bit later on, starting at just after five o'clock. Absolutely keep the applause going, ladies and gentlemen. Do join us, as I say, in the arena just after five o'clock this evening uh, for our agility finals, our singles agility finals, and of course, the group judging in the Hound and the Terrier groups as well. But now, earlier today, earlier this morning, it was our Nature's Menu Heel Work to Music competition. The standard was incredibly high. It is now time for our winner's spotlight performance. Ladies and gentlemen, 
With well, her next here in the main arena, it's time to recognize the winner of the Heelwork to Music competition, which was held earlier today. And the winner will see them in the arena very shortly. Nikki Hinson and her five-year-old red and white border collie, Elsa. They were winners of the UK freestyle competition yesterday too, defending their 2020 title, which means they'll represent UK in the international final tomorrow. But for now, sit back and enjoy this performance to fame. That was the chance to perform a second time at Crufts as winners of the Hillwork to Music competition. Congratulations to Nikki Hinson and, of course, to Elsa. We're going to take a break in the main arena just for now, but there is an awful lot coming up tonight and plenty of excitement in the arena because, not least, we will have two more group judging sessions to find out who will go through to Best in Show on Sunday night. There's Agility and there's the Breeders' Competition final as well. So that is all to come. Don't go too far away. We're going to leave you just now with 
some incredible hero dog stories for 2022. I couldn't see my girls' faces. I felt like my world was crumbling. It was like my eyes were closed. I was then matched with Milo. It was one of the happiest days of my life. Milo's a hero because he's given me my life back. He's enabled me to be a dad again to my girls and to be a husband again to my wife. I first lost my sight three years ago. That happened when I was at work. I used to work on a farm. I've got a condition called diabetic retinopathy, which is when blood vessels grow into the back of the eye and then they can leak into your eye, obscuring the vision. I had a bleed in my eye. My wife Amanda picked me up and I never went back to the farm. I went into a very dark place, which I never want to go in again. Being trapped in four walls, not being able to go out, I was petrified. I'd say he hadn't just lost his sight, I think he just lost himself, if that makes sense. We're not afraid to talk about it now, but he'd often cry at night because life had changed for him and he had to adapt and learn things all over again. So yeah, it was, it was tough. Now in my left eye, I can't see nothing at all. And in my right eye, I can see blurry shapes. I wouldn't go anywhere without Milo and Milo doesn't go anywhere without me. He's enabled me to go out independently, confidently, knowing that I'm going to be safe. I felt an instant connection with Milo. As soon as he put his chin on my, on my knee, as soon as he gave me his paw, it was amazing. Milo's looking out for dangers. He's looking out for curbs, cars, anything ahead of me that I can't see. Milo will find a bench as well, so if I asked him to find a bench, he will take me straight to a bench and put his chin on it. It's like I've got my eyes when I've got Milo. I just feel so safe with him. There's a few moments Milo has actually saved my life. We were at a crossing and I'd pushed the button and the beepers had just gone off. So I asked Milo to go forward and Milo didn't move. He was like, he was concrete to the ground. Two cars sped past through the crossing as the beepers were going. A couple of seconds later, while we were walking up the street, a police car sped past after these two cars. If we'd have walked forward, me and Milo would have both been hit by these cars and it was that fast and Milo didn't move, he kept me safe, he used his eyes, his instincts and he saved my life. Every day I put my life in Milo's paws, he's everything not just to me to my whole family. You know, people see Scott or other people walking with a guide dog and they just think oh that's just their aid but no it's, it's far much more than that, he really is. I feel like Milo is my hero as well. He's given me my husband back, you know. He's given the children that dad figure back. He helps my dad and not just my dad, everyone, and he makes them all happy. He's like become a lot happier and because he's got a lot more freedom now. He helps him when he's like crossing the roads. He's soft, he's cuddly, perfect cleanly. I can be happy again now and it gives me a real sense of purpose. I'm now at college studying counselling. I would never have had the confidence to go to college if it wasn't for Milo. He helps me with my anxiety if I do start to panic slightly. I really want to use the skills that I'm going to learn because of Milo to help other people that are in my position. Milo's given me my sight back. He's given me a vision. He's given me everything and I can't thank him enough. We rescued Chewie at 12 weeks of age. He was found abandoned with his litter mates, his brother and sister in a garden. They were tied in a bag They'd got duct tape around their paws, their mouths, never really identified who'd abandoned the pups. The lady whose garden it was found them, thank goodness, took them to her vet. They put a post on their Facebook page with like, oh my goodness, look at these little puppies, they'll be looking for their homes. So I went down on the train and met him, brought him back first class. 
the train was actually 15 minutes late leaving Preston because all the Virgin train crew wanted their photograph taken with him. And he's been with us ever since. When we adopted him, we decided that we'd, we'd give something back. In 2019, I read a report on Facebook um, about a puppy that had been found buried alive, very close to where we are now. He was actually sitting on my knee when I read the article and it, it just rang so many bells that, that there but for the grace of God for the ones from the expression, that could have been him. Unfortunately, his, his injuries were too severe, he had to be put to sleep. And I thought, do you know what, this little dog just deserves to be forever remembered by this town. As a permanent memorial to Shiloh, we planted a tree for him because it's just continually going to grow, it's going to change as he would have done. So one of the reasons why we selected this tree is because it's an evergreen, so it's almost like a symbol of eternity. So yeah, it's just the tree we planted for, for Shiloh. When we first got Chewy, we decided that we'd actually teach him to do CPR on one of our other dogs, just purely as a trick. And that actually proved quite useful, probably coming up for about two years ago now, where he effectively saved my husband's life. Right, so quite advanced multiple sclerosis, he's wheelchair bound, struggles very much with his speech now, but it's almost like he's found a way to communicate with Chewie and Chewie's found a way to communicate with him. He's always got one eye on Ray and what Ray's doing. It's just like he's his soulmate. I was actually out in the garden. The two bigger dogs were upstairs. He was with Ray. I've heard him barking, and his barking got more and more frantic. Luckily, the, the French doors were open. I think if the, the doors had been shut, um, I probably wouldn't have heard him. I've come into the house, and Chewie was licking his face, jumping on his chest, licking his face, and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, just, just what's going on? Ray had actually stopped breathing, and then suddenly his heart stopped. I managed to get him onto the floor, did some CPR on him while talking to a, a, an ambulance crew, and Chewie never left his side. It was almost like he was making sure that I was doing everything right. And every day that passes now, I, I just thank whatever's upstairs that we've got him, because without him, I wouldn't have my husband. We're celebrating 30 years of marriage this year, and it's all thanks to this little guy. Sorry. With Chewie, apart from what he did for, for Ray, he's just such a special little soul. You know, his life could have been so much different. His life could have been so tragic. He's just had such a huge impact on both our lives. It's, it's just amazing. It's obviously hard as a parent to see your child in pain. Ruby would actually go on Olivia's bed and tuck herself into where Olivia's pain were. And that would probably be the only time when she would actually settle and feel a bit more relaxed. I think without Ruby, we would have you know, struggled even more to, to see Olivia suffer like she did. Olivia's got cerebral palsy, she's non-verbal, but even though she's non-verbal, she has a wicked sense of humour. She's laughing at me now. <laughs> as soon as we got Ruby, she immediately went straight underneath Olivia's wheelchair. In fact, when she were a puppy, she used to actually be on Olivia's knee uh, in the wheelchair. So yeah, the bond was from the beginning, from when she was a puppy. I think without Ruby, I think there'd be a big void in Olivia's life. She does play a massive part in Olivia's life. She gives them more confidence. The during COVID, she's been a fantastic companion for her. She helps her with a physio. She's not a trained therapy dog, but she does do quite a lot of therapies with Olivia through play and a physiotherapy, like with Olivia's athletic movements. Um, she seems to be able to make her quite still. She just uh, assists her where she, where she can and I think she gives her a lot of emotional, emotional support as well. Stretch your arms up, stretch both arms up in the air. 
Olivia likes the cuddles because she gets to go. She, she gets to give Ruby a proper cuddle in this this way. Mm. Don't you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia just loves it. She just loves her, um, the affection. I think with Ruby, she's just got a bond uh, uh, that just can't be broken, really. Uh, because of Ruby, we're able to get outside in the fresh air and throw a few balls or go for a walk. It's difficult for her to interact in some ways, um, but just finding little ways that you can uh, get her involved uh, and playing with, uh, with Ruby is a, is a great way of doing that. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's been really good for Olivia. Olivia's sort of um, health and well-being really, just having Ruby around and being able to get out of the house. Does she enjoy it, don't you? Mm -hmm. We're not always able to do things that other families can do, but Ruby brings a lot to the family and she's just made family life and Olivia's life complete really, so in our eyes she's, she, she's a hero. Everyone loves Simba. He's either bouncing off the walls or he's asleep. He is a very, very friendly dog. He loves people. There's not many dogs like him in the country. We're a very small team that supports all of the London Fire Brigade. Our job is to investigate fires to determine their cause and origin, and we have our dogs to support us. Simba's an English Springer Spaniel. We got him when he was uh, a year old. I picked him up in Birmingham, and the very next day we went to work. He was very much part of the fire brigade from that point on. They have a number of qualities that are absolutely vital to what we do. The dogs themselves are known as a hydrocarbon detector dog. They are looking for the presence of ignitable liquids and solids. The dogs, with their keen sense of smell, can identify that rapidly. So we have a wooden stirring stick, so he'll put a little bit of paraffin on the stick and then I'll go and hide it. And Simba's job is to find it. Even if I place it down, he's seen where it's been put, he will still use his nose to look for it. So he was trust his nose first. The best part of the search is not finding it, it's the searching for it. If you look at his tail, when he's searching, that's when it's moving the fastest. So the rule of a dog's tail never lies, always applies. And as soon as he finds it, he gives you the ball back and he wants to go find the next one. He always amazes me still sometimes when I think, oh, it's gonna take us a few minutes to do this. And within seconds, Simba's found it. He's a very, very unique dog. What Simba's in now, is mainly what he'd wear in a fire. So these are boots to protect his paws from sharps. They're not fireproof because he doesn't go into a hot fire scene, but it's important that his paws are safe from kind of metal or broken glass. We go absolutely everywhere together. So we genuinely are a team. We're on duty half the time and then are available in case there's an incident. Whenever we're working, I don't really need to tell Simba what to do because he's already second guessed. He also uh, works as a bit of an unofficial therapy dog as well. Some of the work we do may not be particularly pleasant and the one great thing that he does, he actually supports our other fire investigators. He's always there, he's, he's genuinely one of the team. He's emotionally intelligent as well, so um, I always like telling the story of Simba's first shout and we were called to investigate an arson. He did indicate a number of areas where an accelerant had been used. The sad thing was the owner of the house, she was pregnant. She was really, really upset. But Simba's mood changed immediately. He went from being really excited to really calm. He went straight over to her, laid his head on her lap, and he allowed her to stroke him for, I think it was nearly 20 minutes. At the most serious of incidents, he does really calm people down. 
Simba is the perfect dog for the role. You've heard the term, if you find a, a job you love, you'll never work another day in your life. He's got a job that he loves. Every dog's a hero, but the only difference is that Simba's been given the opportunity to do a really important job, and that's what makes him a hero. We're not heroes. I help people in my job, I help people doing this. We're not heroes. My name is Peter Lewin. I'm a paramedic for East Midlands Ambulance Service. I also run Pete Lewin Newfoundlands. We take people swimming in open water with the dogs for emotional support. This is Bob. Bob is our non-swimmer. Uh, Bob is our mascot dog. Storm, he's very needy. Sonar, he'll swim his heart out for you. And Walker, he's been given to us by the American Foundation for prevention of suicide. We'll have a bit of a swim across, like normal. We get the guys to swim out with us, and I'll call one of the dogs out. Come on. Say sonar, and all you can hear is sonar blowing out of his nose as he's swimming by. It's just peace and quiet and takes you away from the stress of everything that we go through. We've been doing a lot of work this last summer with the East Midlands Ambulance Service. As you can imagine, it's been quite a tough time for all of us. It's okay not to be okay. And who helps those that are helping the others? Not just paramedics and ambulance staff, but the nurses, everybody else. Who's there to help them? I did a staff wellbeing day here when I did the quiet swim. I got extremely emotional when I finished it, I cried. And then Sonar just sat with me for the whole day then. Just give me a little nudge every now and again. When you're in the water, you just get that element of, it makes you just feel great. You see, we were never ever gonna get used for real rescue in this country, unfortunately. And I sort of developed different maneuvers for getting people out of the water. But these moves are not just for real rescue. These are great for emotional support because as I've got that person in that hold, it's given that confidence that somebody's there for them. We are physically rescuing them, but it's more so mentally rescuing them. There's three people around that will tell you that they're here today because of swimming with these, which is an amazing, an amazing thing to do. I go into schools and I do water safety workshops the girl who helped me with that from the start, she absolutely loved it. We're having a discussion around at her house about what we're going to do. She says to me, do you remember I was late coming to give you a hand with your training session? I says, yeah, I do. And she says, well, I was going to take an overdose that day. But I decided I'd go and help you out because of the dogs and that. And she said it was his eyes, the way they look at you. He wasn't there to judge. He wasn't there to criticise, condemn or anything. All he wanted to do was come out and take me back to shore. I said, that was it. And she's still here today because of that swim. And I just thought, yeah, that's pretty powerful. It makes me feel proud passionate about what we're doing, proud of the team, proud of these boys. To have that ability to help people, it's just amazing. My pets are helping these people, it's amazing.
to, we've seen some horrendous pictures over the last 14 days to our dear friends in the Ukraine. The Kennel Club Charitable Trust and the Kennel Club are asking you to generate, to donate as generously as you can. We know that times are terribly, terribly hard. But it is the Crofts appeal for dogs and their owners in the Ukraine. And we are fundraising to help dogs during this uh, humanitarian crisis. You can donate via the Kennel Club Charitable Trust dot org forward slash support hyphen dogs forward slash Ukraine. It is managed by the Kennel Club Charitable Trust and they uh, started with a donation of £25,000. That, that was matched by a donation from the Kennel Club of £25,000. Yesterday, here at Crufts, over £3,500 was raised. And all the money is going to the FCI, the International Canine Federation, who are managing it because they're very close to the borders of Eastern Europe. And uh, tomorrow we will hear from their president just exactly how the money is being spent. So we know that times are very, very hard, but please do give as much as you are able to afford. The Kennel Club Charitable Trust.org support hyphen dogs Ukraine. Thank you very much, and I'm sure that we all want to give them our heartfelt feelings and our heartfelt thanks. So please, get, let's have a round of applause for all our dear friends in the Ukraine. May we ask you now to please stand for the national anthem. back. It really is. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, it's day two of the world's greatest dog show. Good evening and welcome to Crofts 2022.
single dog has its day. Good evening and welcome to Crafts 2022. It is fabulous Friday and what a fabulous evening it is tonight. Of course, we're going to start with agility. And uh, Nigel Davis and Kate Smith will be here to take you through that. Then, thanks so much to Agria and to Jim Rosenthal and Graham Partridge welcoming you back to the main arena at Crufts at the NEC in Birmingham. And what a competition we have ahead of us here. The final of the Crufts singles three-part competition that we have had here. We enjoy the jumping in the morning. We've had the agility this afternoon. Now we're all set for the best of the best in the final. And the best of the combined scores have made it through and they will be running in reverse order. Graham, you're tingling about this one, my friend. I am, and it's not just because I've been sat down too long, Jim. It, uh, <laughs> it promises to be a fantastic competition. It is one of the most prestigious competitions that we hold at Crufts, although they, they are all prestigious. This one uh, is one of the ones that these guys want to win, and we are about to see some of the best of the best of British agility, um, and we just hope it's going to be a great competition. And I'm sure it will be. The start of the evening programme here at Crufts. Here comes Hannah Banks, our agility judge, been competing since the late 90s, judging since the early 2000s. Absolute honour and a privilege, says Hannah, to be asked to judge at Crufts. Very good at her job, she is too. We're going to start off with the, the small dogs. Four of them to go. And we're looking at Blink, tremendous little performer. Lauren Langman from Oakhampton, first in the agility this afternoon. Away they go. Get Graham's view on the course when he's seen Blink go round. Who's really quick, has been prone to the odd mistake. Eight years of age now, the working cocker. But this is really good and it's clear and it's less than 15 seconds on the clock as well. Blink, always a spectacular sight going through the weeds. Up on that far side to the tunnel. Tight turn, twists again. There's the seesaw is there. Good contact at the end of the seesaw and hops over that final jump. 32.4 and clear. That has set the standard. Lauren and Blink, Graham. Yes, it has. Uh, this was always a course that was going to suit Lauren and Blink. Uh, big, open, progressive course. Um, and uh, that, as you say, has set the standard. Katrina Hands and Sizzle. Great pairing this. They won the British Open on day one. Runners up in the championships, third in the agility this afternoon. In form, Katrina Sizzle, the four year old Shetland Sheepdog. A wonderful sight running around the green carpet and negotiating the agility here at Crufts. Up and down over the A frame. Turning around that IAMS jump as well through the tunnel at the far end of the course. That's how you do it, through the weeds, hardly flickering with those poles up again, through the tunnel at the top of the course, That's such a tight little left-hander that. This is really good, we, what we told you, it will be a bit of a hesitation at the end of the seesaw. Oh, and there is the finale, 32.9, and that second place, just that slight hesitation costing Graham. It was half a second between first and second now, this is uh, really starting to build up. Uh, can anybody beat Lauren and Blink? Next to try, Winnie, eight-year-old cross cockapoo from Cardiff. Charlotte Wilkinson, only one more dog after this, aiming for 32.4 and clear. And I don't somehow think with the early thoughts that Winnie will be quite quick enough, but we shall see. Not the first time I've been wrong. Very clear and concise over the A-frame. Round the IAMS jump. And it's very clean and really good. It's just lacking a, a little bit of pace, understandably so. Over the U move jump at the top of the course there now. And round we come. Seesaw. And finishes. And yet, a little bit lacking on the time side, but a clear round, third place. Well done, now she comes down the dog walk, makes the white bit, yep, not a difficult decision for the judge there. And again for the seesaw, must be on the ground before the dog gets off it, and very nicely done. Last dog, Alan Bray, Tiquito, shiny collar. 
for Tikita. Seven years of old, working cock, seven years of age, a working cock, a second in the agility, won the jumping. And Alan Bray, a handler who has that great ability to come to the board at exactly the right time. Remember the time to beat 32.4 seconds and clear. It's right up there at the moment. Tikita, the working cocker, and Alan Bray through the weaves as well it's still clean the time is still really good will it be good enough that's the question oh a little little stumble there it's going to be really really close this oh but right at the end right at the end Takita unfortunate blemish on the round from Takita and Alan Bray just when things were going so well well done Alan well done Takita such a shame I mean I think Oh, I like Alan, thought he had it, you know, it was going to be really, really tight, and the dog just never even acknowledged that the seesaw was there. Inexplicable, I think, is probably the word. Well, so if you can't understand it, him, nobody can. No, Graham, well, and I don't think sure. Alan can. He's looking at him and saying, what did you do? <laughs> what did Look. you do? I still love you, he says. <laughs> so, Lauren Langman and Blink, popular winner. Katrina Hands and Sizzle, second place. Charlotte Wilkinson and Winnie close out the top three. First of four medium dogs. They're getting set for. And Maggie May, the Patterdale working terrier, terrier and hound day today here at Cruft. Gareth Colonel, the handler. First of the four medium dogs. And off he goes. A fairly straightforward start over the arms, jump into the tunnel. Now he's up and over the dog walk. Oh, yes, missed that down. It's a nice, quick run round now over the A frame, over the wall. Now they've got to get them through between that gap. So they do the backside of the I am jump. They come out of there. They've got to pick up the weaving poles. Nicely done. So just running up with 10 faults at the moment. Missed the A frame contact as well. And now, unfortunately, they picked Mr. Weaving Pole, so they get five folks for that. You only get one lot of five folks within the Weaving Poles. Turn now through the tunnel. They've got to get a really nice tight turn around here, which he does. And a run for home. Got to steady up just for the seesaw. This is the control part of it. Nicely done. Well done, Gareth. Unlucky. 15 folks there in a time of 44.073. This is Maggie, just two years of age, Colley Cross Miniature Poodle. Liz Carpenter, the handler, from Manningford in the West Country in Wiltshire. Third in the agility, these two. What have we got in store here? It's a noisy, quick, committed start as well. Really rapid over that dog walk, brilliant stuff. But picking up a fault right at the end of it, what a shame. Over the I am, so fast, so committed. Tremendous speed. Will it be accurate, Maggie? What a promising dog this is at just two years of age. Great pace, great commitment. Right up there with the clock. Oh, that's fantastic. Slow down on that. Touch at the end. Brilliant. Absolutely terrific. What a shame about those five faults. 30 seconds. A tremendous time, Graham. It was. I think she just panicked a little bit and just pushed the dog just that little bit too much, but she didn't need to. The overall ground speed of that dog is just phenomenal. And at two years of age, I guarantee you we're going to see this dog again at Cross. One to go after this one, it is Ashley Butler and Eliza, the eight-year-old bearded collie, third in the jumping, these two. Delighted to see that Ashley is working with us on the television coverage as well. Great to have her inside on things, but now doing really what she does best. Fantastic handler, Ashley Butler, and this is really good so far over the IAMS jump. Beautiful clearance from Eliza on that one. In and out of the tunnel in the blink of an eye. Good style through the weaves as well. Turning towards the far end of the course. Now that tight left handler as well. This will be really good. This will threaten it. It might be the best as well. It's clear. It's 31.9 for Ashley Butler and Eliza. And number one with one to go. 
There's always a difficult decision there for Ashley. She knew she had to put in a really good round because she knows that she's got James Adams coming up behind her. So does she go for it? Does she not? We told you it was going to be good. It's building to a terrific climax here. James Adams already a big winner here at Crofts with Willow. Working Cocker Spaniel, six years of age. First in the jumping, first in the agility. Going for a hat-trick here. Time to beat 31.9 and clear. These two can do it, don't worry about that. Great speed, good contact at the end of the dog walk. Terrific pace, terrific accuracy as well. Terrific appetite from Willow. Right up with the clock as well. Just under 15 seconds now. How about those weaves? Faultless through there. Keep an eye on the clock at the bottom of the screen. 31.9 is the time to beat, and I think they're going to do it. It all goes well at the top there. It's going to go well at the top there, and they have... Smashed it. Smashed it. They have smashed it. There was a gasp in the crowd. I thought there might have been a late stumble at the end. But I called it right, and they have beaten it. And James Adams and Willow, a multiple winner at Crufts. Just take my hat off to this guy uh, and his partnership. They've, uh, they really have been so consistent over the last couple of days. As I say, just love it, love it, love it. Confirmation then, James Adams and Willow. Number one, Ashley Butler. Ashley Butler, a fine round from Ashley, just a fraction of a second, a second or so slower than James. Liz Carpenter in the top three, and we will round off the complete result for you as well. First of the intermediate dogs. Stephen Seal first in the jumping. With Fleck, Border Collie from Leicester. Really proud that Fleck has qualified for Crufts. First of five intermediate dogs, this. Stephen Seal and Fleck. Bit of hesitation at the end of the dog walk. Still in good order. A-frame good. Yep, Steve knows he's got to go for it. We've got some very quick, evenly matched dogs uh, out of the five that are coming in. So he's got to go first. He's got to make a decision. Do I go for it and risk it? Or do I put in a steady one and hope that everybody else makes some mistakes? But he's doing fantastically well at the moment. Can he make the seesaw? Yes, he can. Over the jump. Oh, what a great time. 30.494 for Steve Seal. 30.494 for Steve Seal and Fleck. And a clear one, too. There was a horrible moment when they faced each other at the far end of the course, but all well in the end. Full of enthusiasm, the dog having an absolutely fantastic time. Finishes and says, where's my toy? Sean Ellingworth and Image. Very successful over the years. Ten this month, the Border Collie. Likely to be Image's last. Crops. Oh, I thought they missed the end of the dog walk. Missed the contact point there. What about the A-frame? Yes, safely made that contact. Tight left-hander over the irons into that tunnel. Not, doesn't stay long in there. Good entry from the right-hand side into the weaves. Tail flapping. Trying to make up time. It's really quick. Shame about those four. Climax of the round. Finale. Seesaw is good. And over the Kennel Club jump at the end. Very, very tidy. 31.3. Second place. Very tidy. The dog's 10 now. She knows she's got to push. And then, unfortunately, that's probably one of the easiest decisions that Hannah Banks is going to have to make today. Missed that by a mile, that one. Gamble, Border Collie, four years of age. Handler Stephen Richardson in really good form. Runners up in the jumping. Looking to be around the 32nd mark and clear. Flying over the dog walk contact at the end as well. Quickest start to a round that we have seen so far. Really sprinting between the obstacles. That's good speed through the weaves as well. Excellent this from Gamble and Stephen Richardson. Clock ticking away. It could well be inside 30 this. Sprint towards the end. It is indeed 29.9 for Stephen Richardson and Gamble. Number one at the moment. He just went for it. I mean, hats off to him. He took the risk, took the chance, and he just went for it. Brilliant. Well deserved.
Zing, the border collie, six years of age. The handler is Alan Wildman. He's been in good form over the last couple of days. He'll need to be in good form here, third in the agility. The time to beat 29.9. There's no time for dawdling here, and Zing, the border collie, is not hanging around either. Great contact at the end of the A-frame. Really good, this, from Zing. They're not going to fail wondering here, that is for sure. They're giving this an absolute crack, Alan Wildman and Zing. Well up with the clock as well, into that tunnel. Tight left-hand turn, need a big finish here, need the biggest finish of all, really, here. Will they do it? Will they do it? 29.952, they have done it! They've nicked number one! Amazing! Oh, dear, my word, two-tenths of a second, something like that, Jim. 29.952 plays 29.978. That is close. Well, great, great admiration to him. Look at him. He knows. He knows. Last dog, Natasha Wise, world champion with Pebbles, nine-year-old border collie, agility winner, third in the jumping. Got to get in the 29s, got to keep it clean, got to keep it clear, and they're going to have a real good go at it. This is absolutely thrilling agility that we're seeing here on the second day of Crufts 2022. Brilliant so far, this, from Pebbles. No time to lose, tight right-hander through the tunnel. Over that jump, twisting on the left, the left-hander as well. It's going to be very close, it's going to be a blink of a second for Pebbles and the tension. It's so close, 29.2! Get on in! Fantastic! Oh, the last dog takes it. They deserve to celebrate there. Natasha Wise and Pebbles, what a performance right at the end in the 29s. Three of them in the 29 seconds. Divided by a blink of an eye, Graham. Absolutely outstanding. Amazing. It's, it's not often I, uh, I'm struggling for words, but my admiration for, for all three, um, and, and especially Natasha, she's tremendously experienced. She's just made up her mind that she was going to go for it. And um, I, I think the top three just hats off. Congratulations, guys. Best agility I've seen for a while. Well, Natasha, what an absolutely incredible performance that was. We can see from the smile of your face what it meant to you. The audience here are going crazy. How was it? Oh, she's just amazing. Um, the course was favoured us. It's a good speed course. Um, I risked the dog walk then. I have a stop dog walk. I chose the running dog walk, and it came to good. So I was so, so pleased with her. She's one in a million. Thank you. Can we talk about Pebbles for just a second? What does this incredible dog mean to you? Oh, just the world. Um, her eye is fun. She likes to watch lots of things, so it keeps me on my toes. Uh, but she works her heart out for me. I'm so, so proud of her. Well, we all thought it was absolutely fantastic. Crofts made a minute of a massive round of applause for Pebbles and Natasha. Well, they had so much of those interviews from uh, Radzi out there. Had so much and great images of Pebbles. And well done, Natasha. What a victory that was. So close, those top three, Natasha, Alan Wildman and Stephen Richardson, all in the 29, Stephen Seal fourth, and Sean Illingworth in the top five. Brilliant competition. First of the five large dogs now. This could be great as well. We're looking at Nara Cuddy and Lemon in great form. Winners of the agility, five-year-old Border Collie, and quickly into their work. And great pace here as well. Good contact at the end of the A-frame. Excellent over the uh, IAMS jump there. Weaves not causing a problem. This is a good time, and it is faultless thus far. Have to turn sharp left. Here's the finale coming up. And this is good, this is good, and this is in the 29s as well. I think we're seeing now you've got to be under 30 seconds. To triumph here and a real great start to this competition, Graham. Definitely. Um, Nara's the, uh, Nara is uh, in form at the moment, she really is, but we've got some fantastic dogs to come, and here comes another one now, Jim. Yep, that is uh, Fernie Nigella and Shannon Springford, winners of the jumping. Uh, you might remember if you're with our coverage uh, on Thursday, Shannon competed on Thursday with Gift, four year old Border Collie. 
A flying start from Fernie Nigella flying over the dog wall too. My goodness me, there's some pace out there at the moment. Go on, Graham. Oh, well, I'm not sure if I can, really. I'm just so engrossed in this. It's amazing. They're all just going for it. I mean, that's the only word to say. Look at that. In and out of those women poles in a flat. Now she wants to really t have a tight turn here, but she's got to just tip the seesaw. Just steady the dog up. Steady it up. Yes, oh, well done. Oh, amazing. Into the 28th. Into the... 28. Well, I don't know about steadying the dog up there. That dog, Fernie Nigella, outstanding and brilliantly handled by Shannon Springfield. Shannon Springfield as well. Applause from Hannah Banks, our judge, deserve it, and from everybody around the arena too. This is Snooze, the Border Collie, Martin Reed, the handler. And they know, they know they're going to have to be very quick, very accurate. And they started off well too. Martin trying to get a bit of extra pace there, out of smooth. Can't hang around, can't make a mistake. This is a really compelling and unforgiving competition that we're seeing here. No time lost going to the top. Tight left-hander for the finish. It's going to be a very good time, this as well, for Martin and for Snooze. Right the way through to the end, 29.8. And that's third place, would you believe? 29.8. Any, any other day, that could easily have won this competition. Um, you've got to feel a little bit sorry for Martin. Uh, but uh, at the moment, you know, I mean, what can he do? He did his best. Agent is ready to go. Sean Illingworth, third in the agility. Sean Illingworth, third in the agility of these two. Six year up, 28s and 29s the time and clear for the top three. And you know that Sean won't take any prisoners either. Here we go, come on. Running dog walk, yes. You've got to have a running dog walk these days to get in these positions. Up and over the A-frame. Now she's got to get the dog through the gap, round the back of the IAMS jump, and she'll turn right-handed now into the tunnel. Got to get the dog focused on the weaving pole so it picks it up. Nicely done. Sharp right turn into the tunnel. Yes, now looking for a sharp turn here. Brilliant. Come on, Sharp, move. This is good. This is really good, you know. This could be the best of the lot. 28, 29.5. 29.5 it's it's good but it's only good enough for third place such a tremendous round from Sean Illingworth and agent brilliant look at those pictures going through the weeds flat out last to go young dog this Dalton Meredith and Clippy three-year-old at Border Collie First time at Croft, second in the jumping and the agility. A huge task in front of the three-year-old Clippy. What speed that is over the dog walk. Now, this has been the quickest opening 10 seconds, I think. Can Clippy maintain that? Can she maintain it? Crashing through the tunnel, great sound effects there. Great images going through the weaves as well. Up in that tunnel on the far side. It's going to have to be a tight turn. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 0. Oh, so close, so close. 29 dead, second place. What a competition. We told him it was going to be good. I didn't expect this, Graham, I'll be honest with you. No, I did. I, I mean, it's only Saturday, Jim, and I think I've almost peaked already with excitement. <laughs> I just... I got news for you, pal. It's Friday. You have peaked with excitement. Oh, I'm, I'm that excited about what we've just seen and what, what we're showing to the uh, to the public at large. <laughs> just, I just absolutely cannot believe it. Hats off. But we should just very quickly mention Hannah Banks' great course allowed us to see dogs at their best. Here's the result, then. Look at that. 28, 29, 29, 29, 29. It's a shame to pick a winner, almost. Shannon Springford picking the winner on this Friday afternoon.
So here we are. The presentations are probably one of the most exciting Croft singles competitions that I've been my pleasure to to witness. Really, really first class. Uh, what's been going on here? So really, really brilliant. So to present the awards, we've got Mr. John Howie from Umu, who's the sponsor of the Agility. And here we are, Lauren Langman in first place. So very thank well you. done to her. Uh, that one? <laughs> thank you, this one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the runner up is Katrina Hands. And, set and the runner up was Katrina Hands. Very exciting final again for the smalls. Always going to be difficult to beat Blink on that type of course. Very quick. And Sarah, Sarah Pilkington is in third place. Well done to her. of the cross singles medium final is James Adams and agility and champion the winner Devin James of the Goldstand. medium is James Adams well done James he's had an absolutely fantastic couple of days here cheers thank you and the runner up Ashley Butler and the runner up was after a very closely fought competition Ashley Butler so well done to her fantastic competition and third place is Liz Carpenter with mostly and then Maggie. Liz Carpenter in third place. She's very, very pleased competing there in uh, blue and yellow. And the winner of the intermediate Moving into final the intermediate, and as I say, probably had to be the uh, final Ned today for me. Very well deserved. Natasha Wise picking up first place there. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant competition. Alan and Alan Wildman, you can see the smile on his face, very pleased with his uh, what's gone on. And in third place, and third place Stephen was Stephen Richardson. Gave it everything, did the best he could. And I say, any other day, any of the uh, the next few people could have won these competitions. And coming on to our large final of the cross singles, the winner, Shannon Springford, with customer love, is gifted at Shannon Andrew. Springford. Winning the large, absolutely fantastic. Look at her. She is. A, a, she's not smiling as much, but she, I think she's really, really emotional about the weekend that she's had here. And very closely followed by Dalton Meredith. Fantastic performance by all of these. I say, my hats off. Admiration. And uh, great respect to all of them. And Nara Cuddy was third. Who'd have put money on Nara Cuddy finishing third? But it was that tight. It really was. What a brilliant, brilliant competition it's been. I hope you've all enjoyed it at home. Um, it, it really has been and great entertainment. Lap of honour time. And there we go for a very, very well-deserved lap of honour. Hope you've enjoyed it, and we're going to see you tomorrow for some more absolutely fantastic agility. Protect your bond with a lifetime policy from Agria Pet Insurance. Awarded the UK's most trusted pet insurer. And ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the final of the Kennel Club Breeders' Competition. Promoted by the Kennel Club and sponsored by Agria Pet Insurance in association with our dogs. This year, the Croft Breeders' Con Competition comprises of a maximum of 40 breeders' teams and has been run on a point system whereby all qualifiers have been accumulating points throughout the year at the United Kingdom's general and group championship shows. Today we have the top point scorers competing for the overall winner of this Kennel Club competition. However, due to late withdrawals, there'll be 34 teams. So before our breeders team finalists enter the main ring, it is my pleasure to introduce the judge for the grand final of this competition. 
one of the United Kingdom's well-known judges who has enjoyed much success with breeding and showing his jasmine pointers, basenji, and bull mastiffs. He has a long experience of judging breeds and it has judged all over the world and extensively throughout the United Kingdom. He is a long-serving member of the Kennel Club Board, Secretary of Richmond Dog Show, and Chairman of the Kennel Club Judges Committee. He's approved to award challenge certificates in 69 breeds across five groups, and he's, of course, a championship group and best in show judge. So please give a very warm welcome to Dr. Ron James. Escorted into the ring by Mr. Tony Alcock, MBE, Chairman of the Kennel Club. And now, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, and a very warm welcome to the Kennel Club Breeders' Competition breeding Final. Now, this, if you haven't seen it before, is a real spectacle coming to you live from the main arena here at Crufts 2022. Now, I'm joined in the commentary box by Frank Kane. Frank, tell us a little bit about what we're going to see. Well, it's one of the most prestigious prizes for breeders. It's to show that their, their evenness and quality throughout their breeding stock. So we'll see breeders with teams of four dogs, which they've bred, coming in. The judge will be assessing them for not only breed type and quality, but for evenness, homogeneity um, across the group. So first in, we have the Newfoundlands. And second, the Acne Canadian Eskimo dogs. And now from the pastoral group, the Australian Shepherd Dog. And coming in now, a very, very good-looking team of Australian Shepherds. Blue Merles and a Tricolor are there. Followed by the They're Belgian followed Shepherd in dog by the Belgian Shepherd Dog, Gronendal, also from the pastoral group. And now the breeders' team of Border Collie. Now, big cheers, I think, for the Border Collies. We've seen them working very successful, and here they are from the Goitra Kennel. Famous kennel, been Followed very successful the in the breed. Pyrian, Pyrian Next in, dogs. we have the Pyrenean Mountain Dogs. The Liz Jovia kennel, and three of them there. And also from the pastoral group, the Swedish Valhund. Another from the pastoral group, the Swedish Valhunds. The Eriks Fjord kennel of Miss Stewart, Miss Patterson. And now we move to the Terrier group. Please welcome. Now we're the moving Irish on terriers. to the representatives from the Terrier group. Here we have the Holbam Irish Terriers. A rather sedate pace coming across the ring. The evenness of, is the only colour in which the Irish Terriers appear, this rich red colour. The here's terriers. the smooth coated, the Manchester Terriers. So they are Mr. and Mrs. Knight's Talonors. And they look like peas in a pod, don't they? And that's one of the things that you want it, the evenness in type. Oh, wonderful outfits here. So these are the Parson Russell Terriers, Mr. and Mrs. Newport. The and here comes the, the black Scotties, the, the tartan sashes on their handlers. Well, the the outfits terriers. are one of the treats, aren't they, here? And we've got the soft coated Wheaton Terriers bringing the glitz and glamour. Now we move to the hound group. Please welcome the Bassett, Gritton, Bondion, There's a lot Petit. of glitter there, isn't there? <laughs> yes, and here's it's something <laughs> more working like the Petit Bassett, Griffin, Vaudienne. So these are our Still first representatives from the house. And don't they look smart and very even indeed. Look at them, all the same shape, and so are these. This is a clever combination. Red miniature smooth Dachshunds contrasting with the, uh, the outfits of the handlers It's there. not often we talk about fashion here, but that is a lovely match. <laughs> <laughs> Something a little bit bigger now. We might have a slight run in here. Here we've got the deer hounds. These are the Patway hounds. From this group, the Rhodesian Ridgebacks. And here, striding in the Rhodesian Ridgebacks. And now we move to the utility group. So moving on, we've got the utility the group. First in, instantly recognisable, we have this team of Dalmatians. And these come from Northumberland, Mr and Mrs Pearson with the Calevra. They're followed by the German Dalmatians. Spitzmittel. So these are being followed in by the German Spitzmittel, also from the utility group. And the breeders team A group of, of sable-coloured, identical in type and so are, the, so are the handlers actually and look at this a more it's a scottish the miniature poodle must have some scottish loyalty from these breeders for the japanese shiba inu i hope he has something under that kilt that's all i've got to say <laughs> here we have the miniature poodles There's coming a in the a group of brands yes. so first from the toy group here these are the cotton de tulier and we welcome the pomeranians 
Now, look at these Pomeranians coming in. They look like little Jaffas on legs, don't they? Here they come. They are beautiful, aren't they? And the next group we see Taking are the Pugs. their time. So here we have the Pugs. A very smart now, selection from uh, Mrs. Storey's Rodenash. A lot she of champions in the breed for this game. And again, some lovely matching jackets coming in there. So we're moving on to our gun dogs. First of our gun dogs is these Hungarian Vizlas. And that's the Vizlania kennel of Mr. and Mrs. Chalice. And another group of Hungarian Vizlas is coming They're in now. The ring by Mr. and Mrs. Sutherland's Kamlocken kennel. Followed by the 10 shilling pointers, owned by Mrs. O'Neill. And they're worth more than 10 now, shillings. They <laughs> always have lovely quality. I don't know what here, that is, Frank. Not, not a clue. <laughs> and here, the flat coated Next retrievers. Is the smart group there. Jenny Griffiths there leading her team in. Always popular here, we have the Labrador retrievers. And in comes the first team of Nova Scotia top tolling retrievers. And there, the Nova Scotia duck tolling retrievers, the very smart red and white dogs, those little white feet, how even they look, absolutely. Well, it looks like they're going to keep coming, because we've got three yeah, groups three of them. Groups of them. <laughs> they're, they're gaining lots of popularity, they're a lovely breed. So this is our final group of duck tollers. And they're followed by the team of Welsh Springer Spaniels. And here come some very stylish Welsh Springer Spaniels. Very colourful jackets, but the, the dogs themselves, this lovely rich that chestnut and white. Out of the 40 that were qualified for this competition. Obviously not here so, Frank, reason. these dogs have got here by qualifying and accruing points, haven't they? Yes, uh, yes the qualifying heats at general so championship an show and group championships good, throughout the year. They get points when they're the placed. They amass the points. This the top ones are invited to grow. And it really, there's nothing like and this, is there? It really is. Since it was introduced, it really is a spectacle. Yes, and I mean, uh, how many dogs do you think there are in this? About 150 dogs in the big ring at the moment. The most that you're ever going to have at one time, probably. Marvellous spectacle. So our judge for this is Dr. Ron James. Um, he's really well known, isn't he, Frank? Well, he's a famous breeder of pointers, the Jasmine pointers. He's also in Basenji's. He's judged the Gundog group at Crufts before, and he uh, judges a lot of breeds. That's Dr. Ron James, a veterinary by profession, yes? So he will have looked at these dogs and prejudged them, won't he? Because this is a big job yes. to do. And we would stress that the handler's outfits have nothing to do with the placing. The judge is looking at the dogs. He's looking at them for the quality in their breed type. He'll have looked at them as a little team and also that they're even. There's, there's no mismatches amongst them. They're all of the same type, same shape and all moving well. So although the outfits are nice, they aren't to detract from the dogs, which is what we're here for and what's been judged. But it helps to make a nice spectacle in this big ring. It does. It? Yes. So he'll have looked, remembering what he's seen at close quarters, the Welsh Springers, have you judged this competition, Frank? Is I it quite difficult? No. Well, it, it, I have judged it. I have judged it abroad as well. So it is. I mean, the quality is. You know, breeders are very proud of their stock and want to compete. And getting dogs, four of them, at uh, this top level is a wonderful achievement. Just going around looking at their heads and expressions for evenness. So a lot of the dogs in each team will be relatives of one another, won't they? Siblings or parents and that, That's spring. right. Siren, dam and the siblings, as you say. Now, these, these um, teams of Vizslas look very closely matched, don't they? And that marvellous set of pugs there. And the poms as well. The, the, the Avril Kothira's poms, they've been very successful. They were placed in the final last year. Just look at those. Look at that little round ball of fur on legs. It's wonderful. So alert. There's the distinctive top line of the Coton de Tulia. The curve over the top line. Brown poodles. I'm still not sure why we have tartan with the Japanese Chibrini, but... They, they must come from Scotland. They must do. Yes, <laughs> breeders from Scotland. Stuart Pearson with his uh, team of Calevra black-spotted Dalmatians. These are breeders that are responsible having striking set practice, of Rhodesian Ridgebacks. And what a, what a good impression these made, these red miniature smooths coming in.
making sure they are health checked, reared and socialised responsibly. And why, Frank, why as a breeder is it so important to have that continuity of type? Well, it's, it's what, you know, they breed to the breed standard. And, you know, you're only going to win if you get, get dogs of the highest quality. And they take pride in breeding quality dogs that not only they can win with, but other exhibitors can buy them, introduce them to the show world, and then win with them as a team. That's a wonderful achievement for a breeder in which they take great pride. Now, uh, walking down, there's those always eye-catching the Australian Shepherds, the Belgian Shepherd Dog, Gronan Dales, then there's Statuesque Pyrenean Mountain Dogs, and then there's Jovia Kennel, the workmanlike, and there's a wonderful look, that Irish, <laughs> giving him the dirty look, as they call it, in the Irish Terrier breed, yes. And these very smart black and tan Manchester, Manchester terriers, terriers and the Parson Russell, so workmanlike. So the breeds have been stood in their group, so you can, as you go around the ring, you can see the gun dogs all together. And he's going to select a shortlist now. And this will be a hard job, I can tell you, because there's a lot of good groups in here. So the Newfoundlands, they were first into the ring, so Gunners New. Yes, Gunners New Kennel. And the second of our shortlist. Mr. and Mrs. Baldock. The Liz Jovia Pyrenean Mountain Dogs. So second up we have the Pyrenean Mountain Dogs, Liz Jovia, from the Pastoral Group. And another of our There's only three of them. Some of, some of the teams have four, but it, as long as they've got a group of at least three dogs. And these are all Blaro marked. That fawn in the coat there, this biscuit coloured markings, we call that Blaro marking, yeah? Parson Russell Terriers coming in now. Diggerden, they are. <laughs> Diggerden, that's a good name for a Parson <laughs> Russell, isn't it? it? Is, yes. yes. So the next team to be selected for sure is the Dalmatians. Calabra. Those Dalmatians. Calevra. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes, right? Calevra, right? yes. Yep. From Washington. Near Newcastle. Those Coton de Tulier from the right. Toy Group. Pugs. There you are, that team of lovely pugs coming in, the Rodenash, Mr. and Mrs. Story breeders. And from the gun dog group, who's going to come from the gun dogs? The, the flat coated retrievers. The flat coated retrievers. And this is Jenny Campbell's kennel, and some of the viewers might know Jenny because she was occasionally a dragon in Dragon's Den. So ah. this is her other passion in breeding flat coated retrievers. Probably not how she made her money, just, just to guess. But she, was, she, but she was looking so forward to competing here, she'll be delighted to be in the last in the last shortcut here. And, and then we have the centre of our Nova Scotia, so that's the Usanit kennel. Using it, yes, that's right. My, my friends have a, a dog from them, and he's a most wonderful pet, Roxy Bear, they call him. Oh. And it looks like a teddy bear, yes. And there we are, who's... And there's our shortlist. What a wonderful spectacle for the people in the stadium here. Big crowd for a Friday. This arena makes a wonderful spectacle for a competition like this. It's great to have the space, isn't it? I mean, there's, there's very few places where you could get them all together. As the main ring is clear, all our breeders' teams in the shortest will remove the game by Dr. Ron James. And of course, when we get to Sunday, we'll have best in show in this arena, and that's one of the great spectacles of the dog world. There's Dr. James, deep in concentration. Now we're going to see them as a, as a group going round. Now this is where we'll get coordination and movement, right. So the first of our shortest to be seen is the Newfoundland. These are all bred today by, by Mrs. C and Mr. D. Baldock. And Come from the gunners. Now, uh, giving instructions, he's going to watch them coordinate and moving. He's going to look at the dog's rear movement as they drive away the from him. You, you Looking for firm hindquarters, using their hocks well. Nice coordinated dressage turn there. <laughs> and here they come in, he's looking at the front action there. So it's not just a sort of superficial look. We're looking for soundness and breed type and even quality. There we are. That's Claire and Darren Baldock's kennel. That's Claire yeah, Handling and Dawn Milburn, Sarah Farrell and Mandy Black in the team there. So our next group is the Pyrenean Mountain Dogs. 
just wait for those Newfoundlands to finish their slow motion running. And here we are, on to a team of three here. We have the Pyrenean Mountain Dogs. So these Pyrenean are owned by dogs, Mr. and Mrs. Holmes. Now, majestic breed. They should have, you know, some leg length. They were flock guards. They have to be imposing, but also should have some a degree of elegance in them. That's a lovely pigmentation on the faces. Been showing for <laughs> 28 years and breeding for the same. And the dogs, obviously, great friends, looking at each other. Aren't we having a good time? Are we going to yes, cause yes. some trouble? Yes. <laughs> Let's see, Jovia, Pyrenean Mountain Dog. And round they go. See the the middle dog getting the tail right over the back. That's you know, good to see. It's called making the wheel. So next to come into the centre of the ring, wonderful outfits here. We have the Parson Russell Terriers. So Diggerden, we like this name, don't we, Frank? Certainly, and they're a very successful Parsons kennel. Russell and of course, they also work their dogs, so they're really kennels. fit for function. Parson Russell, we'll they're see like the best of breed winner later in the group, but here they are, working terriers, strong skull and strong muzzle. Apparently they also compete in agility, which and is nice, good to see dogs. And they can be smooth coated and broken coated. That's a mixture of rough and smooth hair. They're the Digger Den Parson Russells. A little bit of the hunting outfit in them there, isn't there, in this, uh, their image? It is. <laughs> Striding out very smart. This is the Digger Den Parson Russell Terrier Breeders Group. Bred by Mr. and Mrs. S. Newport. So next into the centre, we have the Dalmatians. Three black spotted Dalmatians. The breed also and comes in liver spotted, but they've now. kept the, the black spotted for the identical Dalmatians. matching this here. The out they go, these carriage dogs striding out well. That's Stuart with his wife Carol in the middle and Miss Scarlett Burnside helping them to make up the team. And the dogs are Gloria, Patsy, and Guy. <laughs> yes, there we are. <laughs> Brilliant Clever. names. Dalmatians. There's a lovely move with his back one, really stretching out, striding out well. It must take a lot of practice oh, to get them coordinated the at the same pace. Can you imagine them practicing in the garden at home. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So here we have our uh, first Red selection from the toy Mr. group. This Scott. is the Cotton de Toulier. So these are owned by Mr. and Mrs. Scott. And uh, from Yorkshire, so your neck of the woods, do you yes. know them well, Frank? Uh, well, it's the Cool Cotton Kennel, and I know some of the handlers, so there's a nice picture. Smart handlers, the dogs looking very similar. The Cotton de Tullia has this rise over the loin, and then the tail carried higher. It's a single-coated breed, lots of work goes into getting the dogs look like this. They aren't a specialism of mine, to me, they really do look very identical, I've got to say. <laughs> There they go, and see the top line there, the tail carried over the back. So the Cotton de Toulier is there from the toy group. It is a long way around that ring for small legs. What do they call a group of pugs? A puggle, do you think? A puggle. <laughs> Let's, we're going to call it a puggle, look, Frank. Look That's how, what we're calling it. Look how, <laughs> look how identical oh, they mean. look, standing firm. They're dark Just masks. Like the to come round, the cottons. They're fine. And now we'll see Fawn the coats. This is <laughs> the Rodinash group And off of they pups. go. This is Cat's story, the breeder on this side. Uh, helpers for the day, Sean Hindle and Gemma Holm and Victoria Hill. They come from Oswald Twistle in Lancashire. And the pugs are called Brown Olive, Brown. Stella, Gloria, and Bertie. Story yes. <laughs> and so, pugs. And they've got a mix there, haven't they, of dogs and bitches, yes, which is nice to see. It's, it's Bertie with his harem, I think, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the pugs there from the toy group. Moving on now to our first of the shortlisted oh, gun dogs. The These are the flat-coated retrievers. And from the gun dog group, the breeders group of flat-coated retrievers. Roanvorg, they are, owned by Jenny Campbell. And Jenny's on this side, and uh, she's helped by people Campbell. who have partnerships in her dogs, and she's bred the dogs for them. 
So uh, three of them are siblings, it says here, Winnie, Wizard and Barney, and they were created the night before the first lockdown. So they probably didn't have the, the most normal start to their show careers. And of course, that that's applies to lots of dogs in the last two years. They've been to very few shows. Yeah, my own dog never oh, had a puppy I'm career. So. But these oh, very well, smart well, set, well, and the flat coats retrievers. always look beautiful under the lights Jamie, in the main yeah. arena, don't they? And, and very happy. They're, the, you know, the happiest of the retrievers, and always lashing that tail from side to side. And the next group lined up to move. The last of this shortlist. So the last of our shortlist Nova here. And here are the Nova Scotia duck tolling retrievers Kennel. of Mrs. and Miss Westwood from Wolverhampton, the Usenit Kennel. Nara, Fern, Toffee, and Harley are representing the kennel they've been 35 years breeding this and so very successful have had several champions and uh, Miss, mrs westwood has judged the breed at crufts in well, the past what a lovely Isn't even it? set no, look at the little white tips retrievers. on the tail one of the breed features white on their feet and this wonderful expression in their in their conical wedge-shaped head Brilliant a lovely breed pets aren't they as well yeah and it's the smallest of the retrievers so if you thought the labrador and the golden retrievers are a bit big for you this is a great so breed for you and great characters breeds, so a really line lovely line shortlist the there the main eight route. sets for our final Quick of the kennel the club line breeders line competition Judge this really is a really prestigious games. award to win the awards in place so our judge, Dr. Ron James, taking a look. Just for him to make that what do you think, Frank? Anything catch your well, eye? Well, I think that, uh, well, there's a lot of... Uh, it could go anywhere here. I think the, the pugs look well. The Newfoundland looks well. The Dalmatians very evenly matched and good movers. I like those cotton de Tullier. Yeah. And the Novas. I think they're all good. It's, it's a strong selection. And very even. You know, these black, these, the black silhouettes of the flat-coated retrievers looking very stylish. They're the raciest of the retrievers, so they've got these flowing lines and that lovely set of Nova Scotia duck dollars. Well, where's he going to go? Well, he's pulled in the board, so it's time. I think Judge. It's the Dr. Dalmatians. Oh, Joe Peace oh, right. and his wife with the Calabria Dalmatians win the uh, Agria Breeders' Competition here. They'll be very delighted That's with that, Calabria I can Kennel tell you. Mr. and Mrs. Pearson. Oh, there's Peterson. the Newfoundlands coming Gunners. out. The Gunners new Gunners new Mr. and Mrs. Baldock there from the working group. Down we go. The Pugs, the Rodenash Pugs in third place. And the last position's going to go to those beautiful Nova, Nova Scotia duck tolling Oh, that's retrievers. fantastic. They're using it, Nova Scotia duck tollers. They don't have far to go home tonight to Wolverhampton. And they'll be coming back, I'm sure, on Sunday and for finally, the gun dog judging. Place, the using it duck tollers, the Nova Scotia duck tolling retrievers. So again, can I ask you to show your appreciation? So there we have it, our winners. A beautiful trio of Dalmatians. Mr. and Mrs. Pearson must be absolutely thrilled. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a quick word with our winners here. The Dalmatian team, the Calibras, all the way from Newcastle. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Congratulations, Stuart. How do you feel topping that amazing competition? I was happy to be shortlisted, to be honest. It's uh, <laughs> speechless. Speechless. Yeah. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen often, his wife said. So, just tell us a little bit about this breed. Why are the Dalmatians so a fantastic dog to own, live with? They're, well, they're a clown dog. Everything's uh, different with them every, every day. You, uh, was it the, nice to live with, energetic. Uh, and you can tell I'm a Dalmatian owner because this one knows that as well. Yeah, it's yeah. jumping up at me. Yeah. Um, so what are you going to do tonight to celebrate? Uh, obviously, you're going to be showing these guys tomorrow as well. I know, so it's a bit of, bit of a mixed bag because... <laughs> As you all know, I like to party. And, uh, yeah, we do know that, Stuart. Well, many congratulations. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the Breeders' Competition, the Calibra Dalmatians. And Stuart, a little bit tongue-tied there. He's overcome by w winning the competition. Looks a bit dazed by it all. Yes, in shock. But what a wonderful achievement for them. Only small breeders keep a handful of dogs, and uh, the dogs live as house pets, so, that, you know... It takes a long time to, to breed if you have that. If they live in your house, they're pets, you know, you can't keep having litters. So to have that continuity is a real achievement. So 
So celebrations there for the Calabria team tonight. Well done, Stuart. Thank you very much. And they'll be back tomorrow, won't they, presumably, to, pre to per perform in the utility group? Yes, the utility group, group the, yes, they'll be shown tomorrow. Library classes. So not too many. But this is a good home. start to the weekend it is, for them, yes. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I think we might see a lap of honour in a moment when they collect their thoughts and their... Uh, <laughs> he looks like he doesn't want to do a lap of honour with that trophy, and I completely understand. <laughs> the dog, quite and phase, all wagging their tails. They've enjoyed this experience, haven't they? Well, for the, I mean, what we don't realise is a lot of these breeds don't get shown with other breeds, do they? So they go in the Dalmatian classes with the Dalmatians. So to be next to some new fans is quite exciting yes, as, as yes, a dog, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so enlarging their social circle. Yeah, it is. Yes, yes. <laughs> So we really do want to see those Dalmatians move, don't we? I mean, they because are carriage dogs, that's where they come alive. And that's what they're all about, judging them on the move. So. <laughs> now. So we're going to go with us to do the honor. So our audience can show their appreciation well, to the winner. Well, that's been a lovely spectacle for the well, spectators the in the arena, seeing all these teams of dogs. And there's, there's the winners, the Dalmatians. Striding out as well they should as carriage dogs. And proof that the outfits don't matter, because theirs are the most simple, probably, of all the outfits. Yeah. So those dogs really have sp spoken for themselves. And look at that, in that big ring, you can see that those long strides, very elegant in outline. They were Regency, bred in the Regency period, to run alongside horse-drawn carriages. And what a nice set. And there's the very good Newfoundlands. The lovely it's pugs. Like then to the pugs. Yeah. <laughs> And the Nova Scotia ductiling retrievers bringing up the rear. And that brings us to the end of the Kennel Club Breeders' Competition Finals. From the moment they melt your heart, through every moment of life together, protect your bond with a lifetime policy from Agria Pet Insurance, awarded the UK's most trusted pet insurer. I now hand you over to Marina White for the introduction of the Terrier Group. Thank you very much, Graham. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the judging of the first group on day two here at Crufts 2022, the Terrier Group. But before our Terrier Best of Breeds enter the main arena, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our judge. He's been involved in the dog world. Well, welcome to the first group judging of the evening here at Crufts, where we will decide who from the Terrier Group will go through to Best in Show. And later on, the Hound Group will be judged as well. Now, the Terriers have been the second most successful best-in-show winners over the years of Crufts. 
Uh, two best in show contenders have already been decided yesterday. Uh, the working group and the pastoral group, that's the Siberian Husky and Border Collie. And here comes our judge for the evening, Paul Erdley. Alongside me, Laura Crombie, who's been exhibiting dogs, of course, since you were school age. Laura, what are we going to see here in the Terry Group? I have indeed, and actually so has our judge. He started when he was seven, so even younger than I am. He's been judging since the 70s, um, and he really is a Terrier specialist. So he's had Australian Terriers, Dandy Dinmonts, so really he's going to know exactly what he's looking for as our best of breeds start to come in with this Airedale Terrier. The king of the terriers, the largest the of the terrier breeds. Terrier. Thought to have developed from native British terriers taken to Australia by 19th century settlers. The Bedlington Terrier. The distinctive outline there, lamb-like appearance of the Bedlington Terrier. The Border Terrier. A real worker, the Border Terrier. followed the in by the heavyweight of the Terrier group. This is the Bull Terrier, always really popular with the crowd here. Having a great time as he comes in there. Yeah, well. He should be on the left, but he's the not, it's fine. <laughs> First recognized as a breed in 1943. The so a breed here that's remained remarkably unchanged over the years. This is the Cairn Terrier. Full of attitude there, strutting into the ring. The Chesky is the national dog of the Czech Republic. The Dandy Dinmont Terrier. Another that's instantly recognisable. This is the Dandy Dinmont Terrier. The Smooth Fox Terrier. The Smooth Fox Terrier is the oldest of the Fox Terrier breeds. The Wire Fox Terrier. Followed him by... It's close relation, the Wire Fox Terrier. There were 53 of these here today. The Glen of the Mile Terrier. Only 22 Glen of the Mile Terriers at Crufts this year. Unfortunately, a lot of the Terriers are in the vulnerable list, um, which means that there are very few the of them registered. Irish so followed in by the Irish Terrier. The first of the Irish Terriers to receive official recognition when it became a KC breed in 1879. The Kerry Blue. It's been two best in show winners for Kerry Blue breed, 2019-79. Followed in by the Lakeland Terrier, as the name suggests, from the Lake District. The Manchester Terrier. You can guess where the Manchester Terrier originated <laughs> from as well. More of a city than a country dog. The Norfolk Terrier. Now, I love the next two. So this is the Norfolk. And Ali, I'm going to test you on whether you know the difference in a second. <laughs> the Norwich Terrier. This one's got prick ears. It has, <laughs> yes. Very good. I'm impressed. <laughs> You've taught me well. The Parson Russell Terrier. So here we have the Parson Russell Terrier. 82 of them here today. The Scottish Terrier. Now, oh, the Scottish Terrier's got such a distinctive outline. Some fans in the crowd here as well. <laughs> the Celian Terrier. Another one that's on the vulnerable list, unfortunately, but here we have the Celian Terrier, a Welsh breed. The Sky Terrier. Long body for the Sky Terrier, the longest the dog long in the group. Long everything, yeah. <laughs> Giving the floor a nice clean on the way through. The soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Here we have that distinctive golden coat of the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier. More than 300 Staffies at Crufts this year. The Welsh Terrier. Compared to just 34 of the Welsh Terrier. The West Highland White Terrier. Most recently, a best in show winner in 2016, West Highland White Terrier. I was around the ring earlier and there's some and lovely the dogs. Join us in this Jack Russell Terrier. And the final one is slightly out of order, but the Jack Russell Terrier there. One of the most recent breeds to be recognised. 
He's got a lot of fans in the arena as well tonight. Well, the judge here will have a moment to get well, the first look at what is a real variety of dogs that we've just seen across this terrier group. There is. So what links them together is that they were originally bred and used for hunting vermin. So uh, vermin of all kinds, fox, badger, rats, otters. Um, and their name comes from the Latin terra. So they go to earth, literally means earth. And we'll see some distinct features on a number of these dogs, we, which make them fit for purpose. Exactly, yeah. You'll see some very strong jaws. Um, yes, as we go through. Well, terrier type dogs have been known in the UK since ancient times. So our judge is just considering here how each of these best of breeds compares to the breed standard. So the description of the ideal dog for that specific breed. So it's a difficult job. You're trying to recall the breed standard for that individual, but then you're also comparing them to one another to decide which of them is going to be your representative. You're going to back to go through to best in show on Sunday. Majority of British or Irish through and through. So interesting fact, there's no import register representative in the Terrier group because they are mainly all native breeds, so um, from the UK and from Ireland. And many of them take a fair amount of, of work and trimming, don't they? They do. So actually a lot of them aren't trimmed, they're hand stripped. So you literally pull the coat out by hand. It sounds painful. It isn't painful, I assure you. Sounds like it would take a long time. But it does, and it, you have to keep on top of it every couple of weeks. Right, first dog to be judged in the terrier group. First terrier breeds to be seen by Paul Dudley. Comes from Yorkshire, from the Valley of Air and Walkdale, and was originally known as the Waterside Terrier. Later, the so here we have the king of the terriers, our best of breed in the Airedales. So this is the largest breed in the terrier group, and it originated in Yorkshire. It was once known as the Waterside Terrier, as it worked at riverbanks helping to tackle vermin, but it's also been used as a tracking and a messenger dog. This is two-year-old Goldie from Colchester in Essex and the judges will be looking for a straight and level back short and strong with it long powerful thighs and the those legs should carry straight forward moving freely tail carried high there that's characteristic of the breed on the move and I love this here apparently wants to be heard and is full of mischief is how the owner has described Goldie which is how a terrier should be you can see that look at look at the face got a little cheeky expression wants to cause some trouble <laughs> A hard, dense, and wiry coat, soft undercoat. Three year old Australian terrier here from Stafford, the Australian terrier, thought to have been developed from native British terriers taken to Australia by settlers in the 19th century. And they have that rather distinctive ruff around the neck. So the judge here is looking for a long head with a quite a flat skull and you can see that silky top knot there. So the neck should be slightly arched and going into a very level top line. Now on the move, I think we can see beautifully here, it should be springy, so powerful, forceful. Obviously it's a small dog and that tail again held upright. That's something you're going to see on a lot of the terriers. It's characteristic of the group. And it's the smallest breed entry in the group, only 12 here at Crufts today. Wonderfully pricked ears. So hailing from the Northumbrian mining town of Bedlington, this is the distinctive outline of the Bedlington Terrier. Now some of the key features are that distinctive arched back and the long head, which gives it a lamb-like appearance. It's excellent at getting rid of vermin, from rabbits to foxes. Its origins are debated, but it's believed to include bull terriers, otterhounds, and dandy dimmons. Those ears really are distinctive, Laura, aren't they? The, the tassels on them, what do those ears do? Why is that a breed feature? So offering some protection to the end of the ears there. And um, this one is actually a, a big winner. So came group four at Crufts last time we were here in 2020. 
three years of age and should have a springing action and we can see that in the way those legs are lifted and the top line is retained when it's on the move that can really gallop at, at quite a high speed when it gets going. Yes, that's right. It's a distinctive sort of mincing action on this one and the, the coat is described as linty and if you touch it, you would, we would be able to know what that means. But they come in blue, liver or sandy variations. This was a super entry today of 233 Just under two years old is the Border Terrier here, Nessa from Derbyshire. It's the second biggest breed entry amongst the Terrier group this year, over 230 of them. It's a highly adaptable Terrier, a real worker. The breed standard and the breed remains hugely popular in the country through its so The Border Terrier the takes its name from the borders of Scotland and Northumberland, where it was developed as a breed around 1880, and it used to help with driving foxes on hunts uh, by springing out from hiding places. And we talk about being fit for function. The breed standard says this one in its movement should seem as if it has the ability to follow a horse, so it really needs some sound yeah, and some movement for that. it's small, but it can, yes. And also, you should be able to span your, the ribs with, with your hands, which would help it when it was trying to hide and underground. Yeah, it needs some good hind quarters to help get that speed to follow horses. So here we have the heavyweight of the, the terrier group, the bull terrier. Descended from a crossing of bulldogs and the white English terrier, they were a fighting dog, bred in 19th century Birmingham. They are, this is a 15 month old bitch called Shadow, and she hails from Norfolk. Well, that unique feature is that egg shaped head. A little bit of in interest in that. The carpet, I think, there as you got going. Uh, but that dog yeah, really should have a good thrust from those hind legs. You can see that in the movement. A lot of earlier bull terriers were white, but in the 20s developed some deafness. And then there was some introduction of colour, but we've got a white one here today Just in the shadow. Just a little black marking over the eye there, but yes, it should be strong, muscular, and free and easy on the move, covering the ground with a jaunty air, which I think there, that little cock of the head, you can see that. <laughs> The miniature bull terrier was first recognised as a breed in 1943. Has never won a best in show at Crufts, but the judges will be looking for the same substance and soundness as the bull terrier, but in a smaller frame. Exactly, so that egg-shaped head, we're looking for no hollows or indentations in it, and a short back, a really a deep chest, well-rounded, plenty of lung room, and then we see there the movement. It's quite characteristic, so the legs are moving parallel, but there's a broad chest, so they're moving in that way. And this one, really young, just 11 months old, so won six best puppies in show before, but to make it through to the group at this age, just stopping for a quick sniff, it's really, really, really done well to get here. So here we have a breed that's remained remarkably unchanged through the years. This is the Cairn Terrier. They're a native Scottish breed that were used in the West Highlands and the Isle of Skye to help keep down vermin. And they take the name from Cairns, which are small, rocky outcrops. As it's there presented on the table, it should stand well forward on its forepaws. Probably that treat is also helping <laughs> to achieve <laughs> that as well. Helps, but yes. So this is Sid, two and a half years old. So as he goes on the move, we should be able to see that he's agile and alert. So workmanlike little dog. Quite a small head, but uh, broad in the top of the skull. And again, when we talk about the coat, this one should remain and look rugged, shouldn't it? That water it should, resistance. Exactly. It's all about being weather resistant. These are dogs that will be working outdoors in all conditions. And the judges will be looking for a, fleet, a really free flowing stride here. I mean, short legs, but those four legs really reaching well forward and getting some propulsion from those hind legs as it moves across the, the green carpet. The best of breed Cairn Terrier there. And now on the table, we see the very distinctive Chesky Terrier. Judge today the Chesky Terrier is a really distinctive a breed, a mild-mannered dog, but it should still be capable of seeing off vermin, being fit for purpose. It is the national dog of the Czech Republic, and this is two-year-old Nano. It was developed by geneticist 
So unlike most of the terriers which we talked about being hand stripped, this one is clipped. So you can see there it's shorter in the back, less rough. And that slight rise to the top line, that's really characteristic of the breed. They should be short legged and rectangular to look at. And the head should look like a blunt long triangle from above. And the breed came about didn't it, as a cross between a Scottish Terrier and a Sealingham. But certainly that dog, what you were talking before about the, the grooming, the clipping is much easier to, to handle yes, than hand than trying to hand strip. Yes, definitely. And you can see characteristics of those two breeds when you look at the Chesky. And Nana has come all the way from Bologna in Italy. We had one international winner last night, making it through to best in show. I wonder whether we'll have another tonight. This one a former world winner, so could be in with a chance here today. So that wonderful silky top knot here of our best of breed dandy Dinmont Terrier. There were 57 of them here today and they're characterised by a wee slight body with that slightly curving top line that you'll see. They were developed in Scotland and the border counties. This breed was its name to Sir Walter Scott's novel of 1815, Guy Manor. You know, that body shape is said to be weasel-like, and, and you can see that, can't you, in the, the shape on top of the table there. Now, the name of this dog, the pet name is Hoodwink, three years old, and it's said that Hoodwink is a true showman, and that does help in the ring, doesn't it, when the judge is looking for that X factor when it comes to choosing shortlists and, indeed, winners. He's deciding he's going to own the space there. Exactly. And this, I love that the fact that this is the only breed that has permission to wear a Scottish clan tartan. So if he should wish, he may do that. <laughs> and also, we've got again the ears. Just see it moving there, the little tassels on the end, similar to the Bedlingham. Exactly. And a similar double coat there, so really harsh. You've got soft linty, linty undercoat and then that crisp outer coat. This one moving really nicely. A real feature of the smooth fox terrier is the long head and the short back. It's the oldest of the fox terrier breeds, and this one is 18 months old, named Quickie. That's the pet name, all the way from Aberdare in South Wales. The smooth fox has been called the gentleman of the terrier world. So these dogs should be short-backed, but they should cover the ground as they stand. And you can see that there on the table as this dog's standing. So this is actually 18 months old. Again, another young one. This is a bitch, and she uh, is from South Wales. And she became a champion today. So even if they don't get anything in the group, I think it's been a very successful day. So they're looking here, the judge, for a really flat, smooth, and dense coat. And white is always the predominant color. Good and those hind legs should be carried straight forward and parallel. Fox Terrier's first shown at Islington in London back in 1862. But then, like 11 years later, the Birmingham Dog Show had over 250 entries in the first breed standard drawn up in 1876, and the first ever Fox Terrier Club of England was formed. Sadly, numbers have dwindled, so we just had uh, 50 of them here today. So here we have the close relative of the Smooth Fox Terrier. This is the Wire Fox Terrier. Now they were originally used to drive foxes out of hiding places. So they came in smooth, rough and broken coated varieties and wires were given separate classes from the 1870s. They should show perfect balance in conformation and they should be as tall as they are long in their body. And sadly as well, the breed hasn't been as popular now as it used to be, but there are actually more wire-haired terriers here this year than smooth. Numbers quite similar. Slightly, yeah, 53 to 50. Yeah. <laughs> the wires have it. So this one, two-year-old bitch, and she's here from Belgium. Looks like she's only done a couple of shows so far. And her name's Spicy. Oh, they've got a lot of style and characters, so maybe spicy personality and style for our wire fox terrier there's been three wire fox terriers best in show in the 60s and the 70s there has yeah for the relatively low numbers they've done very well so we're looking here legs moving straight and parallel the Glen of Imal Terrier, only 22 of them at Crufts here this year and a key feature is quite see there but those slightly bowed front bowed front legs which is said to help them drag up badges from their set again that sense of being fit for the dogs and the breed's original purpose and it's said to be a fearless and tenacious breed 
So we talked so earlier about exactly the powerful jaw, and this is a dog that should have a powerful foreface. They grab those badges and try and drag them out when they found them. There should be a slight rise that we can just see there in the top line. So slightly rising to the loin, and they're covering the ground effortlessly as they move. This is Izzy, four and a half years old from Hereford. It's quite a docile breed, although, as you said, yeah, courageous when it's uh, called into action and needs to be agile. And it keeps pretty silent when it gets into working mode as well. So and another that's Irish become best of uh, become a champion today with Irish her best of breed. First, first timer. Good yeah. to see. <laughs> Did you recognize by the United Kingdom Kennel Club in 1876? So here we have that beautiful so colour of the Irish Terrier. Terrier. So this was the first of the native Irish breeds to become an official breed, and it was registered in 1879. They're known for that bright red coat, but in the early days there were mixed colours. Selective breeding helped to establish them as a key feature of the breed. It said, Laura, that the colour sometimes gives the breed a reputation of having a, a fiery spirit and a, and a sort of daredevil nature. Is, yes, that, is that true? That's very true, yeah. It's a bit like uh, Ginger Spice was in the Spice Girls. I think she's the Ginger Spice of the group, but I don't think it's, it's necessarily true. This one looks pretty laid back today. Just wait until we see it in a, a Union Jack jacket at some point. <laughs> but loves human company, a good tempered animal, really. Uh, and can look a bit more, I suppose, much more streamlined than other terriers, but recognised as a pedigree all the way back in 1879. And this is Donnie, who is four years old from Staffordshire. And that coat, obviously, we talked about the colour, but it should be really harsh and wiry and feel quite crisp when you touch it. Over 100 Jack Russell Terriers at Crufts this year. Only recognised by the Kennel Club in 2016. It's a working terrier of great character. It should be really lively, alert and active and the coat can be smooth, broken or rough. So these are mischievous little dogs, but one of the key things that the judge will just have checked is that you can span behind the elbows with two hands, and again, that's to aid it as it would be going underground. So it should be unrestricted and free striding on the move. It's a small dog, but you'll see it should be able to cover the ground really well. And as I said before, the tail on the terriers, this one should be carried really high and proud. Look at that. Really enjoying personality. I don't think it stopped moving. That neck wants to be really strong and clean and the ability to carry the head proudly, which I think we're seeing there. And long enough to protect the feet, of course, when it would have been working below ground. Another sense of being fit for purpose. Exactly. And although these were originally developed in Australia, they're actually descended from British and Irish terriers that were taken over there by expats to uh, help keep vermin down. On the next screen, will be seen by characteristic coat there of the Kerry Blue Terrier Best of Breed winner. So as we've said, the place of origin and the colour of the coat give this breed its name. It was used to cull rats and it's brilliant at hunting in rivers where it was also used to kill otters. First shown in Ireland in 1913 when it was known as the Blue Irish Terrier. The puppies are born black and change to blue when they're about 18 months old. This one's been a Spanish champion. Pet name is Justin, three and a half years old. That really distinctive feature is that long, lean head, and the coat wants to be soft and silky to the touch. Of course, that beard just gives such a, a wonderful characteristic <laughs> expression. in the breeze as he moves round. <laughs> that wonderful head carriage and the, the tail held high and really striding out. This one's moving really nicely. They should be free and powerful, and you can see that one driving there as he moves. And they can be any shade of blue. Uh, they must have some... Uh, they can also have black points on them. That just looks like a, a teddy bear's coat, doesn't it? Velvet. It, yes, yeah. So a lot of the terrier's rough coat. This one, it does feel silky to the touch. Well, the Lakeland Terrier should have a smart and, and work-like kind of demeanour. It's a very compact and well-balanced dog and a keen expression. This is two-year-old Mac. And the Lakeland, of course, takes its name from the Lake District where it was developed. Indication of his birthplace, the Lake District. 
So the Lakeland Terrier was developed to run after packs of hounds and it would bolt and then it would kill the fox or the badger. So fearless breed and we talked about fearless demeanor, really important. The coat again is a dense and harsh coat so it's weather resistant. This is a dog that can work outside in all conditions. Its owners say it's a happy cheeky little dog with playfulness, makes them laugh and there is real character there as we watch Max striding out. So we're looking here for drive from behind and you can really see that full of personality on the move. The skull should be flat and refined. And again, we talked about the broad, powerful muzzle and why that's so important in the Terriers. We should be able to see that here. Been two Lakeland Terriers to win best in show, 1963 and 1967. So this is Mac making his bid to get through to Sunday's best in show. Selected from an entry of 37. Here we have the smooth, glossy coat of the Manchester Terrier, that characteristic jet black with touches of rich mahogany tan. Unlike many of the Terriers, which were bred to help in country areas, this was bred to help keep down rats during the Industrial Revolution. And the breed standard talks about thumb marks. Just explain what those are, Laura, because that's a very particular characteristic. It does. So if we can get a shot as the dog comes towards us, you can see them there on the front legs. There, can you see the little thumb marks just above the feet on there? So that's a really characteristic feature of the breed. And they were city dogs, but they'd still be suitable as city dogs today. Um, I'm not sure there's as much vermin hunting going on in cities today, but well, I you'd think... be surprised. With, maybe. With enough exercise, I think they would. This is a low-maintenance version of a terrier, if you're looking for one. This one doesn't require the stripping. Well, the Norfolk Terrier is the smallest of the terrier breeds, but so big on character and substance as well. The Norfolk Terrier was a best in show winner in 2005. Uh, this is Fizz, who's four years old and from Worksop. And they should be compact with a short back and a level top line, very alert and focused. So this is another breed that should have a hard and wiry coat and you should see the slight eyebrows there and whiskers on the face. It's a small, low and keen dog, but don't let its size fool you. It is very alert and it is also fearless. And of course the Norfolk Terrier has drop ears. It does, yes, yeah. And this one actually a big winner. So she's won 29 CCs, so 29 challenge certificates. You only need three to be a champion. So it gives you some indication. Big winner, this Norfolk Terrier. See how it goes today. From an entry of 35, this selected this male number 4937 as Until this is Normandy, Normandy Rockwell. So here we have those pricked ears that we just talked about that separate the Norwich Terrier from the Norfolk. Uh, the two breeds were separated out in 1964. It's the smallest of the Terriers, but don't let that fool you. It should have great substance and character, and those pricked ears give a little sharpness to the expression and its head. This is two-year-old Smoker from Yorkshire. Now, this interested me, Laura, in the, the breed standard because it describes the Norwich Terrier as not a quarrelsome dog, yet it also says that honourable scars from fair wear and tear shouldn't be penalised, which I suggests that. that these ones can hold their own if required. I think it suggests that if the fight comes to them, then they will retaliate, and I think that's fair. So we're looking here on the move for the hind legs should be following in the tracks of the front legs. Clean, flowing through that neck down into a deep, compact body. This really nice example and was the top winning Norwich of last year, unbeaten in his breed. So let's see how he does in the group. And I've got it said to be have a, a real lovely, lovable disposition. I love this breed. Look at that, Molly Pets. Look at it. <laughs> this is four year old Taser from Burton on Trent. The parcel Russell Terrier is a small but racy breed and takes its name from a hunting clergyman called Reverend John Russell. And it's an ancestor, this breed, of the rather newer Jack Russell. This one is longer-legged. So there were 82 of these here today. Our judge is looking for a wedge-shaped head, almond eyes, and those little V-shaped ears which should drop forward with the tip just level there to the outer eye. And you're talking about those challenge certificates, Laura, 19 of them for yes. Taser. Yeah, so another another big winner here. 
Yeah. And they should be moving free striding and really covering the ground. And again, tail should be up on the move. The coat can come in at three varieties, so it can be rough, broken or smooth. And the colour should be predominantly white. Another one for whom honourable scars are permissible. Yes, yeah, another one who, if a scrap should happen, can stand his own. A bold but friendly nature. Yes, exactly, yes. And next to be seen by Paul Birdley is the Scottish Terrier. The wonderful this outline and those fantastic terrier. eyebrows here of the Cross Scottish Balls. Terrier Best of Breed winner. This is another native Scottish breed that was breed developed to go to ground after family. fox, badger the and other vermin. They once called the Aberdeen it's Terrier as they were so prolific in the area. Should be well boned and substantial for its size. You can just see the judge checking that there. First known as the Aberdeen Terrier, where it was developed in the 1800s. Well, this is Zara, four years old, and was best of breeds, best of breed at Crufts in 2020. Just such a, a wonderful, distinctive outline. That that long hair, the the pricked ears, and the strong neck, and that coat should be dense and wiry, shouldn't it? Yes, another one here that shouldn't feel soft to the touch. It should have some wiriness to it, and again, hand stripped on the back. So the skull should be wide and long enough to appear narrow. We can see that there in the foreface of this one. The whip should be well rounded and a short level back should be held on the move. And Zara's black, but you can also see Scottish Terriers in Wheaton or, or Brindle, and Brindle is the, the tiger-like stripe. Yes, that's right, yes. And that beard and eyebrows, we can see there, they're really characteristic of this breed. No trimming there. Today, Judge Jennifer Blitch. Well, a Celium Terrier was best in show in 2009 at Crufts, a native Welsh breed, and became a popular breed when it was recognised by the Kennel Club all the way back in 1911. And that general outline should be oblong, but you know, great substance beneath it, a, that long and wiry coat. In so this is three-year-old Oliver here from Dublin. It looks like he's won groups at championship shows before and he's described as a real clown. He should be sturdy, game and workman-like. This is a dog that's oblong, so longer than he is tall. And Celium is the name of the village where the breed originated in Pembrokeshire on the River Seal. Great the village vigorous on the move. Oh, sorry. I was going to say the village squire developed the breed, and he lived in Sealingham Manor. It's a bit of a nod to himself. Yeah. That is the Why not? I might have a Crombie breed, breed that I'm going to develop. <laughs> and now we move on to the Sky Terrier. This was another breed judged today by Dan Eriksson from Sweden. And from an entry of 51. Here we have the wonderful coat and those fantastic ears of the Sky Terrier best of breed. These were one of the original terriers of the Scottish Hebrides and played a part in the development of all Scottish terriers. He used to hunt fox and badger. There were 51 of them here today. And this one is a seven-year-old dog called Eddie, so actually a veteran. Well, you might recognise this breed as Greyfriars Bobby, you know, the dog that returned to the grave of its owner for some 14 years. And that just goes to show, really demonstrates the loyalty and the, the devotedness of uh, the Sky Terrier breed. But that long coat, it's important that it's straight and it's flat, but it shouldn't ever impede the action. So, Laura, very important to to get the trim just right in terms of the length. And also really important for the, the judge to get their hands on the dog so they can feel underneath that coat. The coat should be like a veil that's coming over. And you can see here, we're looking for propulsion, it covering the ground well. And despite having the veil over its eyes, the dog can see where it's going, does know what it's doing. They should be long, powerful, close to the floor, but as you said, not so close that it impedes their movement. This one looks wonderful today. A flat, straight top line and elongated in the body. Not looking seven years old at all. Previous winner here at Crufts and also a European winner. And those ears prick, they can be dropped as well. We've seen a seven-year-old. Here is a nine-year-old dog, Jack, soft-coated Wheaton Terrier from Wiltshire. And the coat's a real key characteristic of uh, this breed, which is an Irish native, soft and silky, loosely waved or curly, but those curlies should be large and loose. So this dog's believed to be an ancestor of both the Irish and the Kerry Blue Terriers, which we've seen in the group. They were used for hunting both badgers and otter. 
The colour is described as a shade of ripening wheat. So you can have the full spectrum from lighter through to darker. They should stand four square with the head and tail up and the tail there carried over the back on the move. Yeah, very upstanding and compact breed and the judge will be looking for strong and muscular thighs there and we really saw propulsion across the floor, swiftness of movement and that just really propels soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Here we have our best of breed Staffordshire Bull Terrier, the biggest entry in the Terrier group today with 306 of them here. It's a popular breed, it shares common ancestry with the Bull Terrier and it was a fighting dog that was created by crossing a Bulldog and the Black and Tan Terrier. They selected this male, number 5285, as their best of breed. I love the name of this dog. This is Batman, <laughs> two years old and 11 months. And notice the leather collar. It's the only breed shown in a collar, isn't it? And, it? and it's decorated with brass emblems, which carry the Staffordshire knot, which is the traditional symbol of the county. So there's some, yeah, very, a few breeds that... Yeah, we've got the tartan, special treatment. we've got the special collar. Yes, Where exactly. does that come from? I, I don't know is the answer. I don't know where it comes from, but yeah, they are shown, as you can see there, smiling face you can see that it looks like it's grinning as it comes towards us so this is a black they come in various colors judge today sonia connell judge 34 of them sent through to the group this evening this bitch number five five now this is a female etna is uh, our Welsh Terrier. There's been four Welsh Terriers to have won best in show in the history of Crufts. And the Welsh, an all-round hunt Terrier, affectionate and obedient. And those V-shaped ears are a real feature, a strong jaw, and the feet should be small and cat-like. So these were once known as the black, the Welsh black and tan rough-coated terrier, and the name was later compressed to the Welsh terrier, which I think we'll all agree is a little easier to say, but it tells you about the coat. It should be hard and wiry to touch. It should be a workman-like little dog with a flat skull and another one with a punishing jaw there, designed to, to get the vermin and not let go. So this one's from Hungary, big winner over there, champion. Um, yeah, all sorts of best of breeds and group placements over there. Oldest existing dog breeds in the UK. Etna said to have a lovely temperament, very friendly, loves the shows and seems very, very at home, very much at home in the Crufts main arena. Here we have the last dog in the group, the crisp white coat of the West Highland White Terrier. They were developed from a white strain of the Cairn Terrier in the middle of the 19th century, and the reason the colour was easier to see when they were working on the moors. So this is Freddy, who has travelled over from Poland, five, five and a half years old. Likes to snack on cheese while he's in the ring. I'm, I think we all like that. So. Oh, yes, yeah, so I was expecting you to bring a little <laughs> snack bag out here, to be honest. But that skull slightly domed, the eyes set wide apart and set under heavy eyebrows there as well. But it gives it a really intelligent, piercing sort of expression. And the last time a West Highland White Terrier won best in show was only as recently as 2016. It was, and the head appeared described as a white chrysanthemum. That's what that feathering should be creating, that kind of illusion of a flower as you look at it. And this is another breed that's, that's stripped out by hand, so high maintenance coat if you want to show it, but obviously it can be clipped. So our judge has taken a look at all of the best of breeds in the Terrier group, but who is going to make it through to the shortlist? It's no mean achievement. There, were, there was a total of 1,875 terriers entered today. Well, we've seen Not all the breeds. breeds in the terrier group. Is there any, Laura, that you particularly liked? Oh, I think, I mean, look at that little Jack Russell. It, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? There's some really nice examples. The Westie, I think, looks great there at the end. I do have a soft spot for both the Norfolk and the Norwich Terriers. I think they're both really lovely examples. Well, we'll expect uh, our judge to draw out a short list, usually eight. We saw nine in one of the we short did. lists. We did. You can never rely night. on them to stick to the eight, <laughs> no. <laughs> So he's just going round now, just one more opportunity to take a look at the breed type, the balance, but also the showmanship. And I mean, you can see there, look at that tail. Pick me, pick yeah, me. Yeah, exactly, yeah. If they, if they can 
pull it out of the bag, now is the moment to do it. Does it matter really if the dog is standing stock still or if there is movement at this stage? I think it depends on the breed. So you'll see some of them are stacked. So the, the owner is holding them in position um, and you would expect those to stay relatively still. But the ones that are free stood, so where the handler is holding perhaps a treat or just catching their attention, it's very normal for them to move. And obviously terriers are sprightly. They want to be moving. So I don't think they're going to get marked down for that. Paul Erdley, so our Paul judge. Taking his time and making sure he works his way around all the terriers before deciding on his shortlist. That coat there of that Sky Terrier. Immaculate. The Staffy, always popular. Now, when will he start choosing? It looks like out? he's taking his time, looking back again. And let's see where he's going to go. We've already had the working group and the pastoral group. Those winners going through to best in show. Siberian Husky and Border Collie. So the Bedlington Terrier there is coming out. Beautiful distinctive outline. Closely followed by the smooth Fox Terrier. And the wire. So we've got both of those coming out. The Irish Terrier. And then we've got the Irish Terrier. The Kerry Blue Terrier. The Kerry Blue, which was looking lovely today. The Lakeland Terrier. The Lakeland. Where are we going now? The Parson Russell Terrier. We've got the Parson Russell the and the Little Scar Scotty coming out. Our short list. And the Sky. So, as our other Terrier best of breed to leave the main ring, can I ask you to show your appreciation and congratulate them? On their success here at Got another first. short list of nine. Nice. We have, my reckoning. <laughs> so, judge is going to take them back, move them again. That's our short list. I'll tell you best of these, move to the back of the ring. Or we'll go to the front line. So, just using the opportunity and now to have one last it. look at how they move oh, out. Yeah. So first in our shortlist, we have so the, the, the lamb-like Bedlington Terrier. Terrier. So we talked about this one. It's already won a Group 4 here at Crufts in 2020. So can it go on better today? This three-year-old dog called Chase here from Ayrshire. So again, the judge just the taking the time to look at the movement, looking for that reach and drive there, that beautiful rise in the top line. And Chase won best of breed out of 93 Bedlingtons at Crufts this year. And the next dog we see moving is the Smooth Fox Terrier. Sent through to the group by the Smooth Fox group. Terrier, 18 months old, quickie eight. this is. And I've really seen that tail wanging away from the get-go. So this should have clean outline. Off she goes. Tail carried high. The Smooth Fox Terrier. Full of personality on the move. Again, predominantly white. Now off goes the wire fox terrier. And we also have the wire fox terrier. So both the fox terriers making the shortlist here That's today. This one is a two-year-old bitch. It's called Spicy. Here from Belgium to compete. Four five four nine as best of breed. As we had a Hungarian winner last night. We did. Yes, the we could have show. another overseas winner here. So, as we said, Terriers, predominantly British and Irish breeds. But it's nice to see popular on the continent. This smart little dog covering the ground, still alert, look full of vigour. Our shortlist is the Irish Terrier. So, the Irish Terrier making the shortlist here. That red colour, this one is four year old. Donnie the dog, and he's from Staffordshire. And a champion dog already. Yeah, he's won some group placings at other championship shows outside of Clufts. And his owners describe, describe him as playful and extremely loyal. And around he goes. Asked to move out the again Irish once Terrier, more. Best of breed winner. Number four, six, what will the judge be looking two, for in the movement of the Irish Terrier? Well, it already will have decided that this Terrier meets the breed standard, but it's about, is it a showman? Is this the one that's going to really represent the Terrier group in best in show? This is, of course, when you're comparing different 
different breeds to each other all of a sudden. So this, the Kerry Blue Terrier, one of our endangered, sadly, breeds on the vulnerable breeds list. This one's Justin, a three and a half year old dog here from Scotland. He's a Spanish champion and he was uh, made up last year, so became a champion last year in the UK. He's a clown, always wanting to play, but he's behaving very well here. Look at that drive from the rear there. The best of breed winning Lakeland Terrier. The Lakeland Terrier. Sent through to the group this evening by two time Gina best Andrews. in show this breed. This dog, Both in the 60s, this three. is two year old Mac. So put through by Zena Thorne Andrews, a really well respected breed judge. Another international entry. Right. Yeah, this from one Croatia. Croatia. Yeah. Terrier, Multiple best, best in show winner previously. Eight, and it's described three. as a happy, cheeky little dog. So these Terriers really are full of character. It's the Lakeland Terrier. And now off goes our Parson Russell Terrier. So here we have the Parson Russell Terrier. This is a four-year-old dog Mark called Taser, Moody. here from Burton-on-Trent. Now, he was the top Parson Russell in both Parson 2019 Snail. and Five last year, and he has won 19 challenge certificates. So we said three to become a champion. So if you're getting towards 20, you're doing pretty well. Taser knows what it takes to win, that's for sure. And the tail hasn't stopped wagging. Is Top he going to knock out the competition? Do you see what I did there, Taser? No. <laughs> I, I, I deliberately missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so these smaller dogs really striding around the ring, just taking their time. Oh, stopping to have a quick look. I think our little Scotty just started uh, a little bit soon there. So this is our Scottish Terrier, native Scottish breed. This one, four-year-old bitch called Zara, and another overseas entrant here from Finland and was best of breed at Crufts in 2020. Again, and really distinctive last, outline, that solid body, and it's a dog bred to go to ground. Well, you like this one. I do. Look at that coat. I mean, you call it a veil. That is high maintenance. This is the Sky Terrier. Seven years old, still going brilliantly, just showing the longevity of these Terrier breeds. This is a dog called Eddie here from the Czech Republic. Another who's won here at Crufts before. So we're looking for a dog that, although it's low to the ground, can still really cover the ground well. And that's what this one's doing. And when the breed has those prick ears, they should be really gracefully feathered, which I think we've seen. You can see that, especially when they're on the move and you can see the coat moving like that. So I think that's a lovely all, dog. All our nine shortlisted terrier best of breeds. Another quick look along Well, that line. is the shortlist. Now time for the judge Warhorse to decide who will the ring, so be the winner of the terrier group. There'll be four chosen to come out to the middle, the, the top four. Terrier group press. What do you think, Ali? This is your first year. Is there anything there that catches your eye? <laughs> You're asking the wrong person <laughs> for an expert view. I'll let the judge decide. I think that smooth fox terrier looks beautiful there. And obviously the Bedlington we know has won a prep place in the group before. So not wasting any opportunity to have one last this look. Very thorough, but the boards are there. So who's going to take group Terry one? Group Where's he going? Ah, the it's Irish the Irish Terrier. Irish terrier. Beautiful red coat of our Irish Terrier. This is Donny, the dog, four years old, here from Staffordshire, so just down the road. Second place is going to the Lakeland Terrier. So this two-year-old Mac, a dog, and this one from Croatia. Well worth the journey to get here today. So group three, where are we going to go? It looks four. like... So the, the Bedlington, Bedlington is moving one space up. <laughs> so in four years' time, could well take the group. So this is our Bedlington Terrier, three-year-old Chase, here from Ayrshire. So we've got one spot left. Terrier group four is... Oh, it's that... I'm delighted. I think that's terrier. a lovely Sky Five Terrier. One, six, this is Eddie, seven-year-old dog, doing it for the veterans so here from the Czech Ward Republic. Well, these are our top four then in the Terrier group, and we have our winner going through to Best in Show on Sunday night, and that is Donny, the four-year-old Irish Terrier from Staffordshire. So let's have a word with John. You are as cool as a cucumber out there. I don't feel it. <laughs> Just if you wouldn't mind turning a little bit to face your audience up here. Thank you so much. John, tell us a little bit about this dog here. Well, he was bred by uh, some great friends of mine, uh, 
Brian and Beryl Blower. Sadly, Brian passed away quite recently. So, what an honour. This dog has done particularly well, hasn't he, in the last sort of uh, six to nine months? Yes, uh, he was Group 2 at the last show at Manchester and he won the group at Boston. So, yeah, happy days. So, just tell us a little bit about this breed and why they do, do make great show dogs as well. Yeah, he's a hard Irishman, red-headed Irishman. They're just a brilliant breed to have around you. A bit like you, then? <laughs> uh, less of the hair, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to John, the winner of the Terrier Group. Well, that and was a lovely story see... to be shared just then, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, a huge congratulations. And Donnie goes through alongside Lenore, the Border Collie, who won the Pastoral Group, and Akila, who is the Siberian Husky, who won the Working Group. And no Irish Terrier has ever won Best in Show at Cruft, so there is a contender. Could be a first. So the little Lakeland there in second, Bedlington in third, and our wonderful Sky Terrier in fourth. Very, Look very proud moment and probably a little bit of an emotional one as well. Have I done all right, Dad? That's Something's coming out of my pocket. What's yeah. in the pocket? <laughs> Look. A worthy winner of the Terrier Group. Congratulations to Donny. Great achievement for the Irish Terrier there. Oh, he spotted something. It could well be the microphone on the camera. I'm guessing it could be in for bin hunted. So here we go, a lap of honour for our winner of the Terrier group, Donny, the Irish Terrier, four years old, just down the road in Staffordshire he's travelled from. got a very special presentation coming up next here in the main arena it's a special presentation to the 2020 best in show winner that's Kim McCalmont and Maisie who was the wire haired dachshund and I'll talk you through it's a portrait of Maisie that's just been put up there here we go a portrait by Anne Zutsos and this is to be presented to Kim McCalmont. Lovely together. keepsake. The original will be kept and by the Kennel Club Art Foundation. And Kim will take home a special signed print. And here is Maisie. Best, of, best in show 2020 and getting a wonderful reception out here in the main arena once again. That's really lovely to see, the wire-haired Daxon. Right in front of the uh, red seats. Uh, now, I wonder if Maisie likes the horror. portrait. Frank's <laughs> alongside me. Is, is, is this a good <laughs> image, says? A wonderful yes. likeness, isn't it? Beautiful yeah, piece of art. Foundation with this amazing artist, Anzutas, to make the presentation. The uh, Kennel Club will return. Well, there's a nod of approval. That is, that is always good to see, and I'm Maisie, sure a relief for the artist the as well. It really is beautiful. Look at the likeness. I wonder if we can get uh, some pictures of Maisie on the screen to show you exactly how amazing Maisie looks on that picture. Absolutely incredible. And you are an amazing talent. You really, really are. Thank you, Anne. And thank you, Kim and Maisie. The Kennel Club houses a large collection of dog Beautiful. portraits, some of them marvellous old masters, Let's and it's a wonderful collection we have there. This will be added to them eventually. Well done. 
It's well a beautiful done. piece of I work, and it's a really special a way to honour a Best in Show winner. Maisie will take her, take her place and watch the Hound Group. <laughs> a VIP seat for the Best in Show winner, yes. Thank you so much, Nick. So we do, of course, now come to the second group. It's my pleasure to introduce our judge for this group, the Hounds. He's a gentleman with tremendous experience. So the Hound Group hound is the final group judging of this evening. And these breeds are originally bred for hunting, either by smell wife, or Sarah, by sight. And uh, judge UK for champion, this evening is Gavin Robertson, a man who you know, Frank. And he, he's, he's he'll feel very familiar in this ring because he has been best in show at Crufts with the Petit Bassett Griffin Vaudien and a reserve best in show and won another group. So he's familiar territory. So and very experienced across all of the hound breeds. And it's a big group, this one, isn't it? A very big group, yes. And uh, very mixed in size, coat, and their, their work. So we already have a Siberian Husky through to Best in Show, a Border Collie and an Irish Terrier. So we'll find out in the next half hour or so which hound will join Best in Show on Sunday night. Gavin Robertson. There's the introduction and the welcome for Gavin Robertson. And I think and he's going to very much enjoy this. So let's see the and first, his first view of the dogs as they tonight. come in. He gets his, he just begins to relax Afghan as he sees hound. the dogs. Now the ceremonial's over. Here is the Afghan hound. The Basenji. The barkless dog of the Congo, the Basenji. It's the best in show in 2001 at Crufts. The Basenji. Fauve de Britannia. First with the Bassett family, the Bassett Fauve de Britannia. The Grand Basset Griffon yes. Bondian. The largest, the tallest and the longest of the Bassett family, the Grand Basset Griffon Bondian. The Bassett Hound. The archetypal Bassett, the uh, biggest entry of the Bassett breed today. Yeah, 101 of them this year. The Beagle. Yeah, the tan and white Beagle coming in, topping a big entry. The Bloodhound. The elastic gate of the Bloodhound coming in now. And this one on the vulnerable breeds list, isn't it? The Borzoi. The Russian Wolfhound, the Borzoi. Stunning coat. The Cheneco Deletna. From Sicily, the little rabbit hunter. Elegant. Russell now the coat. first of our Dachshunds, the long-haired Dachshund. And now for the Dachshund family coming in, led in by the standard long-haired. The miniature long-haired Dachshund. Three coat varieties, aren't there, and two sizes for each. So we have a family of six here. The smooth-haired Dachshunds. Standard smooth coming in now. Black and tan, very happy. The miniature smooth-haired Dachshund. The miniature smooths have really become very popular as house pets. This is the one that would be known the as the sausage dog. Dachshunds. And there is the standard wire-haired, very and nice. the last of our Dachshunds, the miniature wire-haired Dachshund. And the same in miniature, the mini wire. And you couldn't get more of a contrast with the next breed that is about to appear. And now something a little larger, the deer hound. The elegance of the deer hound, this light gait striding out. The Finnish Spitz. And something quite different, the Finnish Spitz. Sharp features, this the iridescent Foxhound. red coat. And there is the foxhound. You don't see many of them in the show ring the in this country. Hound. There's the greyhound, a picture of live and athleticism. And the winner from Import Hound Register. This is the Griffon Fauve de Britannia. The Griffon Fauve de Britannia. The Hamilton Sofa. And there's the Swedish foxhound coming in. And the first time in the main ring, the 
This is the first for the breed for a long time, the Harrier. The Beefen Hounds. Well, this is my best of breed winner from the breed judging today. The Irish Wolfhounds. Now, the tallest breed in the world, supposedly, the Irish Wolfhound. The Norwegian Elk Hounds. And very workmanlike, this Elk Hound coming in now. Fit for the function with that thick coat. Uh, the lovely, the lovely Otter Hound. This one's come from America to win. The pharaoh hound, very ancient. The Portuguese Padengo. <laughs> and the little Portuguese Padengo, the rabbit hunter from Portugal. The Rhodesian Ridgeback. S strong, athletic. The Saluki. The elegance of the Saluki, light, the lifting Slugi. stride. And he's the Slugi, related to it, but some marked differences. That one looks very happy to be in the big ring. The and from a huge entry, over 330, I believe, today for the Whippets. This one's come from Holland. And we've seen Whippets being best in show and three Friday, times in Crubs history, the last in 2018. Who has a close relationship with the judge and is sportingly going to withdraw from the group? And we're going to see a lap of honour here from owner Jane and Rossi, the Petit Basse Griffin. And this is a special Vendier. event. The, the judge today has bred this Petit Basset Griffin Vendien, so he can't judge it. So it's withdrawing a lap of honour and then a very sporting withdrawal. You're not allowed to judge dogs which you've bred. You or in, in, indeed, if you're your close friends of, of the people of this. And to declare an interest, he did mention Gavin so Robertson's you, own Rossi pedigree as a breeder, if you like, being a former Martin best in show, and he had a best in breed. Box, Kim and Graham. Thank you, Marina. So this hound group, so we move Frank, of course, so many different sizes and looks and appearances that we've seen, but they all have in common that they're bred for hunting either by smell or by sight. So those scent hounds include what the beagle and the bloodhound and the sight hounds would be breeds like the whippet and the greyhound. And, and usually the longer legged ones, those galloping breeds are the sight hounds and the ones that are lower to ground so they get their heads down and take in the scent, they are the scent hounds. Evolution is incredible, but there are, some, there are some versatile ones who can do both as we'll see in a moment. So Gavin just walking around the ring, taking in his first glance the outline and balance of the breed. And a lot of these dogs will need a lot of exercise, won't they, if you have one at home? They're hunting dogs, they love to be out, yes. They do love people as well. Pretty trusty companions. Racing off to run down the target through speed, endurance, and persistence. Around the ring, you can, can recognize the sight hounds, the other breeds. Who and Gavin now coming to look at the first breed forward for examination. It's the Afghan, the sight hound from Afghanistan. Undoubtedly the most glamorous breed in the group, but underneath the coat, there is an athletic, keen sight hound. This breed is probably a descendant of the Saluki from neighboring Persia, but working in the harsh mountainous regions, it grew a coat to give it extra protection. And now it's the coat which gives it the glamour. It's obviously the glamour dog of the group. But that coat, Frank, does have to develop naturally, doesn't it? If there was any evidence of clipping or scissoring, then that would be penalised. Yes, they, 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 the, the coat comes in a pattern. There's a, a bare strip along the back, the saddle, which we see here, the legs and belly are uh, uh, well furnished. The Afghan should have a light lifting gait. The standard asks for a style of a high order. They have to carry themselves proudly and majestically and with a light stride. Full of style. A three year old from South Yorkshire. And that movement, smooth and springy. And you can see that as well. See this lovely almond-shaped eye, this long, chiselled head, giving you that look of elegance and quality. And the ring tail as well. Very important. The ring tail, like a little donut hook at the end. Big feet. 
Basenji is uh, the dog that has no bark. The history of the dog goes back to pharaoh times. This is seven-year-old Selma, who has traveled from Poland. Some interesting historical facts about this interesting breed. Now, this is a hound which does hunt by sight and sound. It often seeks its game by jumping up and down on the spot to look over the high savanna grasslands. And it often had a bell attached to its collar so the huntsman could know where it was working. So, it's a primitive breed, very interesting. Not only are they barkless, uh, they've got this wonderful high set tail curled over the back. This pricked ears, this pliant coat, and this lovely swinging stride. They are immaculately, fastidiously clean in the house, but they love climbing. They've still got some primitive streaks to them. Now, the Basset Fauve de Britannia, one of my favorites in the hound group. This one, the Basset Fauve, it only comes in this color. Fauve means fawn, and he was developed in Brittany, a sight hound, often hunting in pairs, and the quarry he went after were hare, rabbit, and fox. Billy is six years old from Warrington, and we should be seeing here a quick stride, straight forelegs and a level top line. And I suppose with these dogs, Frank, when they're scent hounds, it's important that those nostrils should be wide open. Yes, wide nostrils. They should be able to have a good length of neck so that they can get the nose down towards the ground to take in the scent. A very crisp coat. It's a double coat. Top coat is hard, softer undercoat to give it protection. Judge, Mrs. Marion Hunt. Best of breed to come through to the group this evening was this dog, 5956. So there were 23 Basset Griffon Vendéans uh, this and year, Grand. and Bassets are generally very tall. This is the tallest, the Grand variety, of course. It's got the longest legs, the longest body, and the longest ears. And this one fed, bred in a famous kennel in Holland. Uh, they've been very successful at Crufts. Um, they come from the Vendée region of Western France, and it, as you say, it's the tallest and the longest. As my friend Jessica would say, everything is stretched in the Grand Basset. Longer ears, longer foreface, longer body. It's got a crisp top coat again, but it must be rustic. It not, must not be over-trimmed. These are fit for function hounds and shouldn't be over-trimmed. And how do those long ears assist it in its original purpose? When they get their head down, it's said that the long ears cup the scent and bring the scent up into the nostrils. And best of breed was this dog number 6101. And this is the Basset perhaps we all know best, the, the archetype Basset, most popular in the UK. It's thought that the, they were developed by French monks in the Middle Ages, and they probably came to England with the Normans for the Norman conquest. And was reputedly bred by the monks of France in the Middle Ages. Well, this is Figaro, who's only 17 months old, and he's travelled to Crufts from Spain. Very low to the ground, having a good old gamble across the across the carpet. Yes, and you know they were allowed a little bit of loose skin to give them protection, some pliability of the skin to give them protection. But breeders have worked hard to get rid of exaggeration in it. Uh, we see him striding out, not too long in the back, again, That's exaggeration in any form. It's not too long in the back, it should be strongly boned. And low to the ground, but it still needs good clearance, doesn't it? It, it does, they have to have ground clearance. Now, this one, we see that the front legs are the little curved round the chest. They've got a crook front, we, we call it, one of the breed specialties. The best of breed from 188 exhibits, the highest or the second highest in the hound group today. This is Jake, three-year-old beagle from Darlington. And the beagle is a very sturdy dog, and see that compact outline. It's the smallest of the British pack hounds. Obviously, the tricolour, which we often see, is the most popular. Here we have a tan and white. We also have lemon and white. But this one, really smart, done a lot of winning. It's a group winner already. Has been best of breed at Crufts when he was a junior. 
Everything is fit for function in the Beagle. There's nothing exaggerated. You want a clean, laid-back shoulder to give it long stride in front, a nicely curved back leg to give it propulsive power, and the tail, or with this stern, as they call it in hounds, carried above the back, but not curved over the back, and a lovely, soft expression from those dark eyes. our judge for Bloodhounds today, and from an entry of 20, she selected this dog number six. Oh, the lovely bloodhound. Coming from Belgium and France, where he was known as the Saint Hubert. One of his ancestors was a hound called the Saint Hubert. He was bred to hunt deer and he was also a stag hound. Like many. In the 19th century. This is five-year-old Mission, who is in fact French best of Pierre breed, Crofts in 2020, so back again in 2022, and, and that name probably, in Frank, the most famous and well-recognised of the scent hounds, and, and bred in Britain since before 1300. And of course, he was known as the sleuth dog, and Clement Freud would patronise him. But anyway, do you know how they, why they're called bloodhounds? Not because it followed a blood trail, because the term blood was a sign of good breeding. Like as you have a blood horse, you've got a bloodhound, a, a, a dog of high breeding. Only 20 here at Crofts this year. The bloodhound is on the vulnerable breeds list. And now we see the Vorzoi. Today, Mr. Andre van der Broek from the Netherlands was in charge of this most elegant and spectacular breed, a true arist aristocrat of the hound breed. Here we have the, the Borzoi now, the Russian Andre wolfhound, the wolfhound of the Russian the aristocracy, first seen in England in the 19th century. This Borzoi long head, breed, strong jaw, and this curving outline to give it propulsive power. We see the rise over the loin there. A great favorite with the Russian courts and nobles. Just a spectacular sight, isn't it, the Borzoi? This is Dustin, who is a five-year-old dog, travelled from Exeter in Devon. The hunting in Russia was a ceremonial occasion with uh, wonderful tents and, and entertainment for the hunters, but the Borzois hunted in pairs and they attacked the wolf from either side to bring down and hold the wolf. This coat must take a tremendous amount of care, Frank. Well, it does, but again, it shouldn't be overdone, really. You have to see the shape of the dog. It's not just about coat and glamour. It has to be fit for function. That's why we've got these long, powerful jaws, this propulsion from the rise over the loin and strong ox. Michelle Farley. Best of breed was this bitch number 6431. The breed was approved by the Kennel Club to move to the individual... The Chineco del Etna isn't perhaps as well known as some of the other hounds, but was used for hunting rabbits register. near Mount Etna. And this is 11-month-old Sienna from Manchester. And was a favoured hound for hunting rabbits in the area near And the breed Etna. comes from Sicily, He's and where he used to hunter, work on the slopes of Mount hound, Etna and hunt rabbits. It was known as the Sic Sicilian Greyhound. They are lean and leggy and he elegant in these sharply pricked the ears, give it this wonderful look of alertness, very sensitive hearing smaller, and great sight. And that trot is so distinctive, the way the forelegs the move. Breed, it's Chinette stepping Hedel, out nicely, isn't it? Six, four, three, one. Pliant skin, there's a degree of elegance in many of the sight hounds. And best puppy at the Ladies' Kennel the Association in 2021. Only 11 months old. Mr. Lloyd Cross was the breed judge today and selected this male and the first of the Dachshund family on the table. Now the Teckel from Germany. Teckel means badger. They were bred to hunt badger, but also rabbits. It's a theory that the long hair and the short-haired Dachshunds always existed, cropping up in the litters. They were sort of interbred. The breed name translates from German into badger dog. Georgie's from Bude in Cornwall, five years old. And Dachshunds should be twice as long as they are high according to the breed standard but they've got to be able to move freely haven't they not not be impeded in any way by their long coats in their native germany not only had to, they had to go to ground but they had to track their prey as well so they needed ground clearance we don't want anything exaggeratedly low to ground they have to have ground clearance and the, the coat should frame the body it shouldn't be abundant and of course, they should carry themselves with regal dignity, the Dachshund. And that tail almost forms a flag with the, the hair on the very end. Conical shaped head, strongly boned. There were 110. Best of breed was this dog, number 66.
0.04. Rob is the pet name for this miniature long-haired dachshund, five and a half years old from Norfolk. And miniatures preferably weighed under five kilogram. They should still be well muscled and compact with enough ground movement for free movement. Rather than by weight. Presumably this is to determine that they are of a size to be One of the great challenges for dachshund breeders is to get the same type and quality in a miniaturized size. So that's one of the challenges. So this shares the same standard as the the long the standard long hair we've just seen, but everything's in miniature. The conical shaped head, the long rib cage, long level top line and strong bone. Everything scaled down. Now this dog's had a remarkable career. He was best to breed at Crufts from the puppy class years ago. Ago. Here he is. I think he's all now almost a veteran and still winning. And one best of breed out of 110 miniatures today. And now perhaps the Dachshund we all know best, the standard smooth Dachshund. Here the black and tan we see on the table the judge going over the confirmation of the dog. See the prominent fore chest there, strong bone. They were bred, as I say, for tracking and also for going to ground after their quarry. In their native Germany, they're measured not by weight or height, but by their girth. They have a tape measure put round their rib cage. They shouldn't be oversprung so they can get down into the holes. And did you know, Frank, that this is Blackie, and it's in fact Blackie's second birthday today. <laughs> well, so wouldn't that <laughs> best, in, best of breed. He's had a good day, yes. Will it get even better? That's the question. That's the best of breed, smooth hairs, Dachshund, number 6626. And obviously a very happy, oh yeah, well, and yes, the scent hound, you see, get taking in the now scent. Now we see the miniature smooth haired Dachshund. There were 150 of them here today for Judge Here Suzanne. is a female dog that's only 18 months old. It's Lucy from Northumberland, the miniature smooth-haired Dachshund. And there were 150 of them, of which Lucy has won best in breed. And the low body, of course, with that short smooth coat. And this comes from a very successful kennel. This is um, Fran Mitchell showing her mother was a Dachshund breeder before her, and Fran's own daughter is also a championship show judge. So they've been in the breed for many years, striding out well. The miniature variety has really, especially in the, in the pandemic times, this has been the popular one. This, the registrations have soared in the miniature smooth, largely because they're a handy size for the house, but wonderful temperaments. They're very bold, very happy. Wendell Moore was the Whitehead Dachshund judge at Crafts this year, and we see his best of breed now being examined by Cameron. Now, this one has a hard act to follow, doesn't it? We've just seen the best in show winner, but this looks a very nice one. It's from a continental kennel, the Tres Paneros kennel, very famous. They come from Italy, and they've had many lovely Dachshunds, and this is lovely. Look at that noble head, long foreface, decorated by a bit of beard there. Why good ground clearance here, and those lovely tight seven. feet and good bone. As its name implies, the wire should carry a dense, hard, close line. Real coat. distinctive hard features are touch. the beard and, and those the bushier eyebrows as well. And his legs and feet should be neatly covered in the, the wiry, harsh coat as well. How did they get this wiry, harsh, harsh coat? The theory is that there was a cross with terriers, with wire-haired terriers, to get this. bushy eyebrows and bearded chin. This is a very, very nice dog. I like this. It's Echo, who's a European winner in 2021. Striding up beautifully, good ground clearance, strong bone, very nice indeed. Lovely. And from her entry of 93, she We've seen the wire head. This is now the miniature wire head. So same harsh outer coat and dense undercoat, but of course the miniature breed should still be well muscled and compact with a really defiant carriage of the head. And this is one which has also had a very good career. I, I believe it's getting, it's almost a veteran now. It's had many best of breeds. One all over the country. Well able to Beautiful type. To hunt vermin, carrying this to level badges, top line. You can see it's quite deep varieties. in the body with some fore chest, but full of confidence. A small dog with oodles of confidence. Breed, it's Ricky, who is indeed a veteran at nine years and four months. And he's said to love everybody and absolutely everything. And obviously loves showing he's very happy in this big ring, isn't he? And the 
and it's right at home. To be judged today by our group judge is the deer hound. There were 69 of them for our judge. The beautiful Mr. gaze Yetnes of the Norway deer hound. Of One of the most elegant of breeds, a breed developed in Scotland where he was rich, this originally was used to hunt wolves, but as the with the demise the of the wolf population, he was used for British coursing Isles. deer, he and that's why he carries the name the Scotland Deerhound, an elegant years. sight hound. It, similar to a greyhound in build and stature, but with his crisp coat covering the body. And that coat, Frank, has said it should be shaggy, but Up not woolly. Farm, How do you maintain it? Well, it, it, should, it should be, you know, it's a mixture of hard popular. and soft hair, so it's got this rustic appearance to it. And it would feel what kind of crisp to the touch? Crisp to the touch is what we wanted. These very this beautiful gaze. They look as they you know looking out for the deer. It's marvellous. They can pull down full-grown stags, can't they? But they're also the gentle giants in the house. They're absolutely wonderful. But they're great hunting dogs in the field. Oh, now here we have the. As this Spitz breed's name implies, the country of origin is Finland, where it is the national dog with a written. Breed standard going back as far as 1812. Well, this is the Finnish Spitz. This is two-year-old Ollie, a number of Finnish national patriotic songs. who just wants to get moving in the ring, Frank. I think. Yes, they're, some, they're sometimes hard to handle. They're very lively dogs. This, the national dog of Finland. This iridescent red glow of the coat. Spitz characteristics, which means the sharp, pointed ears, wedge-shaped head, the tail carried over the back. It should have a standoff coat. This dog is not in full coat. Today. Today, a standoff harsh coat with a softer undercoat. And the dog now to be judged is the Foxhound, one of the rarer show hounds here at Crufts. Best of breed is this dog. And here we have the Foxhound, I think only one in, one in competition judged today, and this is our best of breed too. winner. The Foxhound is times, it was seen mostly as a pack hound, it, and it they the were developed when the stag evolved. hunting was banned. And here we have the Foxhound. Fox Seven years old is Chorister. When there is only one the entry in the breed, Frank, the is there still a, a, a formal judging process still has to take place? There is, and of course, if the judge doesn't think it's worthy of being best of breed, he can withhold the best of breed award. But here we are, a very active working foxhound strong bone good important to have very good shoulders and feet for movement no foot no dog you have to be good strong feet and i tell you over the seven years chorister has had six best of breeds at crufts a breed mentioned in the forest laws made by king canute in 1016. are the really familiar sight of the greyhound aya is four and a half years old has traveled from germany to be here and greyhounds have had success at crufts three times winning best in show the last being back in 1956 though have been brought to britain by the Celts. Although its origins are most probably in the a mixture of elegance Dogs and athletic power, this curving bar, outline, this lovely long head, two. long neck, everything the about the greyhound is functional here. and wonderful symmetry of outline and elegance. And Deep chest, lovely breakfast. curve over the top line, beautiful and in greyhound. fit athletic so condition. One one. Where does it get its speed? from is it the hind legs the hind the legs are the propulsion the but it has to have good reach in front they have this suspended gallop different entries from just six different breeds for judge paul harding and coming now the, the griffon fauve this is, is one of the taller of the breeds the griffon fauve a bigger variety we saw the basset fauve earlier the this is bred with some similar bloodlines well, they're said to have a really gentle temperament, being very sociable and affectionate dogs. So the judge here will be looking for a short back and really broad, though, still with a very level top line. Looking for some supple movement, should be moving very easy and actively across the floor. And you see the difference in the leg length. The ancestors used to hunt wolves. But this is bred down from the Briquet, another of the hound families. They were judged today by Jeff Horswell, and from an entry of 13, Hamilton's best of breed is this dog, number 7174. The Hamilton Stoveray, this is Larsen, three and a half years old Sweden. from Cumbria. It's Where a Swedish solo hunter developed by crossing the English foxhounds with German hounds.
They were judged today, as mentioned by Jeff Horswell. Now, this breed, breed was almost extinct, and it took a, a breeder named Patrick Count Hamilton, Hamilton who created the breed, going around the Swedish Kenner valleys to find some new blood for it, and hence we've got them back again. And what a smart, handsome hound they are. Absolutely unexaggerated and fit for function. Now, for the first time in Crust. Deep-chested, a strong, the powerful neck, that's what the Bavaria. judge will be looking for. Another of the breeds judged today by Mo Pesson from Sweden. Now, this is something of a, an event, the first time at Crufts for many years. The English Kennel Club did recognise them in the 40s, but the, the population died out, there were no one showing them. They were just re-registered last year, so we've had 20 odd of them here today, so that's a good turnout. Yeah, the first appearance in the Crufts breed ring since 1898. But what, what leads to a breed dying out, Frank? Well, really, they were pack hounds. We don't often see them in the show ring, but I, I think we're going to see a reincarnation of them in their popularity. I think we'll have some ha pack hounds coming to join the showing population. This one, a hair pied, one of the hound colours. A smaller, small, a foxhound in miniature, really. It's a scaled down foxhound. And from his entry of 27. He selected this dog, number 7215, to represent the breed in the group. Seven-year-old bandit is an Ibethan hound, a dog that's got its roots in ancient Egypt. And bandit has come over from Norway, but such a distinct appearance, tall and narrow, and those large erect ears. For the breed to really become established in Great Britain. Well, I did enjoy Not judging the breed today. The this dog is, is a very good example of the breed. The Leggy, as you say, is very important. And lean through, lean rib cage, lean muscles, everything is elegant and lean about him. Now we'll see that he's not a deep chested dog. In many breeds we ask for the chest to extend to the elbow. Very important here that we don't go as far as the elbow. They've got two inches gap between the bottom of the chest and the elbow. One of their breed peculiarities. The Irish Wolfhound with an entry of 108 here today for this is Susan Wilkinson, who judged the breed. Here is the tallest and most powerful of the group, and it's thought to be the tallest of all breeds, the gentle giant of the Irish wolfhounds. Originally bred to hunt wolves in Ireland, it's thought that it has greyhounds in the background, and then they were mated to mastiffs to produce a combination of speed and strength. And Irish sense at the arena, really enjoy seeing the Irish Wolfhound. This is Paris, who's four and a half uh, from Cheshire. But yeah, the biggest of, thought to be the biggest of all the dog breeds. Can we call them the BFG of the dog world, Frank? Yes, and big friendly and giants. Some of the viewers at home might recognize the handler because he's quite famous in the music world. It's Chris Amu, who was lead singer with The Real Thing, and uh, they, they're. They've reinvented themselves and are still very popular. That's Chris Amu, the breeder with his wife Julie. is the national dog of Norway. Comrade to the Vikings, guardian of lonely farms and a herder of Finn is two years old, Norwegian elk hound. It's such a distinctive grey coat there, an ancient hunting dog. That coat should be close and abundant with that tail tightly curled. The current breed standards being developed this is a wonderful workman-like dog, the national dog of Norway, dog a very ancient breed. Skeletons of dogs of this type were found in Viking graves going back thousands of years. I love this, this thick double coat to give it protection. Those harness markings over the shoulders are a breed speciality. And again, this tail curved high over the back. I love this. It's so workmanlike, a real worker. Miss Michelle Swinge was the breed judge today for Otter. I, <clears throat> I was very keen to see the Otterhound judging today, and this is the best of breed winner. It's come from America to win, wonderfully athletic. This can be traced back to the 13th century. It's thought that the Bloodhound and later the Foxhound played some part in its ancestry. But the 
the earliest references to the breed being those and when you talk about being fit for purpose frank i mean this hound has a, an oily and weather resistant double coat and a real particular feature as well webbed feet that, that's again uh, fit for function yes and the, uh, that oily texture gives them a sort of very houndy smell i call them odiferous and uh, that you have to be aware of that when you take on one to live in the house with you but they're a lovely breed they've got this lovely athletic stride and a very noble head absolutely look at that lovely noble head these dark eyes soft expression the beautiful breed there were 37 pharaoh hounds of which pearl won best of breed four years old from the isle of man and the pharaoh hounds native to malta where it was a rabbit hunter historically and if the outline looks familiar well you might have seen it in history books because often depicted on the tombs of the ancient pharaohs the pharaoh's short coat is easily to maintain beautiful statuesque and elegance no and this long clean delicate head and sharply pricked ears they're also we saw the chineco de Letna earlier which breed. looks very similar in a, a miniature form this one said to be always happy in fact lives with a family with four children as well so wonderful family dog very friendly and playful we now look, look back to the table where we see our the Portuguese Pedengo. And this is the little Portuguese Pedengo, a rabbit hunter, used to go into the Portuguese, known as the Portuguese Warren Hound. Three sizes, we only have the smaller size in England. They can be smooth coated or wire coated. And we see the crisp wire coat on this one. today, and from an entry of 37, she awarded best of breed to this bitch number seven. So this one can be smooth or wire haired. And of course, another rabbit hunter, very small the variety. There are medium and large Portugal, breeds as large well. Now, in it, the UK. it is native Portugal. They've become Here very popular as Portugal little house pets, today. rather like the Jack Russell is in this country. This one, not particularly happy in the big ring today, not carrying his tail above his back. So he's just a little bit phased out by the big ring atmosphere. Now, a real particular feature of the Rhodesian Ridgeback is, as the name suggests, the ridge of hair, which grows in the reverse direction along its spine. It's a really athletic and courageous dog from Southern Africa. The Rhodesian Ridgeback is an agile dog, powerful and speedy. It's athletic and powerful. It had to be to, to do the job, tracking lions, holding them at bay until the hunters came. This long athletic stride, they come in this red and wheaten colour. The ridge considered by the hunters as a sign of courage. The better the ridge, the better the courage. There may be a bit of canine folklore in that though. What we do know is that strong, courageous dogs. And this one from Switzerland, Yara, three years old. So the next of our hound breeds to be seen is another of the sight hounds here at the hound breed. The Saluki, also known as the Gazelle Hound, which tells us its quarry in the hunt. The elegant sight hound of the Middle East, named after the Persian town of Saluk. It was prized by the Bedouins along with their Arabian horses, carried in the saddle and put down on the sand when game was sighted and then set free to hunt the game. And, it is suggested that this and a real breed feature is that feathering the on the legs and the backs dog. of the thighs for the, the long-haired variety. Uh, but a real striking top, appearance, isn't it? Elegant and, and light-footed across the floor. And of course, as you mentioned, in the long-haired varieties, it does come in the smooth-haired variety where they don't have any furnishings, but they're quite rare. But again, this nice lifting, lifting stride and this far away look. Joski is a four-year-old Salugi from Margate in, in Kent, who hasn't won any challenge certificates in this country, but has had multiple best of breeds at championship shows and best dog at the Salugi club show. It's one of the lesser-known breeds, a North African dog. The large rib cage of the yes, it is one of the North African breeds, and if you think it looks a bit ribby and light, this is because it's a breed which does not carry any subcutaneous fat. It's a that's a mechanism for helping it to deal with the hot desert conditions. And now we come to the last of the hound breeds to be considered by now. Isn't this beautiful? 
Little did those miners know when they developed this breed from the Greyhound how popular it was going to become for all over the world as the most beautiful, aesthetic show dog. However, they were bred to bring home the supper. They had to be a working dog. And also, the, the miners in Northumberland used to race them as well, in whippet racing. But here we have over 300 of them here today. That's a very strong breed. The quality in them, wonderful. Two judges. What we want is symmetry, is elegance, and muscular horses. athletic power. And here, the from a famous the kennel in Holland, have been big Any winners. Look at that lovely, what we call a daisy cutting action. It skims just low so over the ground. The that seven elegance seven in the head and beautiful dark eyes. And coming at us absolutely parallel in its movement. That's beautiful. So this is our hound group. Who will the judge choose for the shortlist? hounds here today. And this is an ideal opportunity to give a round of applause to our winning best of breed hounds. That's a big group, a big decision to be made here, Frank. Um, Gavin walking around just reminding himself of what he found on hands-on examination this is going to be a hard job it's a big group getting them down to eight dogs so it's a tough we'll task. Nine. i think he'll sneak in an extra to start his selection of a short list we've seen some wonderful best of breeds that's for sure first to be pulled out uh, he's the brought out the grand the grand basset griffin von Dien and the, the beagle, beagle. walking right past the Dachshunds, but it's the standard wire which is brought in from Italy, that the lovely dog. Dachshund. The Greyhound, that elegant Greyhound. Oh, and good. The Ibethan Hound, the Ibethan the hound is brought hound. in. I'm very happy with that. This hovering hound. stride of the Ibethan Hound, a breed feature. And Chris and Moon with his Irish that Wolfhound, the Fairhound's in. And the Rhodesian Ridgeback and, and that to show gorgeous your whippet. And congratulate the other best of breeds You're right, he's got group. nine. It's too big a group to cut it, cut it down anymore. What a wonderful lineup for a shortlist that is. And congratulations to all the dogs who are exiting the ring as best of breeds. Now, he's got nine top quality dogs here to choose from. So, one's going to come back for Sunday evening to compete for best in show. I would recommend if you've never been to Crufts before, you come and see this spectacle in this arena of the judging of Best in Show on Sunday evening. That's a Griffon Von Dian, four years of age, from the Netherlands. Perfect top line, this lovely level back, strongly boned, that coat should be crisp to the touch. Now at this level, Gavin's checking on the movement the of the move hind the movement beagle. and front movement Set for accuracy. Group, Here we see the Serena lovely Parker. clean stride the of Jacob, the, the beagle, David Craig handling. He's the breeder. And now off goes what can a dog do at this stage, Frank, to really wow the judge? Stay on his toes and put on a wonderful Stay performance. On and this is putting on a wonderful performance. I like the standard wire very much. And the Greyhound gets its greyhound. chance to impress. And look at that lovely Set long stride, the Mark curve Mark over the top line. The Elegance personified. And you see the slight hover before it puts its foot down on the ground. That's a brief specific point, a hovering side gate. So why did you choose this particular Ibethan Hound? Well, he fits the standard so well. He, he went beautifully and is the perfect shape for the breed. The strength and power of the Irish Wolfhound. A group winner on many occasions. You know, one of the great challenges in these giant breeds is to get substance, but also now athleticism. This is beautiful as well. Table. Lovely quality. A uh, picture of concentration there for Gavin. It's got to be very difficult to make a choice now at this stage. 
And they're all going well. Nothing is phased by this atmosphere. They've had a long day. Because, of course, all the best of breed judging is done on the same day. Very popular, the Whippets. Always popular. And this is, again, a Whippet bitch. The strength of Whippets in this country is amazing. And the same can be said in many countries of the world. Oh, I think we're going to see them so sent round. He's going to watch them in profile. Does this mean he's having trouble making well, a decision? Well, absolutely, and this is where he's going for presence. And he gives everyone a chance to presence, you look at the top line, the length of stride, the deportment of it, if you like. This is where it might catch the eye, which is carrying itself well. Gavin just giving them all a round of applause as they go by him. He's obviously very appreciative of the quality in this group. And there is the Greyhound striding out. And here's the hovering Ibethan Hound. And the power of the Irish Wolfhound, the Pharaoh Hound. Now, the Rhodesian coming now. Holding the top line, keeping the shape on the move is what's important. It shows good balance. And here's that lovely Whippet. It's a really tough so lineup for again. our judge to pick who will that go through to best in show horse. on Sunday night. An incredible hound group we've seen. And you see the mixture of types in the group. By looking at this, this the size, the shape, and the purpose for which they were developed. Right. A real good selection of hounds there, different shapes, different sizes. He's going to stand back. He's going to get the four in order now. This is where you need to take a breath. One, two, three, four. 2022 is. He's heading over towards. The Dachshund. The Greyhound. The Greyhound has won it. Well, we thought we was heading for the standard wire for a moment. There. So the Greyhound coming back on Sunday to compete for best in show. What a moment that is for Aya from Germany. And here Greyhound. is the Whippet from seven, Holland. Seven, Hound group three is. It's the Pharaoh Hound. The beautifully elegant seven, Pharaoh four, Hound. Four. This one came from the Isle of Man. Now, who's getting now the fourth spot? Four. It's the Grand, the Grand Basset, Basset Griffin Bordien. A breed close nine, to Gavin's heart. Nine, well done to these Group others Gavin making the cut in that very strong group. Yeah, that's the Dutch dog in fourth place. But it's the Greyhound that goes through to best in show, so joining lovely. Siberian See, Husky, the Border Collie, and the Irish Terrier. For those fantastic wins, but here, Ina and your Greyhound has topped the Hound Group here. How are you feeling? I cannot believe it. <laughs> I have no words. It's amazing. Please don't say that. It's not my favorite oh, it's amazing. <laughs> answer. Now, tell us about your journey to crafts. Well, my journey to crafts, I've been visiting for years now. Um, I had some good placements during the years. I got best of breed with my homebred and both CC winners last time. And today we had another fantastic day with a CC, best of breed, reserve CC, which, and, re and reserve Doxy. Oh, wow, well, <laughs> you've had a really marvelous craft there. Yeah, and then this to top it up. Yeah, and just what, what were you thinking about this performance of your girl in here? She never lets me down. She is a dream. Well, she certainly didn't leave, let you down there, Ina. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, hands together, please, for the Greyhounds. That's another wonderful and emotional moment, and the number of handlers who we hear just say, I'm lost for words. Yes, it's absolutely. such a huge it's moment in their career. Not, perhaps it's another good moment to interview them when they've just had the win. It's another international group winner to go through to Best in Show. And she... Look at that, just what it means. Aya is the Greyhound's pet name. 
from Germany, four and a half years old, and goes through to best in show. Whip it in second place. The crowd really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Take it off now. <laughs> look at look at the standing to attention. Well done again. <laughs> That's how to receive a prize. Right, lap of honor time now. Now, this Greyhound bitch has had best in show awards in Germany and throughout Europe. Can she add the UK to her title gathering on Sunday evening for Best in Show at Brubs? We'll have to wait and see. We hope we will be here to join us and, and watch that. It's been another wonderful day here at Crufts and we've got more to come tomorrow. Of course, the Southern Golden Retriever display team. There is more fly ball action that is fast and furious. And don't miss the agility final at 5.15. And then, of course, the group judging for the utility group and the toy group. So we now know four of the breeds who are going through to best in show. Yesterday, the Siberian Husky and Border Collie won through today, an Irish Terrier and a greyhound from Germany. Lots more to come. Make sure you're with us again tomorrow. Look forward to seeing you then. Good night.